Ladies and gentlemen, today on the podcast, I think, Big J Okerson, Dave Smith, Louis J. Gomez, and Sal Volcano. This is Yeah. And I'm going to do this. Everyone put their mics towards the center real quick. Do you chew tobacco? Um... <laughs> Oh, whose mic cord am I sitting on? This is the most people I've ever had in the man cave and the most production I've ever put into a show ever that I've ever fucking done. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. That was good, though. You were working frantically. Yeah, I know. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't drink last night, so, uh, so I think that, for the most part, my shit's all together. There's a live-action bartender happening here. I know. I love that. I could have one of we those. They got, they got those at the Fun House with Stanhope. Yeah. That you just go, and they, measure, they make sure you don't get too fucked up. At his house? Yeah. He has it's so a, weird. I forget you're in a different recorder. So I'm like, what, am I not recording, Jay? That's what, he has a staff. He has a fucking posse with him. It's Are not, you? It's not, yeah, it's respond not, to that, please, Dave, so staff. I can hear you. <laughs> you're telling me at Stanhope's there's reasonable people making sure you don't get too fucked up, dude. No, at no. Stanhope's, it might be my perfect. It might be my favorite place to party. Yeah, it's not a staff so much as it just is the neighborhood. It's the neighborhood. They just show up yeah. and all of a sudden they have a bartender. By the way, if you're making one for me, make it for a Russian. Let's make it. Yeah. Can, I, can I point That's something what out? I said. What a fucking pro Bert is, because Bert's talking right now, giving Becky directions to make him drinks. While he's doing mic tests on both recorders, he's having a conversation. He unplugged his headphones from the one recorder, plugged it into the other while making eye contact with us, having a full conversation. And really producing. Wouldn't you agree, Sal, speaking to your microphone? Now, do you, <laughs> need, <laughs> do you need everyone around to suck your dick and maybe curse out your employees to oh. make that happen, Bert, or are you able to just pull that off? I would love to have employees. Say? The problem is, okay, so what's, the price, point? Asshole? what's the price point to, uh, to, to when you decide to get um, a, an, a, an assistant. What do you mean? You're I, past I the have point. no idea. No, you're past the point. But you no. probably need assistant. one. The price point. What do you mean? At the price like point. How much you have to make a year? Here's what you got to do. Okay, you. First of all, nobody fucking knows how much money we make. Nobody knows the download numbers. Okay, you just make everyone assume that it's in the millions on both ends, right? Yeah. And then you hire them and you make them pay you to be a part of the show because it's an experience for them. Yeah. So you don't yeah, got to pay them. Bro. That's the insane. Problem. That's insane. Wait, hold on. It gets worse. Thank Ask you. him how to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, you are paying free money in this room. <laughs> and you karate chop the back of their necks. <laughs> so There's so, something about saying them, too. <laughs> just yeah. gesturing over here to one person and being like, while them. She's, especially while she's making a drink. It's extra <laughs> uncomfortable. We literally flew our intern <laughs> out to Los Angeles with us. She's making drinks For on your record, podcast no right now. No one asked her. No one asked her to make drinks. She was way into the yeah. idea, and she oh. seems, for the first time, uh, to be experiencing happiness. A little bit of peace now. Look at her. She's finally comfortable We've with herself. we downloaded the joy program with her. <laughs> She's uh, feeling joy she now. Just, she just I'm so glad joy. that Priscilla likes her, so when we go, hey, can you go inside and get more ice out of the refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> um, the dog doesn't tear her throat out. <laughs> She's going to come out riding the dog with the Khaleesi. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Khaleesi's gained some weight in her arms. Have you noticed that? I've I don't watch the show. I've been saying that for three fucking seasons. Yeah. And we all have to ignore it. That black chick that was her fucking... She's basically her slave, by the way. Like, let's get real. That's what yeah. she was. But her, like, assistant chick, she was way hotter. Yeah, Substantially totally. Substantially hotter. I don't watch the show. What? No. So you know what yeah, Stan Hope's watch. doing? Gonna... Stan Hope's doing uh, Sober from November to Christmas. And he's going... It's, I think you call it Sober Thrones. And he's going to not drink and just watch Game of Thrones from beginning to end in that month. <laughs> really? Yeah, so that he's up for the next season. I'm so obsessed with that show. It's I incredible. Don't know. I, I watched, you know what happened? I watched the first episode. Someone goes, watch the first episode, you'll be hooked. I watched the first episode, and I know the episode ends with... He got I, bummed out that you could have played I, I, King Baratheon? Sure. Like, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I, I can't watch yeah, this. By the way, that is that such a fucking no inside joke. Yeah. Um, well, not inside. I probably the anybody who watched the, watch the show, show also <laughs> probably get it. No one got that one. Just <laughs> me and you, Lewis. Oh, that's a little inside baseball. Game of Thrones. What are you doing here? 30, <laughs> Thirty-five million people a week would have laughed at that. <laughs> so, just so everyone knows, in the man cave, if you three minutes in, you're like, wait, whose voices are whose? Lewis is the. I would. How would you describe Lewis's voice? Kind of like the the shady Puerto Rican. <laughs> But without an um, accent. Hey, you want to buy a car stereo, Holmes? But you have like a deep, like manly alpha yeah. voice. All right. Lewis is like, uh, you're walking down the streets of Puerto Rico and someone's trying to sell you something. <laughs> and it's like, you better buy it. Let's yeah. just say, like, don't not Lewis buy what he's trying to sell you. voice of a guy who got pussy his whole life by going, hey, want to see me eat a light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a little like a Bruce Valanche to you. I, you, know, you know who I get told a lot? Bruce Valanche? Uh, Bruce Valanche. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's crazy. <laughs> no, I get told Vince Vaughn. Uh, that's the person that I get out of everybody, and I don't oh, hear it at all. But it's you looking in the mirror, just telling yourself, "You are Vince Vaughn. <laughs> you are Vince Vaughn. You are Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. You, are you are Vince Vaughn." I don't know, but people tell me that I sound like Vince Vaughn. I've heard it probably a hundred times in the my life. The more nebbishy academic voice is Dave. I'll take it. Um, and then Jay's. You could have just said Jew voice. Yeah. Are you Jewish? I am. With Smith? Yeah, undercover. Okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Working to bring down the establishment. And then Jay is the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fat Albert. That's just <laughs> racist. You just Fat made Albert. that what you wanted. Yeah. Jay's, Jay's Fat today. Albert. <laughs> I'm white Fat Albert. I'm Have you Sam could... Rogan and Fat Albert. <laughs> Sam Rogan and Fat Albert. <laughs> that hurts. Uh, I am not, not going to feel confident on television tomorrow. <laughs> and, I want to sing a song for you. And Sal Volcano. Uh, Jay's going to come out and play the accord, play the uh, a furnace like an. Accordion. <laughs> Wait, did you ever see Ralphie do uh, do Jimmy Kimmel and trip on the stairs? No. <laughs> I oh, you never so saw bad. that? No. Oh, my God. Is there a way to watch that right now? It's before. I'm sure. <laughs> it's before the internet was as big as it was. Or it is. Oh, shit. And he goes <laughs> out. cut it out? And he, no, and he did, 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 went to do his wave. And who it is. And I saw it in slow motion. And the last voice you'll hear, Sal Volcano. Yes, that's right. Oh, perfect. Actually. Is the guy who sounds like. The guy in Staten Island, like, whoa, community college is a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> did you go to college? I did. I Where? Just... Bingington? Uh, Let me guess. <laughs> Bingington? Uh, Cun- Bingington? Cuny? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I went to St. John's. For real? Yeah. On a scholarship. For what? I'm just saying. For... Academics. It was an impractical scholarship, yeah. though. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll be here all night. <laughs> hey, would someone good. check that camera and make sure all of us are in the shot? And if not, then just... Then cut Lewis out? Yeah. Lewis, your zipper's down. Your shorts are riding way up. I know, up. dude. You're going to What's happening? I also, fa- I also <laughs> lost a scholarship halfway through. For academics? Yeah. Nice. Isn't Why'd it? you lose a scholarship? I had to keep a cumulative... a three-quarters tuition scholarship. I had to keep a 3.0 cumulative. After my second year, my cumulative fell to 2.98. No way. It took it away. Didn't, give, didn't put me on probation. Took it away. Didn't give it back. You know, that reminds me. I found out today that I'm a Rite Aid Silver uh, Silver Level member, yeah. and as long as I, if I get another, if I spend another three hundred twenty-four dollars, you're comparing this to college. Yeah, this is your. If degree. I spend another three hundred twenty-four dollars by the end of the year, I'll make it to the gold level, and I maintain that. That's it for life. Like you took that to what your mom's mean? grave. Twenty percent off every time I go to Rite Aid in perpetuity. In perpetuity. Oh, really? it's almost like a death yeah, yeah. sentence. You almost have to, have to spend the three twenty four. It's, it's, it's so fucking worth it. Yeah. And I'll tell you the reason why I do it because it's right across the street from my apartment, and I go there almost every single night. I didn't realize I've spent seven hundred and something dollars this year. Why do you go to a pharmacy every night? Because it's not just a pharmacy. It's a, it's, a, yeah, it's everything. It's Rite Aid? Are you talking about Rite Aid? Yeah, yeah. Rite Aid. Uh, Rite Aid might be the perfect shopping place. No. Oh, yeah. I love Rite Aid. It's I got everything. If you want a sandwich, you want fucking Tide. A you want sandwich? A sandwich. Hold on, you have sandwages? There's sandwages at Rite Aid. Yeah, they Where got the fuck do you have a sandwich at Rite Aid? They got sandwiches. Where is there a sandwich at Rite Aid? I don't go to Rite Aid a lot, In the front. That's a bad place to buy a sandwich, Have you had a Wawa sandwich? Are you oh, kidding me? Oh, 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 you talking? I have a Wawa sandwich. Just look at Jay and ask that question. You got a Wawa sandwich? Wawa. <laughs> I'm gonna get a tattoo. Wah, 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 sandwich in my pocket right now. We can all sit here and laugh, but Sal Volcano, <laughs> I love it. Sal Volcano, uh, life was turned around a night at Wawa when I brought him there. You want, if you want, I mean, it's, I don't, I'm speaking honestly. One of the freshest sandwiches I've ever had. I've eaten sandwiches my whole life. I, I've been to a lot of great delis, delis that are known for yeah. being delis. What are you, fucking a Wawa chick or something? No, I'm not. Let him Dude, talk, Dave. Dave. I swear to Christ. The, it's a dissertation. I think what makes it really nice is that it's unexpected. Mm. But there's, it, there's such that foot traffic, true. I think it turns over a lot. The bread is so fresh. Oh, my God. Oh, it's by like the a way. fucking 7-Eleven with a subway in no, it. No, 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 I was at a Wawa on the road getting ready to go to an airport, and I literally... I uh, was like, I'm starving, but I don't know what to eat. And someone overheard me in the Wawa say that and say, um, you got to get a sandwich here. And I was like, I guess. I, I got one. I was so impressed by the bread. I was so impressed by the amount of stuff they could put on it. They had like like sweet peppers yeah. and hot peppers and, and like thin little lettuce, not like big chunks of lettuce. Yeah, but here's the thing that meat, the, too. But let me tell you, the, Dude, thing, that, the thing that they thick. have. Yes. Would thick. someone turn that AC off, please? The thing that they have that is like incredible, and I got we were talking about this earlier today because we went to, um, uh, what's the burger place here? In-N-Out. Uh, In-N-Out. In-N-Out, right? So they, they've, 
they know that nobody that would get a job at Wawa is going to be somebody that you want to interact with in any way. They're garbage people, right? So they make it so you have to order from the kiosk. Yeah. So that experience, they've kind of innovated the take the garbage person out of the Subway sandwich experience. Like he's there, you have but you have talk. to talk to him as limited as possible. Yeah, you got three words to give like, me a fucking sandwich. That's it. By the way, Dave and Christina, I believe both were there for the time that I had to interact with a Wawa person. Uh. And Not, almost, I, bet it, I bet you this doesn't end good. It went haywire. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, first of all, that's not like a it prediction. Went haywire. <laughs> Could not be a better description. <laughs> it went haywire. <laughs> There's no way. They have that kiosk for a reason. And also, they're not training their employees to get better because they got the kiosk. Oh, yeah. So if, you gotta, if something goes wrong, if that kiosk goes down for one fucking day, it's over, dude. That, that Wawa's getting shot the fuck up. They're Mac and cheese is retardedly good. Whoa, for real? It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know why they're really nice I watched, I I watched Redman eat uh, mac and cheese with mayonnaise on it last night. He was putting mayonnaise on his mac why? and cheese. And all I could think was, oh, I guess I'm trying that. Really? It does sound good. It sounds so fat oh, yet horrible. good. Well, that's it. That's it. I do... Uh, Mayonnaise on cheesesteak, and that sounds but I think that's the oh, best that's way. That's the best way. way. Uh, I was, we ate acid in Gainesville, Florida. At mayonnaise a on acid, mayonnaise. I know. <laughs> no, mayonnaise <laughs> on acid. <laughs> <Stop>. Acid mayonnaise. <laughs> it's incredible. On our way back, on our way back uh, I wasn't feeling, I was like right on the corner where I knew we had to drive to Tallahassee. And uh, on the way down, I was seeing alligators in the shadows, and I was like, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> and this guy said, um, we should stop at Subway and get subs. And I was like, I'm not even really hungry. And he introduced me. To mayonnaise on a meatball sub. Uh, here's the thing: mayonnaise good. just kind of works almost on anything. Yeah. Mayonnaise on French fries. <laughs> I don't of course, eat, I don't good. That sounds good. I don't yeah. eat mayo at all. You don't eat mayo? No. Are I, you Asian? Are you by no, no, I won't be like I will never eat mayo, but I don't. Bu- I don't buy. I don't put on anything. I don't it, unless it it happens. To, that I can't avoid guy? it. I'll have it, but I don't add mayo to anything. Why? Well, what happened? Mayo. What happened to you when you were younger? Nothing. I just don't. It's just His uncle fingered him with mayo. That's something I prefer, and I'm I'm confident enough to admit that now. I go. I literally put it on any sandwich, except I wouldn't think of meatball. Meatball, Ooh, I put anything it, cold, that is out anything there. cold. Uh, uh, it's all I want. But it's funny. Yeah. Uh, think about think about this. Ham. In what world has mayo sandwich. not been good? When has it not good? When have you ever put mayo on? And you're like that didn't work. Okay, hold oh, on. I mean, hold burgers. On. I, I hate mayo. mayo on I love, love it on a burger. I love, love it on a burger. I'll tell you what. I thought it was whipped butter. I put it on a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was no good. <laughs> but that was no good. In retrospect, not that bad. <laughs> I, I didn't puke it back out. That makes it any better. I was I like, finished. I'm like, this is yeah. Was, I finished the pancake. I was trying to think when I put mayo on that. Has I it ever like. not worked in the slightest? No, it always works. Chicken. You can put it fucking dip your chicken in it. I've never done it with hot chicken ever. What would be the problem? Mayo on a chicken sandwich? Oh, dude, I've I've taken I've taken hot chicken like a a, a roast a rotisserie chicken, uh, small plate plate uh, mayonnaise on it in three different squirts, and then sampled my hot sauce inside my mayo mayonnaise with like a chipotle dressing. Yeah, but what you <laughs> did was you you combined to make something that wasn't mayonnaise. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but, so but, we get it, dude. You got a TV show. Fuck mayo, off. All right. <laughs> mayo on its own is gross. And when mayo gets we hot, like mayo, dude. When mayo gets hot. Oh, oh. It's gross. My neighbors used to have mayo. Hot mayo would be the best. Yeah, I rolled the dice on hot mayo. I was excited about it. I microwave all my mayo. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but when you have I mayo. only have hot mayo. Did that's you ever eat a mayo sandwich? On a cheesesteak, <laughs> cheese that's why mayo I think is good because it kind of melts. Hold on. Wait, you said a mayo sandwich? I like that you're you're yeah, navigating mayo, this because I'm bad with this. I know. I, My neighbors you just do, eat that. What's mayo that? What's sandwiches? Put mayo on white uh, bread and eat mayo Leanne, sandwich. Leanne, that is ready? white garbage. Leanne, you ready for this? Uh-oh. Mayonnaise, banana, white bread. All right, that's, she should be shot. That's bizarre. My kids you, yeah, your call kids, it banana sandwich. Your kids, she, they shouldn't be raised by a woman like that. Mayonnaise. Mayo and banana? Mayo and, I'll have her make one like for you right messages. fucking now. I, it I, might I, be I child if you see it. I'll try it on the show right now. That sounds horrific. I like that it's like half a healthy sandwich and half just white trash There's garbage. There's no way it tastes right. good. A oh, white bread? Yeah, really? It's, it's like, like a, a 17-year-old pothead <laughs> found the last things left in the house. Oh, Jesus. Uh, if we have bananas, I'm making... We got, we got a half a banana. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Your wife and kids like junky food? <laughs> hey, uh, this is... You don't have to do this at all, but if you have chance... Do we have any bananas in there? Yeah. Could you make a nanner sandwich <laughs> and bring Ooh, it out? We're the, the, the taste of uh, whether or not a nanner sandwich would be good. I don't think. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm about. I'm putting the girls to bed, so it'll be a few minutes. That's fine. We'll be out Dude, here. Dude, here's for a while. the thing. Bird, uh, birds. Just, just. I think we'll probably could. Everyone could take a bite. Well, it depends yeah. how good it is. Just, yeah, <laughs> just one. Just one. <laughs> tell, tell them what's on it. 
no, you should have to taste it. Okay, all right, bye. I already told him. She. It'd be funny. Oh, Bert, Bert texted her before. Oh, I forgot. And, cayenne pepper. <laughs> Bert texted her before, and he's like, "I'm going to make these idiots eat banana and mayonnaise." Watch. Yeah. Hey, or he's not telling us anything. Sandwich. He's not telling us he's, he's rolling the dice on our allergies and just putting peanut dust in it. Not telling us. Or he came on the bread before. <laughs> this is Bert's a, brand new prank show. A, he comes on everything. There's you know, a jar this of my gross. Of course, I don't give my kids mayonnaise and bananas. You Dude, fucking. Not idiot. to go back. We used to think about Ralphie falling. The, one of the funniest, my funniest L.A. moments ever. Was being in the parking lot of the or that front area of the improv where all that those horrible drawings are of all the yeah, comics are. Yeah. And Ralphie, for whatever reason, where they draw him, it's stretched. He like goes across the wall. <laughs> he goes like he's like fr- almost three quarters on one wall and a quarter on the on the turn of the wall. Yeah. And Todd, I saw, he goes, he goes over. He goes, ah, every time I see this thing, it just bothers me. He's just doing his Todd glassing. He's like, yeah. you think the guy doesn't have enough problems? He knows, he knows what he looks like. You gotta stretch it over the. Ah, forget the whole goddamn thing. I, a guy just comes. He wants to make people laugh, and then you gotta stretch. Dude, who cares? No one's listening to me anyway. He's get going. Wait, how well? Just how like? It up. Do you ever text with Todd Glass? Uh, rarely. Do I love texting him. with Todd Glass? <laughs> I is the, the funniest fucking thing ever. Greatest. I got to let me just Todd Glass. By the way, these are all He's I have awesome. is texts from Ari right now. Um, real quick before while I look up these texts, yeah. Dave Smith has a special. Oh, fuck hey, yeah. I thought about the intro, but I forgot the name. I wanted to say it was called Libertas. Yes, that's right. Indeed. Oh, fuck yeah. All, all I know is that there's one thing I'm dying to talk to you about, but I know you can't because I think you it's illegal. But I'm dying to hear about that story. But I know, uh, yeah. I, I don't think you can. But, um, so where did you guys shoot it? You, this was a Dave killed the child. These, these were Legion of Skanks uh, production. This was uh, Gas Digital, which is the, the podcast Digital. network that that myself and, and Ralph Sutton run. But Legion of Skanks is kind of the, I'd say, you know, flagship. the centerpiece flagship show of the, the network, and we produced Dave Special. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah, go buy it. Uh, it's GasDigitalNetwork.com. You so can how, buy it. how did someone acquire it? It is great. Yeah, if you guys, yeah, if you guys, uh, it's it's it, look, Dave doesn't. Dave doesn't want to promote his own shit, so I know he'll sit there quietly and go, yeah, it's so, good. You know, it's fun. We get it's it. whatever. It was a bunch We're of here. new stuff. We're you here. Take it or leave it. <laughs> you think I was ready to just dump that stuff anyway? It was my B material. <laughs> front to back. There's a couple things. If you watch the whole hour, there's one or two good things. Are you proud, are you proud of it? I was happy with how it came out. Yeah. You know, I was, it's like after, like, like when you're, I did, I was there for, like, the whole editing process and everything like that, and I'm just like, you kind of lose perspective on it after a while. I remember liking it at one point. Yeah. I liked, I liked, when I did my last one, I did, uh, I had to watch the edit, and so I said I can't watch it in front of people. I watch it at home, so I brought it home, and I watched the beginning. And I'm like, I'm like, just like, ugh, ugh. And then, like, 15 minutes in, I started enjoying it, like I was watching someone special. Yeah. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be taking notes, but I'm just like, ah, good one, Bert. Like, <laughs> and I didn't get any fucking notes. So I was like, I like it. <laughs> He just like, go, well, any notes? They go, this guy's good. Yeah, I like yeah, him. I like him. I was going to be comfortable with yourself. Like, I can't watch myself or hear. I hate I hearing my voice. Time. Yeah, you didn't You didn't what, like do the editing for your special at all? You didn't I had to do it by, by hearing it. And I wish I would have watched him more because then when I did have to watch a little bit of it, I'm like, ugh. I don't like the way the angle Yeah, no, we, we, I mean, we literally, the whole process, you know, bef- before and after, I mean, Dave, you were like obsessed with the order and everything. So, um, but you guys, you guys, if you want to get it, which it's fucking great, buy it directly from Gas Digital, GasDigitalNetwork.com. If you do it on iTunes or Google Play or Amazon, it's gr- look that's fine as well. But they take a pretty big cut, you really? know. Yeah, they take they take a big chunk of change. So you can buy it directly from GasDigitalNetwork.com. Dave gets more cash; it goes directly to the artist. You and, want to support uh, myself and an entrepreneur? Fuck yeah! You want the Jews at iTunes to get all your money? Oh, huh? oh undercover Mr. The Smith. iJews. Well, that was, well, this has just been flagged and removed from iTunes. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's nine bucks for the special. You save a buck too. We we give you a dollar off if you buy the Gas Digital. So if you get the video version, it's nine bucks. The audio version, it's only five bucks. And uh, yeah, it's great. We're going to create more specials. So we're doing two in 2018 and four in 2019. Really? Who are you doing? Yeah. Can you talk about it yet? Not yet. I'm shooting mine in uh, in fe- in February at the Trocadero <clears throat> in Philly. Yeah, and, I, and but I one of my buddies is a, I think a good friend of yours. Uh, I, we've talked about him. My buddy that does uh, producer. You, you know him. I'm not gonna fucking say his name. Oh, Tony Hernandez. I don't give a fuck. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you know Tony. Uh-huh. He did, he's doing Chris Rock's he special. Did my, he did my special. He did your special. Yeah. And uh, I told him, I said I want you to do my special, but I was like, but I I shot something on spec. Like I mean, I meaning I bought, I paid a crew and had them shoot something in um in D, in Denver when I was doing Denver. So I was like, comedy I did, works. Yeah, comedy works. I just I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be no production. 
I want it to be no production, just cameraman trying to figure out how to get the right light, audio trying to get figure out how to get the right audio. So it felt dirty that you shot it at a club. Yeah. But I, I was doing that for me because I wanted the material just in case, just in case I don't ever get a buyer and someone doesn't chooses like for whatever reason they choose not to do my special. Um, I wanted it, and so yeah. I did it. And then my buddy Tony was like, "Fuck everyone." He was like, "Why don't you just let's just edit it and and put it out? Let's just like what do you care?" And I was like, "Yeah." Part of me was like, "Yeah," just, like you're doing, like going, "Yeah, what?" Like there's so many Netflix. Spe- I'd love to have a special on Netflix. I would absolutely sure. love it. But man, there are. I watch comedy and I can't keep up with them. Yeah. You know, well, yeah. it stops being as special when there's literally a new special coming out every day on Netflix. Two, two a week. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it lot, is. dude. It's two a week. Yeah. Wow. It's and crazy. I'm not, look, I'm not. That's through. That's 600 specials a year. So they. they I by the way, that's why gonna, that, I keep hearing they're going to switch. They're going to stop off and just do like Netflix comedy as its own thing. Well, I hear this. Which the, the half hours. <laughs> and I talked to Nate Bargatze about this. The reason that worked so well, it's pretty incredible when you think about it, right? Did it or did it, it did. just for Nate? No, and, and it, it did for a few people. And I for think Nate, it did for Nikki Glazer. Said it really was something else. That chick, for, um, uh, I, I, Soder, I think he's like. He still hasn't been out on the road enough, I think, for it to find out. But I mean, like he killed his Nate, for great. Nate. It did a lot, but, but Nate I, said he's seen the reason the why. Of course, it, Nate did because he went first. That's a big fucking deal. Yeah, that is deal. a big that's fucking huge. deal. That's like, a big fucking. By the way, in, in discussions, like you know, in in semi disclosure, like in discussion about the things at all, I was like, that would have to be a big part of the thing of me doing a half hour on Netflix. Like, I go first. I gotta be first, the worst second. Yeah, I'm not going fifth. Well, the uh, reason why no it's so either first or nobody. Because really? by the way, people are watching it like a series, and if they don't, if they're not into it by the second part, they're just checking it. You can see it by the. I read all the reviews on it. Yeah, and that's where exactly do you read happening. reviews? I've been dying to read reviews on, on my laptop o- version only of Netflix, not on the TV. Uh, I have a smart TV, and it doesn't. Well, I was going to say the reason why those Netflix specials are, or the half hour is working well, and I, I've heard it's worked well for other people as well, yeah, not yeah. just Nate. I know it's worked really well for Nate, but it's because the way that Netflix's audience consumes content is they binge watch, mm-hmm. so. It's set up like a series, so boom, that one half hour hits. Drinking, by the way, no, okay, guys, drink beer. up, Sal. I know you drink. I watched you on stage the other night at the fucking Greek. The, ne- the next six hundred people. How much was the pull on that? Was it forty three dollars <laughs> tickets? I've been doing the math in my head. I was sitting in the back with fucking Jeff Wells. Awesome show. It was fucking but- incredible. It was mind blowing. It was. It was. I've said this so much. I'm embarrassed. Say it again. Handful of times in my life in in this business that I that things have been redefined for me and. I've never seen anyone do the Greek. I've never seen that many people in one place to see anyone perform, let alone that fucking audience was like a, a, a that's like, it's like, I know that when people come see me, they go, uh, they go, I love the podcast you did with Lewis. I loved the one with you, Big J and Ari and uh, whatever. Oh, Dave Smith's special is amazing. That was a group of people. I get recognized a lot. I do. I'm not bragging. I'm just being honest. I get recognized at least four times a day. I didn't get recognized once at that fucking place. That was a brand new group of people that are buying (laughs) shit. It's the reason that made Jimmy Kimmel successful, you know that? Is that they brought him into the late night landscape, and he brought in a a 3.5 rating on his premiere, and no one else lost viewers. And they're like, whoa, these people haven't been watching late night? And he kept them. So that's like the, the, the fact that you found people that weren't technically going into comedy clubs, weren't technically... Uh, dying on net, talking about what spec where where were you on the special of Nate Bargatze's thing? Yeah, and they're fucking dying. La- I sat in the audience and I was doing this the whole time. Like they're fucking losing their shit, and they're not bad comedy audiences. They're not yelling shit out. No, they're, they're respectful. They're not traditional comedy audiences. It's stand up. They're not traditional, but they are like just into it. They're happy to be there. They're, like they find they find us from TV. You know. Yeah. So they're coming to see us from TV, and they don't even know what they're. To expect with us, you know what I mean. You could maybe see a clip online or something like that, or someone taped it. But yeah, it's not traditional, which is what we love because that's something that I found with all the people that come and and do stuff with us is that our fans like they're not they're, they're looking. They're like, who else? Who else do you approve of? Like, who? Let me show me another. It's funny really person. funny when the amount of cr- crossover between Impractical Jokers and Legion of Skanks fans that there are. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You'll see these like these like just fucking these. They look like nice women. Yeah. From just the middle of the country, and they're like, it's like, 
Sal Volcano and then like Skank, hashtag Skank. You're like, whoa, what the but, fuck is going on in your world? They're just happy to be turned on to other they comedy. They like to laugh. No, they really, they there's really no, are. There's no, there's no definition of what funny is. It's actually really, it's incredible because you watch it. It's like, um, I, I always use the example of watching the Impractical Jokers or it's good podcasting as, in general. People don't even realize like when you're having a good time doing it, that's <clears> just a, <throat> such a big part of it. Laughing at each other, yeah. literally sitting here la- while we're talking, having a good time. Because you realize there's a lot of broad appeal to shit too. Like I remember being real like a uh, Tom Shalou telling me like his favorite comics are like uh it's a, it was like Norton and DePaulo like his favorite comics so you'll realize that like a lot of people who you wouldn't nec- like just because they're fans like I, like Jay's a huge Brian Regan fan you know what I mean and his comedy's like completely <laughs> filthy and his is completely That's so weird because Brian Regan told me that he thinks Jay's a faggot. Brian Regan said he'll never work with Jay. By the way, by the way, can I stop? The, very the word about that. The word faggot has been aged like a fine wine, so now when I hear it, it's been on the shelf for so long yeah. that it really is better than it ever oh, it's was. Back. Back. When you walk into my place, it's just all faggots yeah. laid out on the, 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 the countertops. I realize how one faggots like mom jeans came back. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they took it away too early. Yeah. I think if they had just given it one more year and then pulled it. I needed a little bit more time with faggot. Yeah, like, and I was like... I never walked away from it. I've been going strong with faggot for quite some time. Me and faggot have been hand, hand in hand for yeah, years. I never, I never even got, I never even lightened up on it when yeah. people were saying you shouldn't do it. I doubled down. <laughs> By the way, I can remember like a like a first lover when I met the word faggot and then started using it all the time. I was 10 years old. The Suarez brothers were 11, 13, and 15. <laughs> and the, they were running rum up the uh, <laughs> by the way, By the way, I will say, I'm not going to say who. It wasn't one of them. But I think one of us was sexually molested by putting an ice cube up our asshole on their fucking butcher block uh, island. And everyone just kept calling him the faggot while he was getting molested. And I was like, oh, this doesn't seem... I'm going to go home, guys. Dude, the, dude, the fucking... The 80s were so simple, dude. Yeah. You know, that kid's getting molested. He's the faggot. <laughs> Suarez sisters. I remember... I remember... I remember... There was this kid... There was... The, they... <laughs> <laughs> there was this kid. His uh, name was Ch- I, want, I, want to, I don't know. Remember, I don't I think his name was Chucky, and he was in our he was in our um, our our baseball team, and we had an after party, like a pool party after the season, and, and we were doing that. I think we were doing like sardines and pork and beans. His name is Bert. Oh yeah, he goes hey. and when is that? And then they go sorry. <laughs> you never played that game. You never played that game. You're gonna have to back that up a hold second. On. Hold on. I just all I started doing was panning the room to see everyone's face. He goes, you guys know this one? So you're even doing it with the you're even doing it. You're even doing it with a thing where you're like hands bubbling. You're like, you know, like, oh, something's like happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Like that one, right? It was a brief moment in there. And I was like, am I having a stroke? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you never did sardines and pork and beans? Oh, you yes, know, I did. Never mind. I forgot about it. <laughs> were you an all-black yeah, girl stump yeah. group? That's what that sounds like. One of those things. And pork and beans. <laughs> and did your jeans. Your mama's jeans. I'm just talking about this. So the little little jumping one. rope with young black chicks? <laughs> did you your mama say <laughs> Is this your mama wear combat boots? <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> no, you'd go sardines and pork and beans. His name is Bert. And then you'd go... I like to squirt, and if you get too close, you might get hurt. Oh, yeah, sardine. That was the whole... You so you have rhyme. To make I'm up doing your it own, bad. I'm doing it bad. So, wait a minute. You have to make up your own rhyme to your name. Like, they go, uh, sardines. Come on, guys. And pork Fucking and beans. beans. His name is Lewis. I like to do this. And and then... And then... And then... And then... And then a Jewish. There you go. What? Are you yeah. Jewish? I think that we're getting your, the hint. That was your first thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After You're all Jewish? those Jew There's insults. There's not many things that rhyme with Lewis, and I've, I've had to make this <laughs> rhyme Jewish. Jewish. You gotta really really force it's it. as close as you're going to get. Jewish, Judas. Yeah, you got to really force something in there. Lewis, Lewis. 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 useless. In, in college, you were truish. <laughs> Just naming words that you associate with my name. <laughs> my balls are useless. Yeah. Idiot. And then to go around a circle, when it got back to you, you had to have all new rhyme schemes. Yeah, yeah, I have all new rhyme schemes. And so... Salmon and pork and beans. His name is Sal. Yeah. I... I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm not. Go see the impractical jokes live, everyone. So it's Sal. It's Sal. You would Sal. You would do something like this. His name is Sal Volcano. 
And, and I'm a mono. A mono. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't know. done it in a long time. Anyway. But before you know it, the bus ride to the civil rights movement is over. <laughs> <laughs> and you're there. Do, you the think point, this, the do you think this video goes on? <laughs> <laughs> do you think this video goes on whatever website is like the white world star hip hop that black people go on to laugh at us? <laughs> is this a situation right now of us all sitting in a circle trying? <laughs> no one <laughs> Eddie was even able to get to the first. Uh, Lewis got. I do not know what he was saying. Sal, Sal went. Sal started holding a rep. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, wow, well, Sal, I'm here to say. He gave up on that. He gave up on that. And then all, me and Dave sat here just panicking that he's going to try us next. And I got nothing, and I'm trying. I'm thinking something I'm funny. In my head, in my head so I'm trying to get And pork and beans. His, His name, name is Jay. Jay. I thought we did Dave. Jay, Jay. Oh, I thought we all agreed because Dave didn't sing. <laughs> so I assumed we were all doing Dave because I jumped in. It should have been Dave first. This is my ride, by the way. I'm one of those more like uh, free thinking. Like, I'm like Kendrick Lamar, doesn't off the rhyme. So I just come to the tip. Phil, yo, in the house. Why want sandwiches? Why want sandwiches? Hashtag no hate. I'm one of those offbeat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One of those offbeat rappers who doesn't rhyme. The whole, yeah, point, rhyme at all. the whole point of this yo, yo, was yo, yo. Uh, <laughs> this is oh, when we were fuck. like fucking. 10 and we did sardines pork and beans around the room and they go and the last guy was sardines and pork and beans his name is Chucky and he hops up in front of all the parents and he goes you faggots can suck my dick <laughs> <laughs> It was just so not part of the thing. We all fucking lost it, and the parents were laughing. You faggots can suck my dick. If I would have known we could have done that, I would have had something to say. He's fucking ten. He's ten. Oh, he's fucking suck my dick. And we, and, uh, dude, you I don't, don't know what it meant. Uh, Oh, we were laughing so fucking hard, and the parents were like, "No one could parent the moment." Oh, but that was, yeah, that was sardines and pork and beans. All right, one more time: sardines and pork and beans. His name is Dave. I'm not your slave. And something, something. And something. And I, I said, get, "I'm not your slave." <laughs> and, if you, and if you try me, I will put you in a grave. Oh. Sardines. Oh. And pork and beans. Slave so machine. Ever. I like to fuck. And if you're lucky, <laughs> you'll get a buck. <laughs> I don't know. 40. I'm 44. I haven't done it a long time. I was going to say, what a pleasant dad rap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a dad rap. Yeah, I mean, how, 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 how is that even But don't worry, we'll be doing a lot of this on the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Let's go, folks. Oh, I yeah. bet that will become a thing. Oh, that. fuck sure. yeah, oh, yeah, it will. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to bring my, uh, my left, right, center dice. I'm going to bring my hacky sack. <laughs> so wait, who's going on the cruise? I don't even remember anymore. I know, it's, it's, I know. It's, I know, bunch. You, you, you were the last person. You came up to me like, is the cruise fully booked? I'm like, I think there's one more I believe spot. this year they got Joe Gatto. Like, you want to do it? Like, yeah, like, let's do it. That's it. <laughs> I, believe, I believe this year they were able to uh, lock down Murr. Ari's Ari's Shavir. Mike Vecchione. Yes. Uh, Yamanika. Sam Morell. Yamanika. Tim Dillon. Uh, Al Jackson, Al party. Is Al Jackson really on this cruise? Does yeah. Al Jackson still party like that? Sarah Tiana, fucking hard. die, dude. I, went, I was in Cabo die? with Al Jackson, and it was it was you a what? problem. I was in Cabo with Al Jackson. Al Jackson can fucking get down. He goes. Al Jackson can fucking get. You said he's never going to die. Al Jackson. He's not the answer. I never read him that way. I read him as more of like a docile kind of dude. No, 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 no. You ready for a good Al Jackson story? Yes. So I run into Omar Dorsey, who plays Cookie on The Wire with Ray on Ray Donovan. Or no, on Ray Donovan. He plays Cookie on Ray Donovan. So our kids are good friends. Omar's black, if you don't know. And so I see Omar at school drop off, and Omar's like, I go, how you doing? He goes, man, I can use a cocktail. I said, well, why don't we go to my house and podcast? We'll have a cocktail. He's like, yeah? I said, yeah. And he goes, bet. He goes, you mind if I call some friends? I go, I don't care. Fucking 8.30 in the morning, Al Jackson shows up. I not have gone to bed the night before. Shows up and he's like, oh, Birdie Bird, it's going down. And me, Omar and Dorsey, and, and Al Jackson, and another guy, I can't remember his name, I apologize. We sat in here and we did a podcast for three hours. And then at noon, Al Jackson's like, let's go to Pat's. So we all go to Pat's. Around 2.30, I look at them, and I'm like, yo, I got to pick my kids up from school. And Al looks at me. He's like, yo, grab Omar's kid. I'll take care of him. We'll see you later. So me and Leanne go to the school, get Omar's kid and my kid, bring them back here to do homework. At like 5.30, Al Jackson and Omar Dorsey roll in, and they're like, yo, Bert, we're going out. 
uh, Omar's chick's picking up his kid. Let's go. Uh, Al fucking throws down. I was talking about getting cut off on a plane, and I go, yeah, sometimes, you know, if you have, like, four drinks. And he goes, four drinks? I got cut off at ten. I go, you had ten drinks on a plane? He's like, five doubles. I was sitting next to a cowboy. No one's cutting off a black man next to a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Al Jackson might be yeah, one dude. of my favorite human beings to yeah, party with I, I, we in the went, world. We went so fucking hard in Cabo. I mean, cause, really? Because you, you go to these fucking places where you can just buy like the pharmacia. You just buy like whatever pills. And you just Whoa. say what you want, and they give you whatever their equivalent is. So like, I, I, I don't even that know what the safe. fuck I took. I, I do a joke about it in my act now about taking like samples of cocaine on the beach in Cabo. That's what I, I like. Like the food court <laughs> at the mall where you get like samples of fucking yeah. bourbon chicken. Yeah. I just took free samples of cocaine just that really all night. actually happened. That yeah, really I'll actually be happened. If you're in Mexico, it's more dangerous to take their bourbon chicken. <laughs> and it was colored. Take, <laughs> take their cocaine. The cocaine was like colored. Was they, they put like colors in it so you knew who you were like getting it from. They like put like uh, some sort of like dye or whatever, and it would really? have like flavors. It was like. I it wasn't just eating fucking sweet sauce. Or yeah, that's why you were just sniffing. It came in mange. like different. They straws, and then and you could like pour them on the from the straws. Yeah. No, that's what they called them, pixie poppers. Just, it burned like I think a sum bitch. Fucking downing fun dip. These uh, Mexicans you know, were just laughing at Lewis. Lick you know who else is really fun to party with? Tone Bell. You're a party oh, with Tone man. Bell. You don't. You don't know Tone Bell. Uh, not I know Tone. Uh, yeah, tone, tone did the he did the crowd work show. Tone. He's he's one a fun guy to party with too. I like man. I could. Uh, mm. There's a lot of comics. That's why I'm never gonna quit drinking. Well, you are for this month. You are. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but I can do a fucking month on my fucking head. I'm gonna love it. I'll, I'll dial back my energy on the within the first five days. I will enjoy my daughters. I'll be a great parent. I'll have a great time with my family. And then after gotta, a month, you go back to being a shithead. I know. And then and then and then think about this. Tell me if this isn't the biggest reward. The day to look forward to. Uh, Sal, can I tell you? I've already planned out. Uh, <laughs> Goddamn comedy jam songs that we can all do together. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've already planned all this out. I'm so excited. My next, my first drink will be at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Right. So like, eleven right. New Orleans time, uh, in the French Quarter on Halloween. Halloween night. Yep. How the fuck do you not want to start partying? That, that like, I know. that's it. That's and the so way to I'm do it. so fucking excited. And then I'll be on the cruise. Who doesn't? I love cruises. Yeah. I'll be on the cruise for fucking my first week back drinking. Trying to With be responsible, friends. but getting shit out of control. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I'm, I'm going to sneak weed under the cruise, and it is going to be incredible. And you're going to talk Stan, about Stan it publicly. Last, last year snuck in, no joke. Yeah. He just taped. Yeah, he's he a video of it. Naked There's a video of it. And stuff to his body. And yeah, just... the, uh, they're called uh, cruise flasks. Yeah. You could buy them at cruiseflasks.com. Uh, bring, can you, are you bringing legit weed or vape? Just bring I'm gonna vape pens. No, I'm bringing weed. Uh, here's the deal. I'm gonna mail stuff on them, the cruise. We're gonna do that show, right? On the fifth. Yeah, Orleans. we're doing a show, a show on the fifth or the sixth. Fifth. Okay. Yeah. Fifth. Yeah, yeah. Say it Fifth. Okay. Fifth. Yeah. yeah. Fifth. Five. Four. It's our birthday. <laughs> Sal had the yes. brilliant idea of text. I'm watering my pool yesterday because you got to water it for the uh, so the thing doesn't crack. So it grows. Yeah. And so yeah. Those so are grows. plants, Bert. And so uh, Sal goes. Uh, this will be great. It's our birthday show. We'll do a birthday show in New Orleans on the fifth. Me and you. And then we'll get all the fans to uh, give us presents, and we'll open them up on stage to end the show, and that'll and we'll riff on them. And I was like, "That's great!" And then immediately I was like, "Someone's gonna pack a pipe bomb in one of those." So I'm not gonna lose both our hands. <laughs> <laughs> but so we'll have a dog sniff them first. But, but that'll be that'll be fun. Stan Hope he he did the cruise flash. I've done it too. I just didn't like publicize it. But uh, yeah, it's it's you basically they're bags that are like they're the, like they don't go through metal detectors. It's just a plastic bag that you fill up with liquor. So you don't have to buy liquor on the cruise. Because you'll spend a grand. Runners. You'll they're spend a grand runners, on the cruise. Right? Yeah, they're called rum runners or cruise flasks. I piss on that. I piss on that. What do you mean? Fucking, that's my, I love, my favorite thing is buying drinks on a cruise. Why do you like this? I love the idea. I love, I don't want to go to my room to make a drink. I, oh, like, I, I like being on a cruise knowing I have no responsibility. Run up to the bar and go, sir, what can you make me? I love that fucking thing. Oh, I hate it. You have I... no idea. You're going to see me at my worst. Because I've been, a, I've been one so, month sober Hopefully, if we can get through Chicago, and then and and then I will be, I will at some point someone's gonna go, hey man, we should probably talk to Bert. I guarantee it. We should have a talk with yeah. Bert. Someone should say, Sal, you, you have a cruise intervention. Sal, you can talk to him. You're working on the fifth, and Sal's gonna be like, why don't I schedule like like the four, like the third day in? Why don't we do like a, on stage? We'll do like a sit down with Bert. Yeah. Like yeah, we'll, yeah. Have, we'll have everybody come in an all stage intervention, yeah. and they'll be like, "Whoa, whoa, what's this?" And go, Bert, sit down with just a bunch of guys that love the hell out of you. Yeah. Like, hey, pal. Yeah. How you feeling? Oh, and have letters from my family. 
<laughs> and read them on stage. That's my favorite. Dad, you were really fun in October. I like that we played softball every day. I like that you woke up and made us eggs. I love the donuts on the weekend. You told me you love me every day. Man, the one thing I will say, like, the, by the way, this is secret time. Obviously, if anyone's listening to this on the podcast, just don't fucking share this. What? But, like, I, but I, like, I do secret time on my podcast sometimes where I don't. That's, yeah. never, that's not a good idea. Yeah, it is. With my fans, it is. Remember they're, Secret Time of Roastmasters? Christian it's the funniest thing that's ever happened at Roastmasters. You're really pushing oh, yeah. <laughs> the definition of secret. That? You were hammered. You were hammered, and you go, uh, and you point at the, I won't even say who they were, but you just point to the comics. At one point, they go, everyone, you know them, and you love them from uh, Burt <laughs> and the machine, everyone, Burt Kreischer. And you go, yeah, and you just go, hammered. You go, you go Secret Time, this guy... Did coke this weekend? And this guy smoked weed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so, and, every, and both guys were like, "What? Whoa! Hey, burger! Hey! No more secret time! No more secret time! You just the first words you to the, the guys. The guys you said it about were like, uh, and they're like, oh. holy shit! What? Goes, ah, everybody introducing Bird Crusher. You go secret time. This guy's cheating on his wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 say secret time anymore. <laughs> Jesus, bro! Don't worry. All my fans don't have to say anything. <laughs> No, uh, secret time. The one thing I will recollect, the last time I went a big long stretch without drinking, I'm riding bikes with my daughter, my oldest. She, maybe it's like she's, I'm four, I was 40 at the time, so she was like nine, and she maybe 10, and she was like, uh, she goes, hey, can I tell you something? And I go, yeah, and she goes, you've been really relaxed these last few days. I think the only problem I have with booze that I have is when I'm partying hard, I'm on the road a lot, and I'm not home much, I get very frantic. Like, did you see me putting together the podcast tonight? Like, it's that energy that it's not like a calm energy. But I think when I stop drinking, I get very calm. So I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I'm excited for this fucking month. Yeah, I can't fucking wait. Yeah, I did it for. Uh, I did completely sober for like five months, yeah. five and a half months, like nothing, no weed, no alcohol, no nothing, and it was uh, it was great. It's very it, like uh, it's almost like you're very like clear headed. It's a, it's the clearest I've ever been in my entire life, but. Why yeah. stop? <laughs> but anyway, but I love weed. You, know why <laughs> stop? you know why stop? You know why stop? Why? What? Can I tell you? And I once again, secret time. The uh, do you remember the night I had to come to your house because I was having a rough go at it? I thought we were just having fun together, but yeah. No, I was like, remember? I was like, no, I, was like I was like, I was like, I was. We were gonna like house. maybe go out, and then we're just like, you know, what? we're just hang here. And you're like, yeah, dude. I use that as an example of why I'm friends with comics. Someone's like, I, I remember that day was really rough on me. I did. Uh, I went and saw Planet of the Apes with Sam Roberts. You spoiler alerted it all over the radio. I, just, <laughs> I didn't understand what a screener you was. Know, you didn't understand. You didn't understand. He went to a sneak preview and just spoiler alerted the entire movie on like Ron and, on Bennington. I got over the serious XM pass. I saw it and then someone was like, "What have you done today?" And I was like, "I saw Planet of the Apes." And they're like, "What do you think?" I was like, "I didn't like it." <laughs> I think it sucks. And they go, really? Go, it does a lot of hard, like, it's hard to fucking believe. It's like they go from different climates and all of a sudden you're like, and I just couldn't follow the fucking, and, and then Roland texted me, uh-oh, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Oh, shit. Natter sandwiches. Oh, no. Natter sandwiches. Oh, God, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, okay. There's another redneck sandwich. <laughs> what is a tomato sandwich? It's tomatoes and mayonnaise. But that's delicious salad. Well, that's good. That's yeah. not yeah. bad. Is it hot? Is no, it no, hot? no, no, no. The banana, so, though, that's a problem. Yeah, it's really Just really everyone, let's really all. Delicious. Let's, here's no what we're going to do. I cut it in eight pieces. So you okay. Can a bite. So everyone grab a bite. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lewis, get one of the center bites. There we go. Sal, 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 you have to. Sal, you've got to at least try You have to. Let's, this is the nanner Sal, right? That one right there, right there. This is the <laughs> so bite. We're gonna go around the room. We're gonna go around the room and each take a bite. And uh, oh, and I'll man. start. I'll start. And then we'll go Lewis, Sal, Jay, and we find out that it's arsenic and Bert's been taking a little bit every day for the past six months. <laughs> Bert's a flower in the air. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> it's not the best match. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start it off like that. Why? 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 I'm not gonna lie to you. This is their best work. This isn't, this, isn't, this isn't what I thought it was. Peanut butter. Peanut butter, not mayonnaise. I think I thought mayonnaise was whipped cream. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not eating this. Oh, no, no, no. 
Good for us to take a bite and then comment. I think we should all I'll just take, take a bite. Yeah, everyone take a bite at the same time and then we'll go around the room. Cause, uh, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. So I already bit mine. Go ahead, everyone take a bite on the count of three. Big bite, big bite. One, two, three. Oh, wow. I'm not offended. So, okay, let's start with Lewis. Okay. Into the mic. Into the mic. Okay. No, here's the thing. All right, ready? <laughs> yes. Not gross. Not gross. Not here's you know what it is. It's uh, it, it, it mayonnaise can't you can't go wrong with mayonnaise. That's just the truth. Mayonnaise and white bread are you're, such a marriage. You're just not gonna really be able to fuck up mayonnaise enough with anything you're gonna add to it. So yeah, it's fine. It's just it, it's not <laughs> I think, necessary. I think you people are white <laughs> you trash. Know what? I don't know. I'll, I'll save us time this when it's going in the room. I'd almost just sign a check mark. I would just <laughs> sign my initials next to what Lewis just said. It wasn't bad at all. I just don't understand why, why? again in my life I'd be like, why? Was, well, I guess let's see what ingredients we have floating around the house here. It's uh, snowing outside. I don't really want to check out to the store. I got to get thrown out a banana mayonnaise sandwich. This was my Vietnam. <laughs> this was my Vietnam. This is my Vietnam. Oh, I like the taste of the banana. Banana complements the mayonnaise and the white bread. They all kind of go together, <laughs> like like a tiki torch carrying group, <laughs> like, like a bunch of tiki torchers. I will say, like it tastes very. Bad. Bad. This is like, can you, I bet you can't make a sandwich with three white things. <laughs> no, it somehow tasted more banana y than I thought it was going. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was going to have a little bit. Here's, 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 can I just say? I think it was also that I knew what it was. If I had to close my eyes and yeah. you told me to eat, I might have eaten it. I'm like. No. I recognize some of these flavors. It's not that bad, but I think that I knew. I was yeah, the mayonnaise thing. Talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. Yeah, I just realized like this is what incredible. I'm I all right, all right. The tomato, the tomato sandwich. Oh I love this. Oh my god. Mater sandwich. Mater sandwich. Oh yeah, tomato. The tomato sandwich, sandwich wrong, is yeah. fucking phenomenal. Yeah, uh, I like the nanner sandwich, but I think that's because I'm married to you. You mm. lost my trust with the nanner sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Try the tomato sandwich. Try the tomato sandwich. Oh, I'll try tomato sandwich. Hey, can sandwiches. you make me set, like some maybe some uh, mango and mustard on some rye? <laughs> I don't really keep that in the house. Okay. The, the mater sandwich. Oh, the mater sandwich is mater sandwich is out of control. You can just order. You can order that. Can I tell you something, Bert? Yeah. I think you have a gangster family just for the fact that you uh, own white bread in the house. Yeah. Who does that anymore? That's awesome. It's in 1975. Who has I white bread? I appreciate that. Yeah, it's not right. like iceberg we, lettuce. She buys wheat every now and then, but like, for the most part, we eat white bread. <laughs> and Leanne, talking to a mic if you're going to talk, baby. I'm sorry. No, I don't need to talk. You just asked me for a sandwich. Okay, hey, did, did the girl say anything about Sal? No. Uh, sorry. No, that, I was... Uh, no, no, no. I was they saying that. They called him gay? I think they were... <laughs> Oh yeah. I was like, well, you know, you never know. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. They're mad. I said I felt no, terrible. Mad. No, they're not mad. No. When I knocked on the door, it went the whole house I felt went into a tizzy. The dog started going hard. <laughs> the kids ran. <laughs> like everything. Like, oh, and everyone, then everyone, and then someone started. said, "Well, we'll find out if Georgia will open the door for a criminal with Big J with his fucking blue hair <laughs> and fucking She did not. She came and got mom. She did the right thing. Yeah. She goes, well, uh, Mom, there's a terrifying man with a Death Row t-shirt on. Mom, when I came in, I was like, that was good job, little girl. I would have killed you. <laughs> <laughs> was, I was actually here to kill you. But <laughs> since you passed the test, you I'll did, podcast with your dad. Instead, instead, I will go podcast with your father. Mom, um, there's, a, there's a punk rock bad guy from the future at the door. <laughs> hey, Mom, there's some guy who's trying too hard. <laughs> Mom, Iggy Pop gained weight. <laughs> that was a bad example. Yeah, I don't know Iggy Pop. <laughs> Uh, you going inside, baby doll? I'm going, yeah. All right, I love you. Thank you. Bert, Yeah. Can we smoke another joint? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to whisper. Hey, Bert. I smell the secret time. I do drugs. Secret time. My wife. <laughs> can you make your wife leave so we get to drugs? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have another joint? I don't have another joint, though. I do. I have tons We have joints. joints. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab them. Thanks, buddy. No, we have, we have right here. You don't have to go away. We, we have, have a joint. But he's got those great pre-rolls. Yes, yeah, son. Um, I might light a cigar. Is that going to bother anyone? Nope. Does anyone want a cigar? It bothers me on principle. Um, so, here, uh, will you pass me the cigars? Uh, 
I, I gotta be honest. Uh, with that. Manny's dip cigars, delicious. <laughs> Manny's. So, so wait, so wait. Uh, I should have had her leave so that we could talk about the banana sandwiches. I felt like you guys were holding back. Not uh, at all. No, I said it was Vietnam. How much was he holding back? <laughs> I was the only guy. Uh, I was holding back. It was back. more like World War II, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you hate I it? I was holding back. What, did you hate it? What were your thoughts? No, no, no. It, it was if I if I did, wouldn't have known what was on it, I bet you I would have had just been a little more open. It to It just doesn't make sense. I, I I don't even have that much of a problem it's like with it. Interracial marriage. I, you, know what I would, you know what I would do? I would sooner just eat a mayonnaise sandwich with a little salt and pepper and then have a banana as dessert. Yes. Right. right. Why wouldn't I do that? Why would I combine the two? Or maybe just a banana sandwich. Can I tell you? Well, yeah, a banana sandwich would you just take too? a banana and just dip it in mayo? I would do, you know what I would do? A banana? Hold on. Better. <laughs> toast, toast, toast. Listen to me. White toast. Wait, now all I want to do is see Bert eat a, uh, eat a <laughs> open a banana. I a banana. <laughs> take health in the next level. Hey, ladies, try a banana sandwich. Uh, pass me the cigar. You know what's so funny? Don't, don't, eat, don't eat that one. Eat the so Nanner sandwich. Is there a carb-free Nanner sandwich? <laughs> you see? It? Yeah, I could absorb them with the carb thing. I just eat mayonnaise-covered bananas. Speaking of interracial marriage, I was uh, a friend of mine married a black chick recently, and I thought to myself, like, I, I kind of always, like, I've been, a, I've been attracted to black chicks, but, like, I, it dawned on me, like, as I left with my wife, I went, I went, uh, all day, every day? <laughs> You're going to spend every day with a black person? This <laughs> just seems like a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of time to spend with a black person. Oh, man. <laughs> this is the one where Bird gets fired from his podcast. I just know what this is. You're going to have to write an apology letter to the podcast. Oh, man. Legion of Skanks. Legion, I mean, Legion of Skanks. If you get all three of the members of the Legion of Skanks to go, I don't think I would say that out loud. <laughs> you have to go to do banana man and sandwiches or Bird's truth serum. <laughs> He tells the church for one hour after he eats a banana mayonnaise sandwich. <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> with a black, with person. A black person. You know, speaking of interracial I'm marriage. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, it fuck. just seems like a lot of time. Oh, <laughs> it's shit. a lot of time with a black person. <laughs> I agree with you. I completely agree with you. I get it. I don't know what your sentiment was, but it's something gets lost in that. I'm no. technically part black, and I get it. Oh, oh shit, that's oh, so funny. God. But it's not like with like. Are every... you actually part black? Well, I mean, yeah. My uh, my my father was Afro Puerto Rican. He was oh, black Puerto I mean, Rican. Right, His right. dad was yeah. so black. Yeah, it was, uh, it's Afri- African American. Afro- it's just a, a black guy no, with a Hispanic weird. accent. Yeah, I've been Jerry curl. I've been considering Puerto Ricans black my yeah. whole life. But I feel weird just... spending full days with my sometimes I'm like this is not good I'm 8% African American I found out from the Ancestry.com yeah, but all those things are bullshit now really? I feel like everybody's 8% African American I think it's all bullshit now. I think it's too convoluted now well how about the Ancestry not- have you seen the Ancestry commercial where it's the black chick and she's uh, standing behind like a desk and she's like you know I was curious to what my um, ethnic background was and so I checked turns out I'm from Senegal now clearly this woman's an actress and then they put her in a fucking Kunta Kinte wedding <laughs> <laughs> And, and she's got to be like, humba, 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 humba. <laughs> and you're like, wow, that fucking woman needed a paycheck. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get where you couldn't be married to that. <laughs> Have well, you no, ever done one? Like, I never. Maya Giorgio is the only black chick. I you don't know who she is. She's a comic. I know Maya Giorgio. Yeah, I hooked up with Maya Giorgio. But back she's when I knew you. half black. Yeah, but Tops. you know what? She was so dominant in it. She cuddled with me. She snuggled from behind, and I was the you baby were a little spoon. Spoon. Yeah, mm. really? Yeah. And my my whole thing was like I was just thinking like I'm. She popped you like a basketball. Sounded like I'm trying to defend myself, but I just thought you know with. Oh, never mind. Who gives a fuck? No, keep on going. No, <laughs> I want more racist Bert. I've it's never not heard racist. It. It's uh, I'm not. I can't smoke. Um, I got to do radio at three in the morning. What? Yeah. What radio? Uh, Rover in the Rover in the morning. Nice. Roman Morning Glory. Oh, it's it's back east. No, no, no. I, he's a, he has a tour bus and he's on the Burbank lot. And so he asked me to come over and do radio. And I was like, I'll be with you guys. Party, take a nap, wake up, Uber, party, come back at five in the morning, take a nap. Two shots with Al Jackson. Oh. And then right back to the See, fucking. that's my problem. And I'm being serious when I say this, is morning drinking. Because I really love morning drinking. You'll see this on the cruise. I love morning <laughs> drinking more than anything. Really? I love Why? it. Because once someone morning drinks with you, they're, it's a commitment. They're like, yeah, my day's shot too. What are we doing? <laughs> like, but, they, but you got to take a nap. That's the only problem is like if you, if you get up at a – because I've done – the last time I ever drank was on the last cruise I did almost two years ago. 
last day I ever drank. Um, we went fucking, you know, you go hard on a cruise. You yeah. start drinking at 10 in the morning, right? You start smoking, you, you know, 2, 3 p.m. hits. I only you got to take a nap. One you got to come back out at like 6, 7, and then you oh, go you to don't the make second. it back out, though. What time do you start your takeoff from work day things? Uh, they start early. Um, uh, like, <laughs> well, they, the, they start early for me. I start drinking at 6, and I drink until 10 on air, and then I go in and I do radio. <laughs> I do the show at like 11.30 noon. And those are, I mean, we're, I, I'm, I mean, not to, not to bury the lead, I think, but we're talking about doing those in a much larger venue. Oh, I, I was talking to someone. I, 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 I mean, not to really bury the lead, but I definitely talked about Sal doing it with me. But I was like, I would love to bring a bunch of guys that like to party, like Let's me, do. Stanhope, Sal, you guys, like, like mash it up so it's not, it's not ra- Like, it'll, I'll let it fall on my shoulders, or I'll do it every day. But, like, I don't want you guys to have to fucking burn out. But, like, make it, like, get a tour bus and do a couple dates. But do them, like, oh, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And places that... This is the takeoff of work tour. Yeah, yeah. and then do, yeah. like, a month and get a tour bus. <laughs> That's great. Get all it, daytime shows. We're, we're actually to- we're actually completely talking about this. But uh, getting a tour bus, getting a sponsor, wrapping the tour bus and the sponsor, calling sick to work show with dot, dot, dot. And then doing, like, you know, 600 seaters. N- nothing, like... Right. Just enough so that everyone makes a good dollar for the night, for the morning. And then we can all go do a fucking night show if you have the balls. Yeah. And fucking really double up our money, you know. And That's great. It, it could be a really fun tour. It would be a little bit of a burner. But uh, but I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Yeah, but if you do it for just a month... Or, or know, even like, even like one, a couple once, weeks. If you do it once in every city. I mean, you do a like, couple weeks and do up and up the East Coast. When I did a... Uh, when I did that with the music groups, it was always it was like three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. We could do something like that. Dude, dude, we're fucking pros. We could do the whole fucking... Can I tell you, this is going to be the hardest part of fucking October, is right now the buzz just hit me, and I feel so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> My brain doesn't say anything. Like He just goes, I guess I'll take a back seat. I got two brains. I got big brain and I got little brain. And little brain's the sweet guy in me. My my heart, my like the guy who got really excited when you guys were going out stage and snuck out on I don't know if you saw it, but I snuck out on stage and got a shot of you guys from behind. It was really cool. But like the I video to, you put up? I yeah, saw, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to sneak out to the back of the stage to get it. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. They think I'm a crew member. No one knows. Like, you know, it's like it's like, yeah, that's it's a big show. But it was such a cool video and then I got so excited and I posted it. And then I and then someone was like, What are you are you a fanboy? And I was like, no, I'm a fucking guy who respects fu- how badass this moment is. Yeah. And also, I can, what, what I weird say, fucking thing I want to say? Because people are fucking yeah. horrible. It's a weird, it's a, there is a weird thing. It's like, why is it like a problem to be You're a fan of like, us, a, like a comedian? That like, yeah. you're friends with. In fact, to be honest with you, I'm really only friends with people that I'm fans of their comedy. I can't be friends with people that I don't respect their comedy because right. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you're, when you're friends with somebody, you're like, dude, their comedy stinks. It's like the conversation can only go so far. Once it starts getting into like, you start getting into like the things that you hate about the business or things that you don't have going on, you start to see the separation Wait, and you have I to fucking. A dollar? You're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from me. How often does it happen though that somebody's like, there's definitely people you know who are like really good comics who are not funny people off stage? Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, that's but most people, 90, the, I was going to say ninety percent. But, of the most, people that, but of most people that are that are really funny in life tend to be funny on stage too. I think for the at, oh, at some mean, point, you know, what I mean, like fine. Or they figure it out life. eventually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, if, if, everyone don't. everyone has to stink. I've you seen know, in funny the people who just never figured it out and, and quit because they give up though before yeah, they, they figure out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. They, they for sure. Uh, Travis Posen did that, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's like fucking when you stick to it. Right, but I think some people who like learned how to be funny though are better at it quicker. Sometimes I think so. I think people with a higher IQ can get better at stand up comedy faster than funny people that are dumb, because you can figure out the tricks and you can recognize the tricks. And yeah. Funny, yeah. funny is a weird like thi- like I knew people who were like the funniest human beings I've ever known in my life, but I don't think they could ever do stand up. Like that wasn't their type of funny. Oh, well, they're mentally but, handicapped. You were laughing at them, but it is so funny to yeah. watch them try to use the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> no, but there's no, but I know what you're saying. There I'm are, sorry, there but are they're guys. not black. <laughs> all day, every day. By the way, all, all I, day, can, I, can day. I tell you? With a black? <laughs> I, I want to get back into that. Can I tell you, I, I, I tell you that I said that, I was, I was saying that from like a place of like, I thought someone would be like, yeah, or like, it creepy. We, don't, and, we all get it. You start, you when, y'all started, it. when y'all started laughing, I was like, well, maybe I'll use it on stage. And then I was like, maybe I won't. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are guys that are funny as fuck off stage and, and will never get it. They'll never get why they're so funny. 
Like they'll never because what happens in stand up is you get so close to the forest that you try to re- replicate what other people do. You know, I had a I had a problem. Um, one of my biggest hiccups with the doing the comedy store was that there, there are so many people that are seeing what's working there that are doing versions of that. So there's only like three versions of comedy done at the comedy store. That's that's everywhere. That, by the way, it's everywhere. But like. I am not doing any of those versions. I'm doing my version, which re- works really good. But it, but when you've seen like a Bill Burr, a Joe Rogan, a Dalia, a, 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 a Bobby, uh, Bobby Lee, like uh, and then you've seen a bunch of people that do something similar to that, or like yeah. a Jeff Ross, and then you see like a couple other Jeff Rosses. Well, in New York, I think it was like it was like there was a tell. There yeah. was like all the guys who obviously were influenced by a tell. And by the way, that's I'm put me in that group. Yeah, all the guys who were like Burr, yeah, Colin. Colin. There's yeah, there's like it almost like falls into different categories, and you see the guys that are doing. But I think in the beginning, that's when you're a fan of anything, you're just doing what you enjoy, what you think is funny, and then you move away from it, and you kind of figure out what your version but of like, funny it's like, is. It's like imagine going to an Italian restaurant and they serve pizza, pasta. They serve like a, a nice. Like uh, Asabuco, and then they got dessert. And then you come in, you're like, yo, I make flaffles. And everyone's like, we're not used to eating flaffles here. Like, I go like, into yeah, the yo, I make uh, banana and mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> I make yo, banana, yo, yeah, yo. I make nana sandwiches. Like, nobody <laughs> wants that anywhere, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Print the right sign. Now, <laughs> Print the sign. Nana sandwiches. <laughs> I think that's one of the things I'm excited about for Sober October is I kind of, like, I've been able to mask my insecurities with booze when I do stand-up in L.A., but I think I'm gonna just go up and just go every single night and bomb every single like do brand new material and just really find out what is funny and what isn't funny because I'm t- I'm so tired of like my ego getting in the way of stand up. It's such a fucking problematic. I was so impressed by guys like like Stanhope and Rogan and Burr. Dude, I remember Burr. Jay, you remember this? I remember Burr when he bombed talking about women. Like sure. when he, I remember Louie when he bombed talking about his family, bombed, and he stuck with it and did it because he believed in it. And then here I am, like, I get up at the store sometimes and I just, I do stuff that I know will work. Well, you know what I find interesting about you when you come to New York? We've said this before. We were like, oh, let's do it, you know, tonight. Like, let's blah blah blah, and we'll all meet up and go to the stand. And you have like that. No, man, fuck that. Like, let's not do comedy. Let's go. But I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but you're so funny and you have so much fun on stage. I'm surprised you like, like. I'm saying like you're no, you don't have like a, when you're in New York you're like you want to hang out but you really you don't give a shit about going on stage interestingly I have enough. no I have no interest in New York because like uh, you know that I, I don't know I, I don't know I don't know I shouldn't I should not speak now I am buzzed because I haven't drank in a day <laughs> so like my liver's been in like a day <sighs> yeah one day unassisted sleep bro that's hardcore in this house wow. unassisted sleep no drugs no alcohol you go to bed but we have rules about going to bed I gotta go to bed early like at 9 o'clock no one can no one can wake me up like if I'm snoring you just gotta go to the couch because if I wake up at 11 I'm up for the night yeah and uh, and I yeah, slept till 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. today Went to bed at nine and slept till ten. Thirteen hours. Yeah, my daughter came in, in at like five forty-five, and got my oldest Georgia, the one with the blonde hair, got in bed with me because she was going to watch TV and I was sleeping on the couch too. She had a bad dream, and she gets in the bed with me and she goes, "Whoa!" I said, "What?" She goes, "Mom's side of the bed is ice cold." <laughs> and I went, "Really?" She goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't sleep here. Change sides with me." So I, I switched sides with her, and she goes. Why is this yours so hot? And I go, I guess mom didn't sleep with me last night. <laughs> so she was like, it's, but I had like heating pads. I lewd. I, it was unassisted sleeps are the shit for me. I can't wait. Heating pads? Oh, yeah. I sleep with heating pads. I like to be cold. Going to what? Sleep. Yeah. No, I, here's what I, I like to be cold in the room. Yes. Blanket yeah. over Oh, yes, me too. To make myself hot with my, I breathe into my blanket. Oh, yes. Yeah. To hot to the point where I sweat. Then I breathe out and I get cold. And I do it all night. Yeah. And I never Lewis, was even... Talking to the microphone, Lewis. Dude, You're a professional Lewis, broadcaster. Holy shit, sorry. <laughs> Lewis, you all my life. You extremes in your sleep? <laughs> all my life. Throughout the night, I wake up in profuse sweat sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes freezing <laughs> cold. Can't believe it. I'm not as right. In the same exact night of sleep. It's, it's a constant There's always waking. a level of fury that whatever <laughs> state I'm in, I'm angry. So oh. whatever's in the bed... Oh, you has... get up, you pick, you pull the shirt, like... Yeah, yeah. Dude, so it's a, I never get true <laughs> REM sleep, fight with and this I'm just angry all night. All night. So oh. imagine how horrible I feel like in life when I'm awake. Oh, can I tell <laughs> you? The fact that I can even smile. I am awake and angry almost seven <laughs> yeah. nights a week. Yes. 
Can I tell punchy you the, thing? Can I tell uh, you the dream I had last night? So I'm going to tell you the actor's name. Um, because he was in Reno 911. He's the black dude from Reno 911. Oh, he was just oh, I don't a dice that guy. show. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, though? Yeah. So I had a dream last night. Big eyes. I had a dream last night that there was a... That the nose, Jay. I was in a... Big nose. I was, I was in a car, and I pulled up uh, into um, a parking lot, and there was a guy passed out in the driver's side uh, with uh, with a beer in his lap. And I said in my head, this is the way my, I guess my brain works in real life, and then I was like, he's going to get a DUI because it doesn't matter. Um, we need to get him out of his car. So he woke up, and he punched the gas, and he started spinning in circles. Cops show up. The cop from Wiener 911 shows up. He arrests him, puts him in the cop car, and says to me, you should come have dinner with my family. I know you're out of town. So I go have dinner with his family, and he, um, him and his wife talk about what Christians they are. And I'm like, okay. And so he said, you need to see me discipline my son. This is a dream I had. Ooh, this is my, maybe I should stop telling this dream. And so I go in, and there's a kid in a bed in his tidy whities and he's got wires coming out of his tidy whities And this guy, the guy who from 911, puts um, – Electric clamps on a battery and starts shocking his genitals. Boner check. <laughs> the, black guy, the black guy in, the, in Reno One takes his pants off and he's got a hard dick. And he goes, "Let's sit in here for a little bit." And I fucking woke up. I was like, "What the fuck kind of dream this is, is what that?" Happens with unassisted sleep. <laughs> that was a, yeah, because I'm de- yeah, because I'm detoxing. I think you're so it's all this fucking I poison think you're coming out of my body. Yeah. What was that, that not a fucked up dream? Like I literally woke up and was yeah. like, huh. Huh, huh. And then it was like it was like five thirty when that happened. Five o'clock when that happened. Then George came in. I talked to her for a little bit and then fell back asleep with a heating pad on my back. That's more uncomfortable than you hating black chicks. Yeah, yeah. This has been a very open and honest podcast for me. <laughs> Trying to, <laughs> but here's you know, so it's because I've done. I've only. Like the idea of um, what do they call it? lucid dreaming, right? Where you like, I do that all the time. Had dreams I was flying and fucking an ex girlfriend. What? To last, night, what? last night. Last I night. Last night. I wish I uh, woke up and flew and fucked her again. Get I out. swear you, to God, oh, you 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 woke up and then got back into the same dream. Uh, woke That's up a little bit do. and got right back in the I same fucking dream. dream. I feel like I've been able to get back into the dream. I had one time oh, I, I but never lose. You, you hear about that? I remember there's that movie Waking Life that was about that. Or I watched that when I was younger, and then there's like you know like the Nightmare on Elm Street. That was like the whole idea of like the the movie was you know the dream warriors they can control their dreams and fight Freddy, right? So I just thought that was it really was cool. Part, part three, not. Not the first one. Whatever, fucking nerd. No, it's important. All right. So, uh, but I was always like really cool. And I remember one time I just thought like as hard as I just kept on thinking, I'm on the beach, I'm on the beach, I'm on the beach. Then I fell asleep and I just, dude, on the fucking beach, just fucking had a dream that I was just in the ocean, whatever. And I thought it was like Freddy Krueger came and killed But that's not lucid. Lucid dream is more like you realize you're dreaming. And then you can control it in the moment. That was me. In the dream I knew. that ever. In the dream I knew. You got a power. I could fly. But I, I couldn't. Uh, Isla, it was in the the first part of the dream, and she was on a beach, and she was scared. And I said, baby, I can fly and get us out of here. And I grabbed her under the armpits, and I said, let's go, one, two, three. And I jumped, and we just landed. And I went, hold on, one second. Give me a second. I got to jump off of something to start I think my happy flying. Thoughts. And so I jumped off a little bit of a cliff, and I started flying. I came back, and I picked her up. I took her to a safe place, and I said, I'll be back. I'm going to fly for a little bit. And so, <laughs> this is really cool. So I jumped off that. I jumped off that. I, I flew around. carry you the whole time. <laughs> and I'm fine here. I don't have super strength. I can just fly, all right? I can't oh carry a human. <laughs> I'm still normal bad strength. I just have the gift of flight. So let Papa Bear take a couple spins on his own, then you can fucking, you know, weigh me down. <laughs> You just quit crowding me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you just give that a wide oh. berth for five minutes. Can I enjoy one thing? Like, you're kind of cramping my style. Like, I wouldn't cheat on your mom, but this is kind of the only attention I've gotten from women in a while. I can fly, motherfucker. <laughs> 15 minutes, I'll be back. <laughs> so I jumped off that building, which is a second story building, and I felt someone at my feet pushing my feet. I turned around. There's an ex girlfriend. I said, hey, what are you doing here? She goes, I can fly too. I said, well, come fly with me. And she came up, and she was naked. Now, there was a. Part of her tongue that was a little bit of a snake, and there was a big lump on one side that had like a globe on it. Her. She's been through some shit. Yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah. Come on, she dude. Naked. That's because she put out cigarettes on her. She was an angel hooker. Just don't kiss her on the mouth. That's what I said. There you go. <laughs> totally naked, slamming body, and we start having sex. And then I wake up. Flying? And then I go, and then I, yeah, flying, flying. 
And then oh, wait, <laughs> your daughter watching in horror. <laughs> yes, is this why you made me wait on the ground for you? You should have gotten out of fucking flight zone. I have Shut up. I can still see. I have the hiccups. The now. sky is a vast and expansive landscape. I can see it from many angles. Daddy, you're at most 15 feet in the air. I'm right here. I think oh. with a running start, I could probably jump up and touch you. Oh, I feel your sweat. Ew. <laughs> oh my god, I hope that sweat. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking throw up all night. Everything's a little warm. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bert's got fucked uh, up dreams. <laughs> he got a belly full of fucking mayonnaise and fucking banana sandwiches. <laughs> You think you're eating you're your white bread. They put they put, they put poison that to kill black people. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> What's the last white person you see eating white bread? <laughs> That's government assistance bread. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to get rid of these hiccups if you guys keep figuring these jokes. Oh, oh, <laughs> now, wait, you say lucid, Bert. You realize so, who, that you were dreaming and you were doing what you wanted to do and I'm, being like, I only have a little bit till I wake up. I, I, I was like, well aware. Hey, well were aware. you doing exercise at one point trying to have lucid dreams? And where am I crazy in saying that? Uh, no, I did a thing and it was kind of like Lewis's thing. Just like dumb things were like that and it worked. It worked yeah. completely. You did it. <laughs> it's like what you're supposed yeah, you to do. You can train your brain, right? So this is what you're supposed to do, yeah. right? You go, it's really this simple, right? We talked I, about this, yeah. I tried it once, and it just works. So you go, you do it like four or five times throughout the day. You're just supposed to touch a surface, and you go like, am I dreaming or am I awake? And then just touch a surface. Just do that like when you're awake. Do that four or five times. And it's, you, you just have the thought of lucid Put dreaming. Put listeners, he just touched my dick. And, and, that's, and then in your dream, you get to suck his dick. It's pretty hot. <laughs> and, uh, no, and then I just, and that night, and I dreamed, and then the idea is they say, like, then when you have a dream one time, you're like, am I dreaming or asleep? And you're like, it doesn't feel the same. But I didn't even have that experience. I just, that night, I just had a lucid dream. Well, just because you're just thinking about the it. Point Where is, were you? The point like, is, you, you can't, you can't you get like, out I'm of dreaming, it. and I'm going to control, like, like, I'm going to pick up a sword now, because that'll be fun. Oh, it's look, my it's sword not exactly like gun. that. It's not like you you fucking can control you everything around you. It's just like you know you're dreaming. Did you give yourself you a better body like... in the dream? <laughs> That's what I would have done. Give myself some muscles. Like a big swing the whole point dick. is you can't. You can't. You. It's it's a very uh, fragile line you're walking. Yeah. Yeah. So you you have to know. I'm dreaming, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm gonna be. I'm in this dream. I'm here. I'm flying. I'm in the dream. You gotta. You you know you're in the dream, but you can't like. <laughs> no, that's it. Because you do know you're awake. You do know that you're having a dream. You know that you're having a dream, but you can't. It's almost like. Uh, it's almost like. Um, what do they call it when uh, suspension of disbelief? Yeah, but are you accepting? I'm accepting. I'm in a dream. But are you accept, You're accepting you're in a dream. But are you accepting that like. And that and this is fun because the dream so good. In the dream, I can fly. Like, do you, but, the, but are you aware that the ridiculousness of that? Like, you're like, well, I can't fly. But well, so, so in the Isla part of the dream, I want to make her fly, and then I realize, oh, I'm in a dream. But I do know that if I jump off of something, I'm in a dream. I'll start flying. So I jumped off this little, cl- very little cliff. By the way, it was, it was only like five feet off the ground, and I dragged my finger along the water because it was by the beach. I dragged my finger along the water, and I said, okay, I'm dreaming, but I'm flying. So then it's really beautiful and poetic it, until you fuck that chick yeah. in front of your daughter. That weird, that weird <laughs> snake hooker with, a, with herpes. By the way, I woke there up. Was, hey, Dad, when there was no set of footprints in the sand, what was happening? <laughs> oh, well, baby, that's when Daddy was fucking uh, fly fucking that chick. Fly fucking? It's one of his ex chicks. So. <laughs> it's not your mom, so it's not that gross. Don't yeah. focus so much on your dad's flexing butt cheeks plowing into this broad, but Honey. focus more on the, the artistic nature. Of her body. You have to understand this is pussy dad's already proud. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, any miles on the old horn meter. <laughs> baby, this, I, this is strange your dad's already been through. Now, baby, I know I can control this dream and I can just make you disappear. <laughs> but I'm not. I want you to watch I love it. you, baby girl. How about this? I wake up and I'm like, you know what? I'll put myself right back in the same situation. By the way, I woke up and I put myself friends, back in the exact same situation. Listen, you go back to sleep, your daughter's like, oh, God, dang, <laughs> oh, come you're back, on. You're about to go back to sleep. You're like, all right, I'm in the air. I'm fucking the chick. Daughter's right here. <laughs> this, is part of the, this is the part of the movie when uh, after that happens, you jump out of bed and run into the hallway and your daughter runs in the hallway too and you guys see each other and goes, did you just, did I just, oh. holy shit. She said that to me one night, one morning did I woke her up. we dream the same thing? One morning I woke her up and, she, and I go, hey baby, let's go get, let's go get uh, donuts. That's your daughter. Be like, dad, stop telling this story. <laughs> she, stop. She popped up out of bed and she goes, whoa, what did you think about that dream? And I went, huh? 
She goes, what did you think about that dream? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, in the car? I go, baby, we don't have the same dream. She goes, you were there. And I was like, no, baby, we don't have the same dreams. And she was like, oh. And was like, oh. And then just didn't bring it up again. Yeah. But she, yeah, but I, I dream really aggressively. Like, really? I, I sold a show to Comedy Central and about my dreams. you remember them a lot? Uh, I don't remember So when I'm all. going through stuff. You just rattled off two from last I, night. It's true. Can you make yeah. yourself do I never, I remember three a year maybe, and I only remember them like, if they're, if when they're I brought, stopped if, smoking if they're, weed, weed I stopped dreaming. Oh, shit. Isn't this fucked stopped up? Dreaming? When I stopped smoking weed, when I got sober, I stopped dreaming altogether. You know, that was the opposite for everyone else. Really? Yeah, I dream way yeah. more when I'm sober. When I'm way sober, I dream Oh, wait, no, that's what it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. All right, you know what? You might need to get sober. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's definitely. I don't dream now. That's Wait, right. You know what? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't dreamed in years. Are you? I, I swear to God, how yeah, did that's you it. get that wrong? That's it. No, no, no. I had, when I you don't know that you're not constantly dreaming currently. I don't dream. I used to have this pain in my chest. Oh, wait a minute. I still have it. How about right now? <laughs> wait, no. so what were you gonna say? No, 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 I was just, I, I don't remember anything. If I do, I, I wake up, I might be like, oh, shit, that was a great dream I was having. Immediately, I'm like, that was a fucking great dream. I can't remember one thing about it, and I just woke up. But every once in a while, every few months, I have a dream, and it's the fucking worst dream. And it's, it's, it's a mundane, boring, like, I dreamt, like, that I went, I used to work in a bar. I dreamt that I walked into work. And I did a fucking eight-hour shift, and I did the entire shift second by second, minute by minute in my dream. Nothing crazy Wait, happened. What? You like, just have a blue-collar job. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I just I no, I dreamt. I dreamt. I dreamt. I walked into a job. I, I was making forty thousand dollars a year. And I was an overnight manager at a twenty-four hour CVS. Sounds a famous person who dreams of having a blue-collar job. Every oh, second shit. scarier than the next. <laughs> and you were there, and you were in the <laughs> store. No, no, shelves no. that needed restocking. Oh, no, shit. no, I used to buy it. My assistant wasn't there. <laughs> it no, was I, I got myself a cup of water. <laughs> Sal just did the books for the bar. No, like, I well. did, but that's what I did for a decade. I ran the bar and managed right, it, right. and I just dreamt. I did a full shift at work. Nothing fantastical, nothing out of the ordinary happened. Jesus. Everything was completely believable, and it did it in real time. I was in time, you I was in the fucking you. dream, and I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I'm five hours into this dream, and all I'm doing is working. Like, I was like, now, hold on one second. Like, in my own dream, I was like, what can, you, what can I get you? Do you want something to eat? And I'd be like, I'll have a fucking burger. I'd be like, hold on. I turn, I put Were you waiting in the dream for every... something like where it's like, well, when did like, the naked girls come in and start punch-fucking no, each like, other or something? Like, 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 it's like something crazy is going to happen? I can't believe nothing is happening out of the ordinary. And I turn around, I put the fucking burger in. I turn around, like, do you want something to drink? I put the fucking drink in, I hit enter. I turn around there, there. I like take a rag, I wipe something, I weep like fucking. Into the mic, you professional <laughs> broadcaster. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> talking to the it's mic. A real time, I'm sorry. It's a real time eight hour dream. When I woke up, I was completely fucking exhausted for working. Sam, how hour. fucked up would it be if it was like Twilight Zone and you're just dreaming now? Right, right. <laughs> oh. And you wake up and you're just That's that it. bartender right yeah. now cleaning fucking tables. When yeah, I worked Sal, at, when I worked you at, and your friends got a show <laughs> that got big. <laughs> <laughs> practical joke. When, when I worked at Barnes and Noble, I used to have dreams that I was shelving books. And it used to fucking exhaust me because I was shelving books in real life, and then I in night exactly. I was shelving books. I know the feeling. Well, one, recently I had one where I went back to my hotel, and they're like, "Oh, here's your key to the room," and I was like, "All right, it's and not I, a suite." <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, and then I, I, I couldn't find the, the door. <laughs> no. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't find the, my door. I couldn't find the room number. Three and then stars for, my, for the entire <laughs> night. The entire night, I just went down every hallway in the elevator, next floor, every door, and checked. Every, and that was the only thing I dreamt for fucking eight hours straight. <laughs> and I wake up wound up tight because I'm furious that I'm wasting my time. Like, looking, I looked at hundreds and I tried my key in hundreds and hundreds of uh, doors. Dude, my dreams are more sinister. I had a dream, my bad, bad dream that I had that woke me up for a little bit was these two guys picked me up as Uber drivers at the airport. And uh, we're like, hey, man, we know you're a big drinker. We got you drinks. And they roofied me. And I kind of came to outside their house. My suitcase was in That's their That's great pa- in a dream when you get, like, drugged because you're in that dream state. So it yeah. feels so, like, you know, like, oh, all right, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> and so we go. My bag's in the back of their truck, pickup truck. And they take me into their I, – I, I come to in their apartment. It's beautiful. I like a like a one of those um, uh, bay windows. And I can see the outside. Those are nice. And a little kitchen. And it's nice. And the guy goes, hey, man, 
um, we're going to dress up as clowns. You want to dress up as clowns? And I don't like clowns. And I was like, no, no, I don't like clowns. And like, we well, just put the wig on. I go, I'm not going to put the wig on. And he goes, hey, man, put the fucking wig on. And I go, I'm, I'm not putting the wig on. And then the other guys dressed as a clown. And he goes, hey, put the fucking wig on or it's going to get nasty, man. And I go, hey, man, I think I'm going to leave. And I go to grab the door. <laughs> Do I look like I'm being funny? I go to grab the door. <laughs> and and the, door hunger, is, hunger. the door isn't a door. It looks like a door, but it's, it's not like... It's not an actual door. It's just a wall that they've cut a line in with a handle. And I go, whoa. And they're like, put the fucking wig on, man. And I was like, hey, I'm fucking leaving. And they're like, the fuck you are. And I grab one of the chairs and I throw it at the bay window and it's been painted on. And I'm in a basement. Oh, it's not a bay window. And I realize there's a chair with handcuffs on it. And they're going to dress me up like a clown and fuck me. It's It's a lot cheaper than a bay window. Yeah, to paint yeah. Away and I couldn't find the fucking exit, yeah, so I tough. beat both these guys. I beat them Fuck up, yeah, but dude. I can't get out, and I, and I keep going back and punching them, but I can't. Oh, figure that's scary. Out how to- that's fucking dude. I know what you're saying right now because that's like a fucking a freaky thing where you're like not being able to get out, but like this, like you're having to fucking hit these dudes and keep on like knocking them out. It's just like a terrifying, like fucking freaky, creepy thing. Do you want to know, know where the exit was? I don't know what's going where on the here. The exit? In your butt. Nope, the exit. Are you ready for this? By the way, in the refrigerator. You had to go in the refrigerator and climb out a stairwell, like a, a ladder to get into the, you were in a basement somewhere. And I finally get out and I was like, oh, fuck. I have a lot of gay dreams now that I think about it. So were the clowns fucking you with <laughs> were the clowns fucking you with mayonnaise covered bananas? Oh. Yeah. Well, are you afraid? Did you, did, so did you see it? Oh no, I won't watch that. Because you were no, really a freaked out by clowns. I'm very freaked out. That's by clowns. fucking gay. I, that's one of the problems I had with Nate. As I, n- I never wanted to meet Nate because his dad was a clown. Yeah. And I was like, I can't get anyone. And you, know, I, you mean a clown son? I want to say I don't know what's going. On. I don't know what's in the water out here in L.A. or what you guys are happening. But but uh, Lewis's girlfriend Kim, who also lives here in L.A. Every time Bert tells a dream, she, very specifically in the room, is reacting like, oh, oh, like it's really hitting her. Like, these are terrible. Like, everyone's just like, oh, yeah, so like, she's like, like we're going to have like, a flatliners conversation. Like, you too? You Would you do that? Also? Would you let, the, uh, by the way, hold on. Everyone in no, the, on I this wouldn't pod, flatline. You wouldn't? <laughs> no, I've, I've gotten away the flatlining lately. Oh, hold on one second. Everyone in this podcast knows Kim. This is Kimberly Congdon. Uh, her and Lewis are dating. I guess you can say that now. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. She was on with uh, Sarah Weinshank, one of the top-rated podcasts, one of the first podcasts where we started drinking on the podcast. And you guys got so f- fucked up, you literally stumbled into my front yard and left clothes here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your wife was like, your jacket's here. Did you get it? No, I mean, I think it's lost. Somewhere no, it's here, it's but... here. It's oh, here. I've been it? holding on to it. I think it's, it's so in funny. my closet. Yeah. No, we definitely blacked Georgia it out. Georgia started wearing it. Oh, I love that. She Georgia was it. like, Georgia was like, God, I love this sweatshirt. And I was like, that's not yours. Um, but yeah, everyone knows her uh, from the podcast. What were we just saying? I don't know, but Kim I, needs that sweatshirt. I'll say that, I said you guys, you guys they, together, like, she was reacting to every jo- every dream you had. Well, She's I have to reacting. tell you that I feel like it might be like a Florida trash thing, but I love the banana mayonnaise sandwich. Right? It's did you really know? Good. Did you know it before tonight? No. But you just were, you loved it. It's so good. It's delicious. Would you think you would fun? revisit a banana mayonnaise sandwich? Oh, yeah. I would make that. Interesting. I would make that, and I would snack on it, and the white bread and everything. The white bread well, really you kiss Lewis, Lewis, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm breaking up with her. <laughs> because of the headline. She's alone. fucking garbage. Lewis She's white the, trash. Lewis is the nanner sandwich of boyfriend. That is nanner sandwich of boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. I really am. Shoot it on paper. He sounds ridiculous. Ninety percent water. On paper, he's not that one he gets in your mouth. <laughs> How was Lewis? Not gross, <laughs> <laughs> but, un- but unnecessary. I mean, I would probably never think to do as an exact description of me. Not gross, not gross. But unnecessary. But unnecessary. <laughs> I wish I didn't know anything specific about him. <laughs> you say it like, I wish you hadn't told me what it was before it went in my mouth. <laughs> I would have liked it more if I didn't know what it was made up of. <laughs> He's my Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> He's my Vietnam. Holy shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's... <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, that is uh, not good. Um, not bad, but not good. There was another, like, I, when I was, I remember when I was a pothead, uh, where I first, like, sm- started smoking weed, you didn't have money or anything, so you would just grab whatever you could grab. I remember the thing that we did 
uh, went to Ruthie Rivera's house, who was this chick that I, she was my girlfriend in the fourth grade, and then I, like, I, I, she was so hot, right up until fucking, she was hot in the fourth grade, and she stayed hot up until adulthood, I'm sure. So, like, you, you're still a little <laughs> bit proud that she was your chick in the fourth know, grade? I don't know, man, fourth grade, no one's hot in fourth grade. No, because, no, she was the hot chick in the fourth grade. Like Dude, Jessica, I Jessica Lynch. Janela, Janela, yeah. in the Jessica second Lynch. grade, Jessica yeah. Nero was a fucking woman. Suck my dick, okay? Fourth well, grade. So hot. <laughs> She goes, her father told me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a woman you're dealing Katie with. Glenn, right I was in love with Katie Glenn in the fourth grade. But you get what I'm saying? Like, when you think back, obviously not as a child, but she was she was hot when you were a kid. There was a hot you, girl yeah, when you were in the Katie Glenn, grade. dude. I, my wife, to this day, when I met my wife, I went, she kind of looks like Katie Glenn. And when I met my wife, I went, she reminds me, that was my first love was Katie Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Married a guy in my fraternity. Really? Yeah, yeah. Clayton. Did that hurt? Clayton. Uh, and no, it doesn't hurt. But I did say, like, I mean, Clayton and I were flying, But you did, right? when they asked if somebody had any problem with these two getting married, you said... <laughs> well, part of you goes, like, I wonder Good if I could have gotten Katie then. I never ever shot for her, because I was like, no, that's my fourth grade crush. She's out of, way out of my league. But, uh, hang on, are, are you guys all going to Colorado? Jen? No, I'm not going. No, I can't go. I'm trying to go. So, wait, Ari just texted me and said, congratulations. About what? We're all going. Thank you. Uh, wait, hold on. We should talk about this off the fucking podcast. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. even know what Colorado is. What am I not invited to? You piece of days? shit. Eight days? Yeah, I can't. I thought it was less. I, than that. I have radio schedule. I can't what say. am I not invited to? Uh, your oh, name's really on here. Excursion. Your name's on here. I think it's a who's who of comedy. All right, um, it's, not the, it's not a banana mayonnaise sandwich type of <laughs> level comedian. Banana mayonnaise. What do you think of my boots? I'm trying to change my branding. I like them. I, I'm in. I don't not like them. Are they you though? Do they feel you? They hurt. My feet are numb. <laughs> then st- yeah, stop right. it. Then yeah. stop it. No, I, really like, I really like sneakers. Stop it. I really like sneakers. Stop it. Jay, that's the thing. You're supposed to break shoes in. You're Bert? supposed to break them in. They're not supposed to feel good when you first put them on your feet every single time. Not leather shoes. Lewis, I, it's coming from somebody. I'm, I'm telling you as myself, whose pinky toes always hurt. <laughs> Why do right you now, shoes? right you now, gout, my, gout? my toes are Fire. screaming. Uh, no, but I but I've started buying shoes now. I'm in pain. I started buying shoes now that makes right sense shoes. to my. Yeah, you're not wearing the right shoes. I'm telling you, I'm learning. Nope. And no socks either. That's dumb. Uh, that's aggressive. Oh my god, your feet are going to be so gross tonight. What shoes are you wearing, Sal? Oh, these things are. These things change my life. These really? these, uh, these types of Roshi Nike Roshi and these uh, Adidas Ultra Boost stuff. Yeah. I used to wear orthotics, it's custom like orthotics, because I have such flat feet that I went to the doctor because I couldn't even walk anymore. And he's like, you know, how, like you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, all right, I'm the doctor. Don't tell me what you have. Is it pain your life? You were in a wheelchair? <laughs> no, but I go. I, I'm like, look, I have really bad flat feet. Like it's to the point where it's really affecting me. He's like, all right, I'll be the judge. And I was in the middle of taking off my shoe, and like I had taken it off, and my foot was on the He's like, I'll be the judge. And I swear to fucking Christ, he goes, I'll be the Oh shit! You're really bad. He goes, oh shit. He said, oh, yeah. oh shit. He said, so I got these custom this is orthotics. Calls his wife, honey, I found him. <laughs> you gotta see my this. whale. He goes, oh shit. I mean, I knew the guy, but he was like, oh shit, you really. <laughs> so I got cast made. I got the orthotics made. I had to put them into my shoes. And even when I got the custom orthotics, about four or five hours into my day, I would still start to hurt. Where does it hurt? Like the, the arc. I have no like where arch. the arc would where yeah. the arch would be. Yeah, yeah. Arc, but now I bought arc. these. Arch, like yeah. these, you can get these for like sixty bucks. I don't even wear the orthotics. I can walk all day long like a regular person. What so, do you mean? What do you, well, you have an insert that goes in your sneaker? There's no insert in not these. Not those. No, no, I, 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 no joke. I bought about 10, 15 pairs of these things because I just I, those Ugh. are the shoes that they gave me. They good. gave me like literally my right, like regular I've, feedback. I've now Bert. They make so every sneaker now makes a brand that's like these knit top kind of things, so they don't like uh, they don't squeeze your feet in it at all. So it's like, yeah, I like these that. Make, but, by the way, I'll tell you, I, there's been times where I've had like I've walked around like to Sturgis when I went to that uh, bike week thing. I did I did some TV thing from there. I wore like Chuck Taylors that were always like I oh. get, I'd, I'd get things like a size small because I didn't want to like. Before you really ordered everything on the internet, or you probably could at that time, I just didn't do it. So I'd go shopping for sneakers, and they're like, well, they only have, you know, they have one th- ugly pair of sneakers in 14. Yeah. But everything's in 13. So I'd get, like, size 13. And I remember that started just, like, walking around on gravel in my socks because, like, it, it finally just felt like, it feels like someone's sticking, like, a dagger into your, like, pinky toe. Like, it feels like someone's, like... Like lighting a lighter on it's it's like a burn it hurts so yeah. much. I've had the worst. I don't know why I've done it to myself most of my life. Now I can't I just, do. Like, now uh, I just order shit that fits. We, went, we went to the beach earlier today, and 
you know, people are like walking on like the rocks. I, I don't know if I have like sensitive bitch feet, but dude, it feels like torture. No, like they like, just, just like, don't. They just have very like their their feet are just all fucking trained to it now. No, I think people go to the beach and enjoy it. Every like I feel like I'm stepping on glass <laughs> yeah, anytime. Oh my, this is awful. Shells. Can I and please go? Sharp There's shit. just natural sharp shit poking me in the bottoms of my feet. We're a very East Coast people. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I want to put my feet in a nice heated pool. Yep, pool. It's got to be not. Even Kimberly s- and I are looking at each other, going, "You didn't grow up in Florida." No, man, we grew up. We, I used Are to, you from Florida? Yeah. She screamed at the sand. I oh, dude, dude, she, she, t- uh, dude. dude. <laughs> you know sand fleas? No, okay, yeah. you tell us because Lewis can't flea. control his emotions. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> he screamed like a bitch. Okay, so dude, 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 when, the, when the water dude, comes dude, up dude, from dude, the dude, wave and it goes back down, and it goes back down, there's like these little ripples in the sand. If you dig your, if you scoop your hand under the sand and lift it up, they're like these little, they look like little mini crabs. Nope. Not like. They're, they're, so that's how Lewis broke it to you. They're, little, that. they're little rigatoni <laughs> shells. They're the size of like uh, the, the Vita shells and cheese, but they're covered in mud and they have little fucking creepy crab legs. She pulls up. She goes, "Oh, I found a sand fleas." I'm thinking it's gonna be like an ant. What are they called? Sand fleas. Sand fleas. They're fleas. 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 I'm Dude, out. It's like she's thing. holding four cockroaches in her hand. She goes, "Look," and I'm a fucking bitch because I screamed and ran from her. Well, that's weird. No. Yeah. Fuck that. Screaming and running from it? Was she trying to show it in your mouth or something? Like, why would you I run? can totally see how, like, if you don't go ar- grow up around the ocean, the ocean can be a little confusing. Who is stepping on those? Yes. Sal. I hate that, They're that. underneath. You can see the ripples Yo. when the water goes back down, right? On yeah, the- I thought it was, like, air escaping from the sand. There are fucking cockroaches. Yeah, I always thought that, too. There are cockroaches underneath the sand. Oh, wow. Dude, Ew. it's... Look, I can't. You're ruining this. I grew, up, I grew up barefoot my whole life. My whole life, I never wore shoes. Walked to Seven Eleven barefoot. You're that guy. Uh, I could never. Do let me that. tell you how not barefoot guy I am. The idea, uh, and I, every time I put on flip flops that go like between your big toe and little toe, I'm like, you have to be a fucking a foot feelingless monster <laughs> to be able to walk around those for more than five seconds. Are you serious? With a thing. St- Sticking between your toe it's, and, I agree and your with you. two it's toes. It's the shittiest. Every, no. every foot bump I, I have are the ones that go over the strangers. top of your foot. If that was in my foot, I would, within five minutes, I'd start hitting strangers. And then you get your fix ass this. Fix this. Fix this. It feels unnatural. Fix this. I hate it. It feels unnatural. It no, feels it's unnatural. not unnatural. I, by the way, have three pairs. When, when it rains and your, fit, your socks get wet, if you ever have like wet socks. <laughs> and Vicky is going. Dude, that is the worst. Every time you take a step. That's all you do right the the if you good. look at me wrong and I have wet socks, I'm going to fuck you up in front of your children. It's look crazy. at me wrong, pussy. I wish you would. If you gave me a pill, like a fucking cyanide suicide pill, a way out when I had wet socks, and I had to be out, I swear to God, I think I, think I would take it. I think I would take it. If I'm not in boots and, I, and my socks are wet, I'm like, I can't get home for a few hours, and you gave me an option, and this all, I <laughs> Please don't give me that pill. I, re- I really oh hope you don't. Like you can't be trapped. That's it. You can There's draw your work. socks. I'm getting uncomfortable worse. thinking about it right now. We we did. We, 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 hiked, we hiked six hours into the jungle in in uh, in Vietnam. And <laughs> the first, yeah, first, the first, first are my favorite. You have, if you didn't fight in the Vietnam War, you have, just tell us. This is this for a Travel Channel show. Yeah. It was some people's worst nightmare. <laughs> we the first the first thirty minutes. Yeah, me and my buddy were in Nam. <laughs> first thirty minutes, uh, there's a little like a little crick, and and uh, I try to jump over it. And my fixer, TT, just giggles. And I go, what? And he goes, let me show you something. And he leans down where my socks are, and he pours his bottle of water in my socks. And he goes, get used to it. We walked through. We walked through. <laughs> I would have killed him. My feet. I would have fucking diamond cutter that guy. I would have fucking grabbed him, his head over my shoulder, and stretched my body out flat, and brought him down to the ground. And whatever genuine damage that causes, inflicted on him. I would have diamond cutter the guy for doing that. I would have been like, this fucking show is done. I'm fucking out. I'm pulling the plug. Call my fucking agent. Fuck this. Get a chopper! I don't care. All this footage should be going. I don't care. Get a chopper, cause I'm leaving. 
I was holding a fucking Puerto Rican chick because I'm leaving. No, 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 no. Because I'm leaving. Because I'm leaving. <laughs> I wouldn't hear a fucking one. Fuck that. No chance in hell. Now walk a mile. Who the fuck? What? I had a shot of not getting my socks wet. What a jack off. What if I brought 11 extra pairs of socks? Because <laughs> oh, I'm fucking leaving. This guy goes, or I go, or I'm going to fight the fucking tour guide guy. I shouldn't have had food in my mouth. Banner oh. sandwich. Oh. oh fuck, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Get used to it. Get used to it. What the fuck? <laughs> I hope you get used to the money. <laughs> yeah. Give me your fucking jaw. Give me your shoes now, fuck face. <laughs> Give me your shoes and socks. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to oh, shit my pants right now. Oh. <laughs> Uh, hey, sing towel. Give me the fucking what size shoe do you wear? Did you just name a beer? Uh, this is probably. <laughs> the point was it's a portal. It was it was a six hour hike through like waist high water, and my feet didn't oh. dry and my socks didn't dry for forty eight hours after that. So for forty eight <laughs> hours I had to walk around. Oh. In wet socks Torture. in my shoes. I had to put on wet socks. Oh. Put on wet socks. Oh, putting them on. I actually get, like, when you, like, your feet were getting weird, right? Like, sores and shit on them, right? No, no. Yeah, actually, was, that, was that wet? wet? Or wrinkly this old in man, nails. This old man said, uh, said. <laughs> Funny enough, made my dick bigger. <laughs> no, this old man said, uh, everyone needs to buy these socks. It was at the right of the head trail, the trailhead. And he was like, uh, he was like, everyone needs to buy these socks. And no one, uh, it's going to get worse, Jay. Uh, no. <laughs> Not everyone bought them, but I, I just and I didn't trust the guy because they didn't look comfortable. They were like itchy wool socks. They didn't look comfortable, and I said, "Fuck it, I'm getting them." If this guy says to get them, uh, get them. And then he said, "That'll keep the leeches off you." And I went, oh, "What?" Fuck. He goes, "Tuck your pants into the socks. That'll keep the leeches off you." And everyone that didn't get them had leeches all oh, over their fuck fucking legs, that. and I was like. I was like, thank God I bought these fucking socks. And when we got to the thing, they're like, how do we get those socks? When we got to the cave, everyone was like, how do we get those socks? And everyone that got them was like, fuck you, these are my socks. So you gladly put on those socks again. Not one fucking leech the entire time. Remember the first time someone got a leech? They fucking passed out. We were at a little village in Vietnam. And we're uh, playing with kids, give them candy. By the, way, by, the way, stand by, by the way, I was going to say, I swear to God, I was like, in everybody's head right now, all we're picturing is the from Stand by me. Yeah. It's every, yeah. it's, oh, it's he pulled off his dick, too? idea of what was the leeches. Yeah. Oh, the our guy pulled it off his dick. It was a big, no. Are you sure you're not no, just no. a <laughs> No, it was off, on his leg, uh, and he just went, he started going like, huh. Because, uh, man, a leech is gross. Yeah, it's gross. And, 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 they put, and it's sucking your fucking blood. It's, it's on your body. It's covered in leeches. They put me in a, in a swamp in uh, New Orleans one time as a punishment on a show. And they, they, they literally, the swamp water was up to my chest. And we had to, I had to stay in there for like an hour or two because they had fan boat tours coming by. And they dressed me up like a creature. Aren't you worried so, about gators? Yes, I was completely worried, and the people that run the the bayou down there, they're like, "Oh, the gators don't come in this area." I'm like, "Yeah, that's fucking that, that's I don't." That was yeah. that was what yeah. they said. Don't just worry, they don't come in. We, we, we have promise. an understanding yeah. with the gators, yes. but I was uh, we promise. I had to be in that water. We all met day. the Florida gators. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you couldn't you couldn't see once you put your hand under the surface a half an inch, you couldn't see your hand. It's like tea, brown, like dark, yeah, dark yeah, tea. Yeah. And so I was so fucking scared about like parasites and leeches and everything that I I, I wore a condom. In the fucking water for the whole entire day. Really? Yes. So your dick was hard the whole time? No. No. But you had a condom on. You can do it. Uh, mine's a little smaller than yours. Yeah, I just saw it. It's not a size thing. Pain. The condom will go. You could do it. Believe me. Yeah. I, made, I made it happen. I would put my balls in that condom, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, I, I, yeah that, that leeches freak me out. Gators freak me out more than anything. Crocodiles really freak me out. And they had, well, they, had a, they, they bought a remote control fucking By the way, out. how much and is... swam it in. Did you think it was real? I... Literally lost my my shit. How often I got so I got such a surge of adrenaline, I throws I just started throwing up, and then <laughs> I had to wait for the next fan boat to come. I couldn't really go anywhere. Like your feet get stuck in the slime too, but I had boots on. But I threw up, 
and I couldn't go anywhere. Oh. I had to wait behind this little brush for the next fan. Because then they, they gave guided tours, and they'd be like, if you're real quiet, the Louisiana bog monster will come out. And then I had to do whatever they said. So I was just this disgusting, but I threw up, and I couldn't go anywhere. So I was just standing in my own Dude. throw up oh for God. hours. Oh. Does, has, has there become, um, and I say this from my experience, uh, my first TV show I had was called Hurt Burt. And I did dangerous men's jobs for a day. And I was a rodeo clown. I was an MMA fighter. I was a professional football player. I did everything. But but uh, I realized halfway in, no, like, if I get hurt, no one gives a fuck. Like, I, I got mauled by a bull. And it broke my ribs and broke my foot. And then they were like, hey, we only got, like, 45 seconds out of that. We need you to get back in there. And I was like, what? Does there, did you ever get, like, a distrust in each other? Is there ever a point where you start... Getting a distrust from production, not your friends technically, but production where you're like, yo, we've checked this out, right? We've vetted this. Yeah, you, you have doubts, but we're, we're pretty all over that shit. They're yeah. even, they're even we, we, we push more than they even want us to do. Really? Like, there's a lot of insurance shit. They turn a lot of shit down. We do it anyway. Or if we write it up to submit it to insurance. So they're they also their it. cash cow. We if lie. they lose one of them, it's fucking over. What's the next biggest show on True? No, they, we just did it. Uh, it's uh, Impractical Jokers is the second best. <laughs> we, you, we guys, just, you guys own like 51% of that network. How do you know that's that? So I, I was hanging you. out with your fucking agent. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but isn't it all? But it's like the second most popular show was like Inside Joe. It's like the the, the other one, yeah, the yeah, other yeah. show. That's yeah. we we just we just put more for the season finale. It was a mid- military episode, and we put Murray. It was two losers. One of them was Murray. We blew Q's Jeep up with the tank. But we put Murray in a, in a fighter jet, and he went. The guy took him up, fucking mock whatever the hell, killed yeah. him, and he just did it. And literally, we don't even know if we could show it because he went up there, passed out, threw up all over the place, and just started convulsing. Wow. Oh, that's Murray? cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did he really? They were doing like, it, he had a safe word, a real safe word, because we didn't know how he... And they said, look, you're going you're gonna to get nauseous. You know, you might pass out. And he, 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 he was Because eight, it went like mock speed? Less like, than 10 minutes in, and he's yelling. Pop-Tarts was the fucking thing. <laughs> but he, he literally... He, he didn't even <laughs> show him. Panicking, yelling Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I would have made, pop, I mean, I made the safe word, he, the N-word. He, 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 <laughs> passed, he passed out, threw up everywhere, couldn't stop, then just started involuntarily convulsing. I probably shouldn't say all Were you scared so. or were you laughing your ass off? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, just for the record, Lewis, you know, you so she bet you're supposed to be scared for your friend who that's happening. Yeah, to. but it's so funny. Part of you is like, I'm getting good footage. Dude, well, we didn't really have to see it because he was like 20 miles away. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So we had an audio feed only. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> like, you just, because he had to push to talk, and so did we. Do so you want to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, like, when the guy would hit the button. And song and song going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just screaming and just being like, I'm not. You know, like, I'm not having fun. Pop tarts. And then the guy came on. He's like, "Yeah, he's screaming because he had screamed it and passed out." So the guy came on. He's like, "Yeah, he's screaming pop tarts." Uh, I'm covered in this guy's puke. It's not fun. <laughs> um, the, uh, I watch. I watch the girls. I watch. Uh, I watch Impractical Jokers with the girls in here. And there was something you guys did that was it was subtly racially undertoned. Uh, I think you were a like a receptionist at a place, sure. and uh, and. A black chick came in, and they were like, hey, tell her something, dot, 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 black chick. And the girls didn't get it, and but it was really funny. Whatever it was, it was the so... The question is, did you have to hang out with that black girl all day, every day? <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> oh, man, how'd you stomach it? <laughs> wait, wait, no, hold on. So so your thumb is on the convulsions? <laughs> I mean, they're okay in small doses. Pop-Tart! I'm ready to get out of this black I'm freaking out, man. I'm in a black hole today with a black chick. Ah, Bert. Yeah, he married that black chick. He made it about 10 minutes. They passed out. They started convulsing. They started puking everywhere. They started puking convulsing. They said he said Pop-Tart a few times before. That's it. I'm gonna fucking regret saying that. <laughs> the uh, but, but the girls didn't get the joke. Yeah, I mean, it was something about she was a big black chick, and so I don't know. I, it wasn't like it wasn't bad. But yeah. It was it was something you definitely wouldn't say to a big black chick, and right. and uh, the girls didn't get it, and I had to explain it to them, <laughs> and then they got it, and then they got it too much, and they were like, ah. Oh! <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, that's fuck. Great. <laughs> that's great. They loved it. I was like, like see, like, look oh. at her hair. Hey, Dad, racism's funny, huh? <laughs> it is, but as I tell you, that, that's like uh, what you guys do is so like, infectious in the way that like people just relate to the emotion of whatever it is 
you're going through is you guys are all different personalities too. Because I said my daughter, it's it's such a great like uh, for my daughter's almost 15. It is like a bonding thing. Like like we could watch that show together and yeah. like she loves it. it's great. That's so, we never we never set out for that. It's crazy because not my four year old. He's like, oh Jesus, Dad, change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Well, two more years, I'll be you in. Know, yeah. I, did, I did the one live show with you guys. We did the uh, the, the Christmas in in the Philly. Susquehanna Banks. Sunday. Yeah, and like uh, your crowd, like one was great with how dirty I was. They weren't going to be good. They were great, and still having like children in the audience, like they were cool. Like they kind of understood that when they came to a comedy show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my, I thought that was really neat, man. It yeah, was you really killed. Up. It was an interesting. It's an interesting experience to go to your comedy shows because uh, it is. It is children. There are. Ch- I remember saying to it's Nick, much less now. Well, I said to Nick, I said, uh, my daughters wanted to yeah. come. He's like, oh, let's uh, call him, send him over, send him over. We'll grab him. And I was like, I was the like, what they're going to hear now is curses. We, when we put Dude. sixteen parents, sixteen suggested. But, but when we didn't have anything on a ticket like five years ago, we'd have 30, 40, 50 kids in the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah we used yeah. to just like we were like, what the fuck are we going to do? And we started to say, like, you know, we, we got the word you out. Gotta, and you also worked, like, in, like... Well, then in the second tour, we were like, we, we hit yeah. it head on. Yeah. We were, so we're like, we're going to come out, pick out the kid, and then just go at him and let all the air out of the room, let the tension out of the room. Tom Herrera said on stage, uh, what grade are you in? And then he stops and goes, that's something I never thought I'd say at a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Herrera murdered. Um, hey, what was I going to say? Uh, two things. Number one, it's really interesting because it, it turns... You, uh, it makes your show so much better after watching your live show. Um, it really does. It makes the TV show better. Makes the TV show better. How so? Show, how, what do you, yeah, what do you so? I, you really get an ex, uh, you get an experience to see each of your personalities independently. Like, uh, like, I, I obviously have notes, but uh, but like, I, I, no, I would never say it on here. But like, it's so funny because. Uh, Q is not Q on stage is very different than Q on the show, and Murray on stage is very different than Murray on the show. Joe, Joe is so so much of a bigger personality on stage. He really is a, yeah. a like a like you like all of you guys are legit <laughs> performers, but th- th- you see there are vulnerabilities. I mean, if we're gonna be candid, sure. there are vulnerabilities I see in Murr that I don't see on stage. You know. That you see on the show, you on the show, see on yeah, the right, right, translate. right, yeah, that don't translate, and it's so, in, it was so fascinating to watch the live show because it made me want to watch the TV show more. Because I went, oh, you know what? I wonder if I'm, I wonder if I wonder if sometimes you know sometimes you gloss over like you, I watch a TV show like someone go, oh, look at Bert, this is a big fat drunk riding roller coasters or whatever, you know, and then you go, well, if you know Bert. It's actually a really good show. Right, right, right. Well, now I know. Now that I know you guys. Oh yeah, sure. So that's probably it's, different. It really, oh, it, like, it made me really appreciate Mur and and Mur and Q the most. It made me appreciate them more. And then uh, you and Joe are the ones that I think I connect with the most. Sure. Does that make sense? Sure. You know, to continue that dick suck session, I was said it before. And I think we said it with, all together here, but like uh, me and Dave. Me and Dave found the show together in Edmonton, Canada, thumbing through late night television there, and it was came on. And I was like, "Oh yeah, this is the." By the way, because I I think I've said this before to you, maybe even on air of things. But I thought like, it stunk. The original, no, <laughs> but like, but like the actual yeah. tagline. No, no, I love it. No, as no, com- yeah. no we as loved stand up comedians, no, no, we loved it. We loved it. But as stand up comedians, uh, it was hilarious to like the tag. Why I didn't watch it before I happened upon it the one yeah. time. Was because it was like four best friends who it. worked so hard to embarrass each other. Where it's like, I fucking hate yeah. That. <laughs> and then, and then I it, was, know. it sets the tone. You know what? To like it. And I know for the show so well now, but it was a stoop session, so it was kind of a best of even show. Oh yeah. And me and these, and they showed like two or three episodes back to back. We were in Edmonton watching late night TV. It was on the like Action Channel yeah, there or something. Yeah, yeah. And we sat there. And we wa- and don't man, think this is we too much were. of a compliment. There's not much going on in Edmonton, I okay? So <laughs> you were the only game in town. Just sitting there smoking. We and we were rolling. We thought it was so. And I came Sucking back. And I really dicks. made. I really made like a real like thing about like uh, telling people to watch. And I appreciate something. that. Yeah. I said it was the same. Uh, it's the same escapism. I think. Do you love Jackass, Bert? Uh. Yeah, yeah, but and it's by, the same. And, and escape, don't, don't it's get me into this. It's, it's the same. Uh, yeah, it's incomparable. You know it. what it is, <laughs> it's, it, it's it's incomparable comedy. Yeah, it's comedy. You're not comparing it to yourself or what you could do better with it or what you could do different with it. It's it's so unique to not stand up or my thing that I loved. Like 
I watch it with no trained eye or no Got picking it. it apart. It's a computer like, and I just feel every emotion of what you're supposed to like when you have to say those things to people. And I know from from you, so from, pick apart, I, know, I, I know from being oh, that guy let a snake bite know, his dick. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I know from being a, a friends with you, it's like you guys don't fucking fake anything. No. I know, I know people I who know the show can me. try to sneak through the cracks on it. I just yeah. know how the show works. Yeah. But like, but like you guys don't fake any of that shit. So it's like I know it's like I do not. I will say I will say the most horrible things to anybody in a comedy club. Oh yeah, because you you came into the domain of that thing, but stopping somebody calling the street and saying something really awkward—I am not good at that. Uh, that I've is done not it. My I've done thing. it, and it is. I hate it. Is. On the street Next, shit even. I hate it. It's, I hate it's, it. It's a muscle. It's a muscle number one. Yeah. Where you get comfortable with just going. I'll never see this person ever again. Uh, the thing I the thing you know my introduction to your show was Stanhope. Are uh, you sure? I said something, and he said, "Have you watched Impractical Jokers?" I think we're on the phone. And he goes. And he goes, have you watched Impractical Jokers? I was like, no, I don't watch the True TV. He was like, dude, you're wrong. That's not Stan Hope. Obviously, he doesn't say dude a lot. But he's like, you're wrong. He goes, check it out. So that stamp of approval was like, all right, I'm on the treadmill. I'm watching it. And I'm sitting there going. I'm watching. I'm like, okay, okay. I think I caught it in the middle of something. And then I, I want to say it's the episode where you shave Murr's eyebrows off. Okay. And I just started going, oh, this is just... Buddies fucking around. Yeah. This is oh, this is what I like. I like camaraderie. I like that there's no there's no um there's there's no victim in it. Like you're all victims. Well, you're all the, it's we were sort of like touched on it before. It's like you're trying to make each other laugh, which I think that's really lost on everybody else. When you're trying to make an audience laugh, it almost comes off as desperate. When you're trying to make each other laugh, it's very genuine. You're in the moment. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Right now, we're all talking to each other, we're yeah. making jokes, we're trying to crack each other up. So when people are listening to you from the outside or sitting in, they're getting they're a part of something that's unique and real. It's a very real funny. When J- I'm making Jay laugh or you're making me laugh, that's real so funny. It's not controlled or it's not put together for a presentation, you yeah, know? When we, when we were trying to think of the show and what the formula of the show would be and how we would approach it and why it would work or why it wouldn't work, one of the things I keyed in on was something that I love. I love watching outtakes. Bloopers? Yeah. Mm. And I don't care what show it is. I don't need to know the movie. I don't need to know, need to know the show. I don't even need to know the actors. If I'm watching someone and they have a moment where they break, it's a real moment. It's yep. honest. And I'll find myself laughing mm-hmm. because they're laughing. Yep. And I'm like, oh, yeah. if we can do something where it like takes the essence of that, like where maybe, maybe we're not supposed laughter. to laugh, but if it's genuine, we're laughing too. People are gonna la- like laugh along. Whether we try to keep that, that. That's the, and that's I, I jackass the same thing. It's, I think it's why podcasting has exploded. I think it's you know what you know even my favorite podcasts that I love to listen to. You know, you listen to Bobby Kelly's podcast or like Legion of Skanks. Like we're all laughing and having a very very good time with each other. Well, pulling the <laughs> curtain, and that's uh, what the show does too. Is pulls the, but the, the, the most important thing to, the, to your show, I think, is that. Shot of you guys in front of the monitor. That pulling the curtain thing too. There's like a lot that, of that. that, like, that, 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 that that's that, but, that, but them in front of the monitor laughing. That's what I'm saying. Like the thing we always say. Uh, whenever someone's to this day, man, a, a zillion shows in, and so many amazing moments. I know that everyone's been so funny. But like when as anyone asks me, he goes, goes, hey, I want to check out your podcast. What I go start episode twenty, the poem, yep. Lewis's poem. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's go, the first one I ever. The poem itself is is hilarious. Uh, the whole concept, what's going yeah, on, just, but yeah. what it is is like it, it, when it comes across. I have it isolated on my iPod. It comes across once in a while, just yeah. like randomly, and, and every now and again, I just pop it on or I play it for somebody who has never heard it before, and just like it's laughing with us. Like it's like it's not so much the word. It's like how much we're laughing at this crazy moment. Yeah, because that's what it is. Like people always end up laughing with us laughing. I had tears streaming down my yeah, face. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's like a nuts thing. That's like a that's that's a real that's an intense thing. You, it's hard to find. Yeah, that was my name, but that was your nom. Yeah, or was your <laughs> no, dude, Lewis. You're one of the best people to laugh along with in that. But you're laughing no, no, so hard. No, no, what no, a I wish I could find all. Dan the other Soder shit told me a story about Lewis last week, um, and I said something. Hold on, my know, girlfriend's here. No, <laughs> <laughs> he was, I was saying something like because uh, I didn't I didn't know Dan as well as I knew everyone else. And, right, and then I was in Calgary, and someone texted me. And they're like, "Yo, Dan's in town. You should go hang out and have lunch." I think Ari maybe he was like, "Dan Soder's there. You should go have lunch with him." So I texted him. I, I, but maybe, I, maybe we. I don't know. I'm not sure how much we'd hung out. I guess you I must. Bon, you did bonfire once before that. I did once before it. Yeah, and when I'd hung, I heard him a bunch, and then we did the podcast. 
and I knew that we could get along. And then I said something like, I said something about Lewis. And he told me this story about you watching a movie of him with nachos. <laughs> uh, I wish I could remember what fucking movie it was. Oh, oh, yeah, it was uh, the like alien show- one, the alien movie with the fucking oh, oh, the uh, septa, oh, the, the, uh, with the seven armed aliens. Arrival, arrival, arrival. And he goes, he goes, you know how nuanced arrival is. He goes, first of all, Lewis shows up fucking ten minutes late. <laughs> Movie's already started. Since that would not just start. He goes, wait, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but the way he does Lewis is so great that I couldn't stop laughing at like. The nuance of knowing a friend, you yeah. know, when right. they when they started uh, when they started uh, Bert the Conqueror, uh, that was the show I did on Travel Channel. Yeah. Uh, it was me and these uh, four guys that uh, auditioned for it. I, I had gotten offered it, and then I turned it down because I was like, "It's not enough money." Then they upped the money, and then they're like, "Oh, we can get real talent." It was me and three other guys. One of them was Ryan Dunn from Jackass. Oh, so wow. so Ryan Dunn goes, uh, uh, "They offer you the show." I said, "Yeah." He goes. You turned it down? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, he goes, I do it. I don't know, man. I just don't know if I want to be on Travel Channel. And I said to him, I go, hey, you want to do a show where we call Draw Straws, where we just draw a straw and the person that draws the shortest straw has got to do the thing? And he's like, I'll do it. I go, I'll do it. And he goes, I'll tell you what. If I get off the show, I'll say, let's do Draw Straws. If you get off the show, let's do, do, do Draw Straws, and we'll just do it together. And I was like, deal. And then I got off the show, and I just took it. But uh, <laughs> he might still be alive. I, I, he might still be alive. <laughs> I thought you were, I thought your next series would be like, and then you know he died. And, uh, yeah, I, I saw a butterfly effect. <laughs> Bam Margera, man, you want to talk about fame? And I know you. I, I mean, I think we all know a, a tad bit of extent of what it's like to be recognized. But like, I was at a theme park in Jersey with Bam Margera. It's also Bam Margera country. Bam Margera. That really is Ryan Bam Margera Dunn. country. Yeah. Dude, it well, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah. Like, I, I just didn't, like, but they were all yelling, do jackass. And they, were, and they both of them were like, what the fuck's jackass? Like, punch each other in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Beat the, kick him in, in the mouth. Do jackass. Do jackass. I went to Vegas and we hung out <laughs> Sal. When I was in Vegas, we went to UFC fights and yeah. we, uh, we uh, we parted a little bit. You invited me to uh, the Derek Jeter, like fucking private fucking fuckface. Everyone's famous and rich. Like I would never go wait on a line to get in a party ever. So I'm, I'm walking in with Sal. First of all, Sal like in New York. Sal's famous, but Sal like New York is a different attitude. Sal walking in the street in New York. It's like hey, Sal, hey. You know no, that's it. No. I'm t- I walk. Wait, 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 wait. Put it in perspective. How like I know what he, tickets he can move, but like like describe fame. Well, so listen. You, the, the, it's really it's New York is a different beast and I'm the sure if you, if you go to Times Square anxiety. listen to me if you go to Times Square I'm sure you get fucking mobbed you walk through the East Village you'll get a few hellos hey what's up right dude we were in Vegas oh, yeah, Sal Square. said Sal's like dude he was like he was like you gotta just keep moving he was like if somebody wants to take a picture he's like dude he was like I just gotta keep moving because if I stopped we're gonna get engulfed it was fucking crazy really? it was a parade of people following us into this fucking place and then we went into the Derek Jeter fucking private booth and I'm like rubbing elbows with Derek Jeter and like 15 other famous athletes so Derek you play the football <laughs> or is it the baseball Listen, dude, the saddest thing I've ever heard was Sal I had to go through show with that was Sal came to see uh, Oddball Tour that I was hosting the Sal like walks away for one second and it's like is this, no, last, is this like last year Jeter and Lewis and no, Lewis this is, is Jeter's face like you want to go right now Derek Jeter <laughs> <laughs> well, Sal's going to be like hey 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 guys, guys. this is uh, Lewis, Lewis, you ain't the good you ain't the good you ain't the good it's a shortstop bullshit position this is uh, this is Schumer Aziz uh, oddball I was hosting the small stage and Sal came out to the Jersey show and people were asking you know, to, and at one point Sal goes hey goes because, you know, it's becoming a thing, and he's taking pictures of all the shows going on. Sal goes, hey, goes, I'll take some pictures after the show. He goes, but I just wanna, let's just watch the show now, you know. Let's just watch the show. And he said that line. And you signed one thing. You said that a line formed. So you did a few. And you're like, hey, guys, let's just watch the show. But the one that always, like, stuck with me was you said, uh, at one point, someone was like, you were like, I'll, let's just, you know, I'll, after the show, I'll sign some things. I'll take pictures. But like, let's just watch the show now. And somebody goes, I don't even fucking know who you are anyway. Like, I don't know. She got like, shitty with you, and she's got like, one of the things where you're like, oh, fuck this cunt. Like, 
It's like well, she is like he's getting bombarded. It's like you're the actual yeah. twat idiot. If you and don't know who he is, famous because, enough because a line filled up. She just jumped in and was like, "I don't fucking know you are anyway." So I just got in the line because everyone was yes, in line. Like, you're you're famous enough where you can't say "fuck you," you dumb cunt. Yeah, somebody's got exactly, something. Yeah. She's gonna take it. You're like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was yeah. the most. <laughs> that's the beautiful part about being not famous. I'm like, do you want to die? You fucking dirty. <laughs> old? I know it's cool. I will kill you and your fucking family. And you know what's cool for you, Lewis? Even if you do get famous, you're famous. For Thor calling women cunts. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's like what they're expecting out so wait, of you. So on this cruise, are you going to be able to like be around people and stuff? So, yeah. I, I make an announcement. What did your voice crack? I make an so, announcement. I don't know. No. I make an announcement in the beginning. I just say, look, our families are here. This is five wait, your days families long. families are there? Well, I, I'm bringing my family. So. He pays like, a fake what, what, family. What? You have kids? No, no, no. Like your parents and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sisters, nieces, grandma, like everyone. Because oh, so the first year I went, right, and I was like, yeah. I might never do this again. Yeah. And I want my family to see this, so I brought like ten of them. And yeah. now it's like more. Now it's like twenty five. But I am hypersensitive about that because I I don't like that. Even before I was in the public, I'm not like that. So I just make an announcement in the top. I say it's five days long. We're gonna be accessible to the whole thing. You don't have to claw to get at us. We're going to make ourselves accessible to you. Just please, our families are here. We're all here to enjoy. I want to set a tone and a, and a vibe and everything. And so this is how it's going to be. You know, like, we, you know, you see us, it'll be normal. And then I, and, then that, and they were pretty good. They, they kept that vibe. And then so. I'm going to make an announcement. Guys, I have access to Sal's family. <laughs> if you want to meet his grandmother, you, know you follow me. You know what's funny? I do a, every year I do, a, or I, 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 and again next year, uh, you know, uh, I'll do the Impractical Jokers cruise again. Yeah. I did the first one, but I do ship rocked every year, and like it really is. Uh, those cruise ships, like we're like they build like a fuck. Like, you're, sh- you're the crowd. When I did a ship rock, not ship rock, uh, Impractical Jokers cruise last year. That was one of the coolest like stand up comedy events ever. If you remember the first I, I performed the first night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like light. And, 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 Cause, you know, cause that, we learned from that mistake. It was like too. midnight. What was that? What was that? It was, it was midnight. Too much going on. We had too it, much. Yeah, it was, it was really? midnight on the on the day people got on the boat, people were just exhausted. I'm cool with that. Night. I'm cool with the light show. So I went on with like thirty it was like maybe like thirty people, maybe not even, but it was like a very big you know, hundreds of people room. Uh, it was like, and then the next morning, I thought I was doing a, a podcast. I thought I was doing somebody's podcast. They missed it. When I said, when, when they said before, they go, "Would you want to do a, a stand-up show on a podcast?" I go, "Yeah." Well, you know, my podcast. So I have two other guys in the podcast. I said, "Lewis and Dave." So they didn't book you guys on the show last year. So I, I was like, when they said I was doing a podcast, I assumed I was doing someone's podcast. But because it was pitched as the three of us doing that, they just had me doing a podcast. So we had to throw it together, and we were like, "Oh shit!" And like it was like, you know, they probably asked you to do a podcast. No, thinking you do a podcast. We were doing and it. You know, they were asking you to be on a podcast. I thought it was. Be- I thought oh, yeah. I was being asked to be on it, but I was like, "I was like, oh shit, we're doing the podcast." So I go, "You know what? We're doing it in the big, the biggest theater there, the big main theater." I go, "They have us booked for it at noon." I go, "But it's noon. No one's coming anyway." I go, "You know what? I got J.F. Harris, a uh, very funny comedian, and I go and Christine." I go. Look, let's just, we have microphones, they're going to have a set up for us. Lewis and Dave, Jeff Harris, Christine, same difference. No, not at all. <laughs> Please, no, not even sort of. Christine's I feel that. Dave impression. <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be great. No, uh, got- politics, liberals, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, Christine's, eh, the liberals, eh. <laughs> <laughs> We just podcast, so, so here's what's funny was, uh, it's a fun story too, because it was gonna be. I, I go, Is it? I, I go. Yeah. I go. We'll just talk into a microphone for a little bit, and then it was raining out, so it ended up being like nine hundred people ended up coming into this theater, and we had. It was gonna be me and Christine and J.F. Harris, so we started running around. We got. Uh, we got I went Sal. On the PA. Yeah, uh, Sal. We got Sal, Mark Norman, and, and we had like that changed. It turned the entire Gilbert Godfrey a live podcast. Godfrey, dude, turned yeah. around. Yeah, he, uh, Gilbert Godfrey came on. Doug Stanhope was in the audience. It, was, it just like it, it, it changed it's all your worlds colliding. I swear to you, it changed. And maybe I'm wrong, but it changed the entire vibe of the cruise. Like every every show after that moment was like packed, and everyone was like super involved and felt like they knew everybody. Everything kept getting called back to like the shit we said on that. Yeah, the yeah, people yeah. who we involved in the audience. Yeah. How, much work, how much work are we going to be doing on this cruise? You're going to be doing not that much. It's not work. I am going to be doing a lot. You are? I lose my voice. I'm at are we every doing, event. We're not doing every... pranks on each other, are we? No, no. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, You're going to do, do two sets, and you're going to have a vacation. 
That's right. Oh, no, I'm doing no more than two sets. Wink, about. wink, wink. Fucking Josh, <laughs> Josh Edamame is what my daughters call Josh Edamires. Josh Edamame uh, is doing a goddamn comedy jam. Yeah. And those are fun for me. Yeah. He asked me to do one. I'm doing one, definitely. I, I want to do. Here's oh, yeah. what I want to do. I want to do a Blues Brothers I'll, I'll inspired one. Either. Yeah. And I want to do a, a Neil Diamond one. I want to do Garth Brooks. Thunder Rolls. Ain't going down. I have Mad Rouge. Rouge. That's your shit. Ain't, I think I'll do Ain't going down. Okay. That's a fucking hey, get him up and move him if you want. What? Oh yeah, next let's do again, it. next one. Can I come back? Yeah, I t- that's my. This is going to be my my only hard thing is like how the fuck do I? I try to get everybody on, but it's like. Oh, I know. Get, well, yeah, yeah, last year. I well, I think I want to do a Skankfest cruise next winter. I really want to do that. Hold on, I've been talking about doing a pod, a cruise. So with let's you guys do forever. it, Bert. I want to yeah. do it. You got to. Shit is going to fuck up, Bert. Bert actually spoke to Christine about this. I, I, I talked about doing a, a, a cool. A cruise. Guess who's the fucking key factor here? Puerto Rican rattlesnake. Let's make yeah. it happen. I think it's more I, of the people who do. Sure, I, I get what you're <laughs> saying, but no. <laughs> I think I could I'm probably move. Like, what do you move for that cruise? How many people go on that cruise? I think it's three thousand. Oh, I can't. I can't do that in one city. Three th- dude, with what we can get to show. No, but I mean, though. I can't do. I can't do. I can do. I, I can do so probably. I if can that's do probably the money, if that's the money grip, fifteen hundred in a city. If three thousand people is the money grip. I have mega confidence in the fans of every. Of, of not for, not just us, not the four, the five people sitting in this room. But the I have different people we bring together. It's the same thing as Skankfest. But here's the point, on. though: it's yeah, not yeah, listen. Yeah. It's not a ticket. It's a fucking vacation. It's a thousand dollar vacation. So you have to consider more than that. It's, oh, it's like, even it's, more than that. It's star. I think the lowest rung was like fifteen. Yeah, and they have to get there. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it's, the it's hard pretty, part. It's pretty pricey. It's, it's not a legit. Like, it's a legit ticket move. It's a when three. Fa- it's a three. It's a three. Small fans, percentage of the fans can even afford to do it. I remember when saying, it is, "Should I tweet about thing? the cruise?" And, like, I don't know. This was like a couple months ago, and they're like, "Oh, it's sold out." And I went, well, I was, "Oh, you know." I started saying, this "That's right, a legit I, ticket move." I started saying, "But the Shiprock cruise was funny though. Is that even though it's like a heavy metal cruise I do every year, I think the same thing with the comedy uh, cruise of the Impractical Jokers tour." Is like you're actually even if it's like derelicts who are going to come and get drunk and get fucked up and hammered for the most part, it's the top tier of whatever that genre of people because they can is. afford it because they can afford. It. So Shiprock is not fucking cheap, even sort of. Right. So even though it's a heavy metal tour, we're podcasting for another cocktail, right? Sure. You got a full one, yeah, 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 sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Sal, do you need to go somewhere? No. Can Christine okay, go and go to the bathroom good. inside? Yeah, of course. Or she yeah. Has to squat yeah, 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 yeah. Pool? You're cool with dogs, right? You cool with dogs? Yes. Just uh, Pris, Pris or Pris Pot or Priscilla, and but I think she's in bed with Leanne. I'll be sleeping on the couch. If, if your dog eats Christine, there's definitely something funny about that. <laughs> um, it would be terrible. Jay? Oh no, he's single now. No, I got it from Speedweed. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, I got really good ones. What is that? Gino's great. Speedweed. Gino's great. What Vaporizer. is it? It's like a, a, oh, it's a it's, it's weed like vapor. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it has like you know, amazing. However many hits in it, yeah, yeah, it really is such a different thing out here. I mean, I, you feel like a fucking criminal when you go back to New York, and out here it's just incredible. And it's, I mean, like I, I won't say which place, but I've gone into a place now. A place will just accept my passport. Like no rec card, no California ID. Well, from what they said, they're, they're, not, they're not supposed to do that. There's been like yeah, a bunch, of, a bunch written on this, but like so, right? The the law has been passed already, and it doesn't go into effect until next year. But I guess they're saying a lot of dispensaries are just doing it, kind of. Yeah, like they're just kind of giving it to people who don't have California. I'm good with two. I'm good with is two. It, I'm good with it, two. Is it becoming? Is it? Yeah. Is it past recreational in Los Angeles? Now? Yeah, recreational. They just pass a law, and it goes I mean, into you effect can walk next in with year. a California ID right now and just buy fuck a week. Yeah, don't party. Worry about it. Don't worry about it. Reclaimed Actually, lumber that it's it smelled worse than that. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just a different thing. You go back to New York and you're fucking buying it from like a dude, like a, a strange Puerto Rican dude in a hallway somewhere, and he's like, "All right, dude, here, take it." You don't even know what you're getting. It's just so silly. Like, yeah. I know what I'm getting, and I know what I'm like. I can say to them, "Hey, this is what I this is what I enjoy in weed," and they tell me, mm. and, and and then and then they go, uh, "You're Joey's friend, right?" And they go, "Yeah," and so then I get whatever Joe Joey Diaz gets. Like a sidebar of that, and I always shelve it for friends. I'm like, you guys can have that shit. I don't want it. Yeah, it's Joey. a different world out here. I don't do it a lot. So if I come to LA like once every three months. Yeah. It's particularly strong. I just take strong. it back with me from here, yeah, right? and I it lasts me. I have more than I get ever. You take it back with you to New York? Yeah. You're psychotic. Yeah, no, no, I'm I, afraid I, of that. I never, I'm afraid never of that. would in my life. I, I never would. I was scared, and everyone I know does it. Everyone, everyone. How do you do it? So finally, I was like, just, fuck it. it. I'm just gonna do it. In your now luggage. I do it all the time. In your luggage. 
is leaving here to make psychotic. Lewis, there's too much Thank to you. figure out. Do you, you understand what, what so I do? What do you do? Take this away? Do you want to know what Lock I do? I take I take a, about a nugget that big because I looked it up. I, if you go. Um, the way the 3D scanners work is it'll come up as an organic material. Uh, so Lewis weed... turns into a scientist when weed's on the line. <laughs> yeah, weed... You see, an inorganic compound cannot be traced <laughs> from a single molecule. It's a covalent bond. <laughs> Everyone knows <laughs> covalent <laughs> bonds. <laughs> Much like the process of osmosis. <laughs> the marijuana particles. The information is traveled through H2O. I like to leave an integer in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had Bert doing the Lewis voice. Um... <laughs> No, but it comes up it's as an organic. It's contagious. I know. It comes up as an organic it's material. So voice. I take a nug like that big and I throw it in with my socks. Like I just throw it down in there with my socks, and that's it. Because if it's in a baggie, the baggie shows up, and they go, "Oh, what is that little fucking?" Yeah. I'm told they're not looking for anything like it. Uh, so so I've, I've, let, I've let, me let me jump in. Let me jump in my back pocket and just in my clothes. Just let me back pocket when me... you walk through the scanner. Let me no, jump no, in. No, no, in my yeah. luggage. Bert. So, uh, so my wife and therapist had an intervention with me about traveling with marijuana. Because apparently, uh, if I smoke marijuana, I stop drinking immediately. And so my wife and therapist were like, yo, travel with marijuana. It's better that you... Yeah, but with the intervention with the, 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 yeah. They would rather me travel with marijuana right. than, go, risk. Than, than go to a club. Because the meet and greet lines can be aggressive. And so a lot of times I'll get a drink and then... Like an hour and a half long, and so I'll get another drink brought to me, and then people bring me shots. But if I smoke a hit of weed, I literally tap out. I become very like just like casual, and I'm like, oh yeah, time for me to go to bed. As soon as it's over, I go to bed. So they said you should uh, travel with weed. My wife, I Bert, said I'm you away. also like, I mean, you're what's we? I just did Calgary, which is a room you do the Calgary Yuck Yucks. Yeah, I just did it for the first time uh, a few weeks ago, and like it's so far, how different our approaches were. This is was said to be by the club like i after the show i go back in the green room and i kind of wait a while and see you know if people hang out that people are they big, really want it people that really have our big fans that want to hang out i go out and i do like you know like the, with, the, with the remaining people i do like the pictures and whatever they want to yeah. do so yeah, they go bert says on stage like if you want to hang out i'll be at the bar downstairs yeah. and you just go down and fucking rock it out with the whole crowd how do yeah. you know I, you know, I shouldn't say how, but for me, that just for me that that just builds like massive anxiety. I can't well, possibly do it. I don't mind that as much. I'd rather, I'd rather. I wish I could just say, "Hey, everyone, meet me at this bar. I'll do all the pictures there." Because you're going to do pictures again at the bar because everyone yeah. wants pictures. But, um, but yeah, they were giving us a tab at one of the bars like for twelve hundred bucks. So I can invite the whole oh, that's staff. Great. I can invite the whole staff. Invite the management. That's and they really could all, smart for they the could bar. all drink for free, and then I would go there. All I had to do was go and drink, and they were calming my drinks, and then all the fans would go there. But I'd also do the meet and greet. But weed will tap it out. So I, so I, uh, they said you need to travel with a vape pen. My wife packs it in my bag. Says travel with the vape pen. Take one hit of weed right before you do the meet and greet. You'll go to bed. You won't go to the second bar. You'll just go to bed. Uh, and I go. I can't. I can't. Uh, and I look online, and TSA does not actively search. For drugs or narcotics. It does not actively. If they happen to find them, their job is to pass them off to the local law enforcement. So if they find it in L.A., they then call the cops and they go, we have a vape pen. Cops in L.A. are like, he's got a fucking card. Let him go. Or let him go or throw it away or whatever. Yeah. But that's it. And so, but the reason I didn't do it, the reason I don't travel with marijuana is super simple if you're uh, a traveling comic. And it's just that I didn't want to fuck up my TSA pre-check. So if you get a call, I'm going to fuck that up. That. TSA pre-check is pretty fucking clutch. I never yeah. thought of that. If you fuck up your TSA pre-check, then times. you're sitting in lines. Dude, I have it. you got to get it. For the you know rest of your it's life. It's insane you don't have it. I don't have it. Well, I'm traveling a lot more now. It's cheap. I just did a layover in Denver for two and a half hours, and I brought weed. I brought a pre-roll joint that I put in the bottom of my bag, and then I brought a little nug for when I got off in LA. Because I, I, like I like to smoke as soon as I get off the flight. Yeah. And I knew I had a two and a half hour layover. I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring a joint. And I'm gonna just fucking go out, and I'm gonna. You did it. You did it too, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I don't bring like fucking. Uh, it's very small, like the amount. Oh yeah. yeah. So I, I left. But a vape pen's super small. I bring like yeah, ten pen. chocolates, candies, but everything. Jesus everything Christ, Sal. Me. Yeah. I bring ten chocolate candies. <laughs> I got a pound of weed up my ass. <laughs> Heroin, meth, HGH. Anything, anything my money. clothes are made out of acid. <laughs> it's just baked in. But I, I got out. Oh, God, I got wet. And I left the airport, and I, when I smoked the joint, 
went back in all through security again just because I wanted to get high. And the Denver airport, that security fucking blew. I, that was the worst security line I've ever been in my entire life. Dude, TSA pre-check, Lewis, you got to yeah. get it. It's but my point that I'm making changer. is it's not that big of a deal. Because uh, I literally Atlanta's just did it worst. twice. Atlanta's the, the worst. Time. Atlanta, I never been Atlanta's there. the worst because they set up Atlanta. It's Chicago in the 80s. Is awful. They're all terrible, bro. So was, it was, uh, no, Atlanta's worse than anyone. L- L- LAX is good. LaGuardia is a good airport. Miami's not good either. TSA pre-check Miami's is not game bad if change. American. It's game what? change. What? No, it is. TSA pre-check, game changer. It, you save 20 minutes. I've, yeah. At least. Yeah, yeah. I'll, take, I'll, I'll say Every 20 minutes. flight, though? Dude, I show up an hour and five minutes before every flight to the airport. I, I mean, I've only Even missed like with, four or five flights no, in my with life. With no pre-check. <laughs> you said you've no only missed four That's or five. It. That's a lot. That's, That's a lot of flights. That's a lot of miss, flights. Yeah. I've, I've never been to Chicago and I only have A's and herpes. <laughs> <laughs> You're I've like, missed, dude, I've, I've missed a few of my flights. I've missed a few flights, yeah. Really? Bro, we I missed show up an hour before the flight. <laughs> we went, we went to go meet you in Miami yeah, for Yeah, I missed a lot of them. I was so dude, confident. I wanted to fucking do I was punching walls without cat. Dude, I was so you confident. Were about, you we showed up cough. like an hour before the flight. I got, I got, I was like, guys, I got to pee. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, dude, you could, you could board a flight. They board 20 minutes before the flight. You could board. I pee. I'm strolling. We get to the gate. They're like, oh yeah, we go to the gate. You went and had breakfast and shit. You <laughs> sat down at full. Yeah, flight. it wasn't the secret. Is you got to, you got to carry on. You got to carry on. You can't check. check. I don't check. 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 You have to check a uh, half hour before. Uh, domestic. An hour. Half, I never, an hour before I, I domestic. Never hour before domestic. No, half half hour. Really? That's no. little something most people won't. Tell okay, you. Yeah, that's fine. I'll tell you what. I go. I, I'm. I'm always there. Like, you probably check. Cause you got some big fucking shitty bag. I Fuck check you. Every time. Suck. I, check I, I bag. hate. I don't if, check. Waiting. If I Dude. travel with somebody and they check, that's the last time I will ever. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One second. I, I I travel with two bags every time because I check both of them. I have merchandise. I have one bag's full of merchandise. Uh-huh. The other bag's full of my gear. Right. I send my clothes and shit. Uh, uh, I check it and I carry in my backpack like my computer and all that shit. Jay's got one bag that's just chain wallets. He mm. picks his all chain, chain wallet based on the mood. Yeah, he's, Dude, got a, he's got a sanitary like, case. Well, sometimes, sometimes when it's <laughs> overweight, I have to take some chain wallets out and wear them on me. Sometimes uh, I walked. I, I got on a. I had a flight out of out of. There's a one direct flight out of Omaha, and uh, it's at like six in the morning, and I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, and my, they've been calling, and oh, I'm like, shit. I got an hour. It's a half an hour to the airport. I'm like, there's no way I'm making this flight. I, I'm not packed. I haven't showered. I haven't done anything. I, I go, fuck I'm, it. I'm getting anxiety right now. Listen I me. sit on the toilet and go, Bert, <laughs> just sit here, take a shit, and commit to mo- lo- missing this flight. And then I call my wife. I go, I think I missed my flight. She goes, oh, we have people coming over today. And I went, fuck. I won't get back until like 4 p.m. So I go, Fuck it. I call the guy downstairs. I go, hey, let's just try to make it. And I, I tell him, just get me $100. Just get me there. He gets me there 30 minutes before the flight. I look at the guy and I go, go to the funny bone and give Colleen these two bags. I can't check them. I don't have enough time. In his car. Yeah. And so he takes my two checks bags and he just drives them back to the funny bone and gives them to Colleen. I go in and I say, my name is Burt Kreischer. I'm a concierge key. I need to make this flight. And they're like, sir, here's your thing. You got nothing to check? Go. And they held the fucking plane. Oh, nice. And I got on the plane. No booze before the flight. No booze before the flight. Get on. And she goes, can I get you something to drink? I go, a double Tito's. <laughs> and I murdered that bitch. I was like, yes. Direct flight from Omaha. One of my favorite. And then I see that guy. That same guy drives me every fucking time. And he goes, you remember that one time? That I had to drive you and we had to take your bags back to Colleen. I was like, yep. And then Colleen sent the bags. And they all, all the UPS people... Stole all the booze that fan, fans uh, give me. They stole it out of the fucking bag. Piece yeah, of shit. Do. Yeah. Now I can't. Uh, I can't check. I can't, dude, the airport gives me so much anxiety. I bring my penny board now. Now I fucking zip through the airport on my penny board. That is such a cunt's move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't give a yeah. shit for that. Louis, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. That's such a cunt's move. Yep. Yep. You got that right. There's an airport of people who know you as that douche. Out of the way. <laughs> I'm flying, bitches. Look, dude, if I'm fucking running late, I, I have Nate. Dude, Nate has video of me on his Periscope or on his uh, on his Instagram story of me skating for the airport. He's like, it started already. <laughs> He's so upset. Like. <laughs> But it's, I'll tell you right now, I really stand by that. The penny board has changed my life because now I can get, I, I shave off, I'd say, 30 to 40% of my travel time in life. Oh, my God. Are you fucking serious right now? Yeah, 100%. I, I, I believe you. 
Yeah. I'm into it. I started uh, biking cool. around the city, and I got into a fist Not as convenient, because you can Are you talking about bike. in airports or in life? I bring the penny board almost everywhere. No, no, I meant, I, I, I misheard you. I thought you were saying that the penny boards shaved off 40% of your time in airports. I mean, technically, yeah. I mean, you're going very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You How fast do you think you go? They go really fast. They go fucking fast. Oh, shit. Yeah. In an airport on un- yeah, dude. Un- marble, dude. Was, did I just lose sound? If you take your shoes off, let me tell you something. If you did a fucking I'm like a uh, Jaeger or penny boarding, if you did a Tom Cruise you slide across the time, floor, just like the you can get from one end of the airport to the other. Those floors are so fucking shiny. And there's sometimes they're first downhill. Sec- one time in the Newark airport for a split second, I opened a wormhole with another dimension. I was going so fast. <laughs> Dude, there's a there are some downhill slopes on airports in marble that if you're on a skateboard, the you feel best. like you're bombing a fucking hill. Yeah, it is. You're yeah. like, I'm going too fast for this. Oh, I don't know how to skateboard. I'm terrified of the whole concept yeah. of skateboard. So I, I, do you roll a skate? Same thing. Nope. Same, 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 same. I'm, I'm a bike guy. So now I nobody roller do. skates. What should they do? Nobody roller skates anymore. What, yeah, well, roller what skating? do you do with a roller rink? Uh, I I people roller skate. blade. Nobody Wait, roller hold on, skates. Hold on. You, you think you roller skate on like mall yeah, floor? Yeah, let's, let's stop for a second. Let's stop. I used to go to the house. Everybody, everybody, I'm going to stop this conversation. I was a competitive speed skater on roller skates. Shut up. up. Hardcore. Come on. Hardcore. Uh, spandex pants, Rydell boots. Fucking, dude, <laughs> I was. I never heard of roller speed skating. Well, it was a little thing in Tampa that maybe didn't take off. Was a Girona man? A competitive roller skater. In Tampa, it's perfect. Dude, Dude, I, I, was I, a, I could do the crossover leg, you know the frock. Yeah, frock. The yeah. Uh, Apollo Anton Ono thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a very good rollerblader. I can roll a bit backwards, crossover, all that I shit. I can roll Lewis, rollerblade. Lewis, is, Lewis uh, attacks all the uh, dangerous X game sports. Lewis can like juggle and rollerblade, but he can't throw or can catch. Can you It's like a weird. Oh, I can. Yes, you can. I haven't really snowboarded by what I have of. Yes, you probably I can. can. Yeah, you, can. you definitely can. I can. Anyone who can ride go, a skateboard, I would be able to go ten feet down the hill before I panic and just hit my knees. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm so. That, that's well, because you're not. You're not being confident. It's, it's yeah. It's, all, it's, all, it's always about being confident and going with you're it. Right. Um. But I never skateboarded as a kid or anything. I literally found a skateboard six months ago and got on it. I was like, oh, this is faster than walking. No. Wow. I swear to God. You, oh. you, you never tried a skateboard before? No, I tried it a few times when I was a kid. Like, but I, you got on it. Uh, yeah, I, never, I, I can't even get on it. No, no I never like, did it. I never like, you know. But you've gotten on it with two feet. I've never been, yes. on, I've never been on a skateboard with two feet on a skateboard. <laughs> I do it with my daughter coming to teach you. I'm terrified. Let's go to this it's, to a video. Dude, on. It's not <laughs> this fucked up. You, the, gotta, uh, you, gotta, you gotta hurt yourself a lot in order to get even decent. That, that's not true. I'm 40. I'm 40. I don't think it's time to roll. That board right there. That, that board right there. That, board right there that fiber flex. That's Big J's first skateboard. Yeah, dude. <laughs> nah, that, look, look behind you. You see it? J. Oh, the longboard. I've heard about those. Those yeah, are so fucking long. Like, that's fun, dude. Board. A longboard. It's like that's, that's a longboard. Long that's, that's a longboard. Long yeah. long that's a longboard. They make them in sure. variations yeah, of sizes. Right. Yeah. I have a penny. I have two nickel boards, and then I have a full size skateboard as well. That well, skateboard dude, I have. That one, welcome skateboard with those wheels. Was, didn't one fan actually just fly out going? I can't. I'm ter. I fell and hurt myself right away. So here, take it. No, it was a friend. He gave me one of his skateboards. Oh, okay. it was a friend. He like he he bought it. I he it bought a, a nickel board because he was inspired by me. Who was and it? Put, I'm uh, a new skateboard tomorrow. You, you, the fans aren't gonna know. I'm, I'm buying a new skateboard tomorrow. Are you? Well, my my thing right now that buy I want to do. Dude, buy the nickel. I watched Bam Margera's uh, um, uh, new Vice show. It's a documentary about his life. Really? Uh, yeah, and I I really connected with it. I don't know why. That he's much younger than I am, I'm sure. But like, he used to prank his parents no, all the time. Not at all. That's no, not true. He's, he's definitely he's, he's a bunch of <laughs> <age. laughs> no, he, he, uh, he had a he had a, a real severe, severe drug and drinking problem, and he was like, and he was like, what am I like? How do I fix it? And he was like, all I know is that I love skateboarding. I'm getting back to skateboarding. Part of me was like, uh, one of the things that happens when you decide to quit drinking for a month, you start going like it really, it really reverts back to like. When you started drinking, like when you were a kid, you were like, what did I like doing for fun? And I loved skateboarding. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get like a trick board and just do some ollies. and yeah. do some, Like see if I can do a couple. See if I can learn a trick flip, uh, a kick flip. Like just fuck around. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to get one smaller wheels. It goes a lot slower than the board I have. Yeah. But um, I love skateboarding. Yeah. I, 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 by the way, 
most adults don't do that. I completely get that. Yeah. I had never ollied in my life, and me and Ari were doing mushrooms. On, we were, were on the penny board, and we met these kids in the park, and I just went up to them, and I asked them to teach me how to ollie, and they did, and I ollied for the first time in my life. You did. It's a great did. feeling, dude. Yeah. Were you learning when, when, the, when the board spins in the air and you land on it again? No, that's a kickflip. That's flip. a kickflip. And ollie's just basically jumping up. And ollie's air. super fucking hard. Yeah. It is something you have to practice on in though. grass yeah. or on a rug. Like, it is... But once you do it, you're like, oh, fuck. And I've done it a couple times, but I can't do it for real. And then I was like, I bet I'll quit drinking. I'll probably lose a ton of weight and I'll get totally focused. Then maybe I'll just get a trick board and then fuck around on a skateboard. Have you done hot yoga before? I know you're talking about doing it. Doing 15 days. Have you done it before? I have, yeah. So you're, the cool thing that I really like about it, because I lift weights too, is when, after You've I started doing it, I've yoga. done hot yoga a bunch. I've yeah, done a it, bunch? Yeah, I did it twice last week. You, I do Bikram it? specifically. Because he's uh, an alleged rapist, so I always like to support the cause. <laughs> and uh, but no, I um I'm like a man who puts his money where yeah. he believes. Well, no, but you really start to focus on your form, and I feel like with skateboarding, like because you because you have to be so intensely focused on your form in that high heat that I almost feel like you get more in tune with your body. And I bet you'll be better at skateboarding after you start doing yoga regularly. There's a thing you said about bombing a hill, and I, and, the, and I don't, I do believe I, I talked about this when we did the um, challenge podcast with Rogan. But I do believe, me and Ari and Tom, I do believe there's a, a thing to the thing I like the thing I like about mushrooms. I don't like it about acid because it's too long. The thing I like about mushrooms is that it's a commitment. Uh, the thing I like about yoga is once you get in there, that's a commitment. The thing I like about uh bombing a hill is there is and I there are only people that have done this know this, but like once you start going down the hill on a skateboard, you realize oh there's no turning out. Like we need to we're committed to this. We're fucking pot committed, and we need to be the man that we thought we were when we started, or let's just fall. And it's a weird fucking feeling. It's and it really connects with like mushrooms for me, because once you take mushrooms, you're like, yo, I can panic right now, or I can, I can let it go right now. Go. You know what? It just, yeah, it just, just reminds me of is the roller coaster feeling, like when you're on a roller coaster and there's just that thing where you're going tick 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 up, and you're just like, well, this is happening now. Like there's no well, fucking you acid. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing that you say hey, that. You acid? Me? Did yeah. You acid? Yeah. Bert, you have? Yeah. Sal, you have not, right? Yeah, I don't, almost, don't, I almost don't want to try to see if I have a profound ever. explanation of my fucking anxiety, but I worry that I'm just going to change myself forever for the worse. No, you're not going to change yourself forever for the worse, and you're also not going to have a profound explanation for your anxiety. I would not. No. I it's wouldn't it's do in it. the same it. realm of You uh, might have mushrooms. a profound explanation and then forget it. I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. It's, it's, in, this, it's, in, the same, it's in the same world as mushrooms. If you Howard, Stern, mushrooms, Howard mushrooms. Stern's always described he did it okay. once, and he said he fucking it, it like changed him forever, and he hated it. It was a terrible thing. Let's do ayahuasca. That's one. Of, that's one I want to. That's do. crazy. I have a I, real fear of death. So you, you're you're gonna shit your pants. You're gonna puke. Yeah, but it's me and you in a fucking hut. Sure. You want to do it in Peru for real? Like the real. Uh, if if because uh, uh, Mike Mike that, Kaplan's a comic who does it in New York. They have these little houses. They do them in. He does that. No, I'm not, that that. I'm not doing that. One, no, which, I'm not doing that. Which one? Which one? Well, did DMT. Do? It's like five minutes. Have you done that? I'm not doing that either. I'm Why not, doing not that. DMT? That's way less that's scary. I have a buddy. I already did red band on live on that when he took it. No, no. That's uh, that's uh, Sa- Sa- Salvia. Salvia. I've done oh, that as well. That's that's did stupid. You? I did Salvia. My my buddy Forrest gave me Salvia when he was 19. He came home from college. Good or bad? Didn't terrible. Didn't tell me what it was. He goes, this is crazy shit, dude. It's kind of like weed. And I put it in a bong and I was smoking it oh, in the car. Don't blame him totally for that. I was smoking <laughs> yeah, it in the explanation. You still did it. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, he goes, dude, these are crazy pills. And I was like, that's, you're a maniac. No, he said it was Give like weed. Dude, dude, he said weirdo. it was like weed. I'll do it. it that's like identical to Should I wear a condom? Nah, you're cool. <laughs> so I put it in the bong and we're smoking it in the car. I'm at a stoplight and I'm taking a hit. And he goes, dude, he's like, when you hit it, just suck it in really, really hard. And I, I take the hit and I suck it in really hard. And he goes, dude, Hold the bong down because it was a cop across from us, like at the stoplight. As soon as he said down, the hit hit me. And I just saw like huge block letters, like of stone. The word down crashed in front of the car. And then it felt like my body was torn in half and um, like pulled in opposite directions. I was like, <laughs> I dropped the bong. And 12 seconds later, it was over. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And I didn't feel right for a day. Kim is way less empathetic about your your acid trip than she is to Birch Dreams. <laughs> your acid trip, she was kind of like, that sounds dumb. <laughs> I, I would, I would, uh, um, it wasn't acid. Like, I'll tell you this much. If, uh, if I get, uh, diagnosed some disease where it's incurable, 
I will be putting together like a hundred thousand dollar trip to go to. Uh, I want. I want to get afraid. Of, I want to get done with the, my fear of death. I'll do an ayahuasca trip and I'll fly everyone down. Do you want your heroin down. if you if you're terminal? It's not. No, not even terminal. I th- I think I have a real fear of death. Like a legit. Oh, I do. I am. Yeah. For it's, real? it's crippling. Yeah. Like almost. how bad? Like, do, oh, like you guys are crazy. You're yeah. afraid of death. Everyone's afraid of death, guys. No, I, I, but no, I'd say, not I'd everyone. Say, I'd say mine's mildly crippling. Yeah, Sugar's not afraid of death at all. What? what is, you can't be mildly crippled. Like those, it's like the no, crippled like, means it's not mild. If I, I have to sure, put it out of my head, if I start to think about it, it, yeah. it changes everything. My whole day. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I, I, watch. I can't watch movies about death. Who isn't afraid of death? Just some fucking prisoners. No, like, no, 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 no,
Bert, did you, you get Bert's whole Bert, I lost do my hour, family chunk? Bert, good. do an hour on every person does you've lost. lost. Yeah. <laughs> but does he really need to take his shirt off about it? Dude, his whole wife and my <laughs> wife got nuked a bit. I rip my shirt off and I go, I don't like Asians. He like, goes, oh man, shit, son. He goes, why? Uh, like, it's, like, it's like the Susan. controversy comes in where they're like, I don't like how like he started taking his shirt off after the Asians yeah. bombed. like, dude, he was taking his dude, shirt off for you. Yeah. I'm shirtless telling you, dude, Bert. that was his thing way before the family died. <laughs> shirtless Bert, uh, he's like, so I'm having sex with my wife. She's screaming the word brains the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's hungry for brains. I'm giving her the sausage. So my daughter, she doesn't clean up around the house. She's got an extra arm growing out of her head. I'm like, how are you not doing anything? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Hold my on, hold eldest on. daughter that is a... sprouted wings. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fucking biggest fear. Sam in DC. The they people live in there. You have a family of freaks. No, how about what if the bomb? The, 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 the bomb hits it. Your family The bomb hits no Newport, and I'm in DC, and they're like, "Yo, and no, all you get is super strength. No flight. No <laughs> flights into LA, and then I'm. Like, I can feel what Daddy's feeling. <laughs> oh, oh, that is oh, fucking. Oh, think about oh, that dream. Me. You, but you have super strength, your do- and one of your daughters is a fire starter. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, but, know, your family's the Avengers. Sounds pretty cool. <laughs> No, what if entire, <laughs> an entire X team? What if I'm in DC and the bomb hits this weekend, and my family's not killed, but they're definitely like filled with new, and and they won't let flights in, obviously, and then I'm stuck on DC. That you gotta pretend to love a one armed three uh, one armed three eyed woman. Wait, what do you do? Do you go over and, and just die with your family? No, you cheat. You cheat? Oh, yeah. You cheating. know what? I'm glad with I asked you. With a yeah. normal one. No, just yeah. Go to Asian massage See, this bars. is why. This is what I can't. <laughs> Huggers, yeah. I can't even speculate. I won't join the conversation. Like I can't. I can't start to think like this. You can't already I be get getting so whacked. Fucking sad See me. I'm deep in it. I'm already getting whacked off uh, by an Asian chick, but I'm wearing like fucking tires, his arms, sh- uh, shoulder pads, and shit. Like uh, how awkward it's is that? It's apocalyptic. The first, I the have, first uh, Asian rub and tug you get after they drop the nuke. Like, oh uh, yeah, dude. Fine. Uh, crazy. You gotta look at her angrily while Korean. she does it. By the way, just for myself personally, I feel like I'm one of the post-apocalyptic guys that wears like war paint and shit. I think I go yeah. with the extra model. No, I get a motorcycle and I drive into LA and I die with them. No, I got a doom buggy and Jay, I'm dressed you already racist. I got nothing to live for. Yeah, yeah, I already yeah, just, you're already I, pretty post-apocalyptic. I dress, like, I dress post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic yeah. currently. So Jay, what outfit would you put on? Uh, I take oh, off the Eagles it's jersey. Basically, all right, it's basically this outfit, but I'm wearing uh, like a me- like a metal catcher's. Uh, you know really, all you need is uh, like a, one of those little tiny motorcycle helmets and your knuckle gloves, which you have already. You're just not wearing them now. You're right. It's so interesting that that that's an actual reality in our lives. Is that a nuclear bomb could be dropped? Like I remember when I was a kid. You guys probably don't remember that, but I remember when I was a kid, we would do nuclear uh, air raid tests, so, yeah, where we get under cool. our desks. Yeah. yeah. Turns out that that doesn't work. No, but it, but it, but it's so funny that we did fire drills. That that like we thought that was so ridiculous. But they can't. No one can. Like Kim, North Korea can't nuke us. They could nuke can. like South Korea. No, he can't. Like he can nuke they're, us. They can't nuke there's, us. Dude. There's some questions about it, I guess. But some it's not, people debate. It's not New York. It's L.A. It. it really is like LA. if I like if I lived in L.A. with my kid, or I would Seattle. consider I would consider moving my kid out of L.A. because of North Korea. Yeah. Yeah, and also Seattle. I really we'll that. I think yeah. that's, that shit is crazy. Like, there's a million things to be afraid of, but being afraid that of North Korea dude, nuking America is crazy. Dude, no, I'll just any what, Koreans in I'll general. What, yeah. Donald Trump's reaction to North Korea is, I mean, like, it's it's, it's hilariously nuts where the point was like, I'm so afraid of what he's doing, and at the same time, it is laughable. He really is going like, you won't do anything, you pussy. Like, really it's like, that's what, what Trump's doing. doing that thing. He's like, dude, what Trump's doing like, is if you had me a, first, faggot. Yeah. If you had a negotiator, <laughs> you had like a hostage situation, and the negotiator comes, and he's like, let me take that thing. Goes, I bet you won't kill anyone, you fucking pussy. <laughs> Murder one person you know before You're I even like, like, think about giving you a job. It's like, it's like they got the gun around. It's like, listen, you meet my demands, or I'm going to kill her. He smokes up, pulls the gun out. Kill him, huh? Pop it. He's the first he goes, goes, while she's dead, that was a bargaining chip faggot. Hey, Trump's going, kill LA? Yeah. Those guys didn't LA's vote for me. Done. LA's done. Yeah. What's your move now? You're telling me kill all the Hollywood Dude, liberals? You want to kill all the Hollywood Dude, liberals? What are you going to do? Rock Shit, man? See if you can reach me, motherfucker. You're going to nuke California and guarantee my re-election? Yeah. Yeah. All right, sure. Oh, we need to... Rocket Man is one of the funniest things. 
I was arguing. I, Justin uh, Silver opened for me in uh, in in Rhode Island this whole weekend. And at one point, I was like, he's like, he's like, let's go to the gym and work out. I go, yeah, I should go buy a shirt. He's like, yeah, we'll go to like Foot Locker and get you a big T-shirt. And we'll go. I go, why are you specifying big? <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? It's just a fucking shitty thing. It's like, why specify fucking big? Fuck, I'm so stoned. There was a point there. The little Georgia. Rocket Man. So it's just, it's just like that. Did Justin called you big three days ago and it's been bothering you ever since? <laughs> no, right. Is it, no, it's, yeah, no, it has. It has. But same thing. It's like, it's like, why are you stoking a fucking fire? You know, it's, it's really, it's like, it's like Oh, pussy boys said that we're not upset about that's this your, fucking... That's your analogy to the North Korea situation. Yeah, Justin <laughs> called me fat, Justin weirdly. Also in that... Also in that... Justin called me fat. For the record, we've been drinking <laughs> hard <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Justin was like... That you was was great, I like that he just cracked a new one and took a sip, and I was like... And all I thought <laughs> was... Justin called Let me yeah. murder this one, I'll catch Justin's up with like, that you one. Justin called a rocket man. By the way, Justin Silver called me fat. What a dick, right? You guys talk now. Oh. oh shit! I, I, uh, Can we smoke I, another joint? Yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Christine, yeah. I, we sell, we have the weed in the car. I feel bad. No, I have are tons of weed. I, I have whatever you want. I have it. Where's it at? Uh, somebody needs to find it. Can somebody find it? Someone's gonna find back, it in his back corner. <laughs> like there's a you. there's a uh, um, uh, cigar box that has a bunch of with tape on it. It's right here, right underneath my thumb. Ah, the kids will never be able to crack through this tape. Um, and there's also how old are your joint, daughters, there's Bert? also uh, Bert, how old are your daughters? Uh, two. <laughs> no, how old? How old? <laughs> how many? I don't know how many you are. I met them. They're yeah. not two, but I'm not going to tell Bert. <laughs> 11 just, and 13. Oh my God, I just found out how oh, terrible of a father <laughs> Bert is. <laughs> Bert. His kids are definitely Bert, not two. I'll go buddy. find it. Bert, Bert buckle up. <laughs> my daughter's uh, turning 15 in a week. Oh, my feet are numb. Bert, my daughter's turning 15 a week, already got the drinking behind our back. And she's cool. She's definitely cool. Nah, she's doing it alone like a loser. Yeah, she's alone. Goes, she's drinking because no one wants to date her. She's morning, morning yeah. drinking. <laughs> she's dating because she's a, people calling her a loser. It's also not even like like wine coolers or anything. It's like real hard scotch. It's fucking, it was, te- it was tequila and vodka. Yeah. It was in the house. She was drinking what was in the house with her friends. Well, they say the healthiest way to deal with this stuff is to just talk about it on podcasts. I don't know what to say. What I got? I, you know, it's funny. I got the information. I got the information one minute before we went on air a bonfire a couple weeks ago. So the whole episode ended up being about that because what am I supposed to, to possibly do? I couldn't like. I got the information like a minute before we went on air. Yeah, back pocket it and do a radio show. Impossible. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you, Jay, can you drunkenly slur more through the story about how your daughter's been drinking? <laughs> so, I don't know how she gets this. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, my daughter's giving Glory Hall hand jobs. Bert, hey. What's up? You got weed? Bert's balancing seven items on top of each other right now. I have, I have a Death Star. That's an Indica. We don't want that. Hold on. What's the one that makes it all oh, goose stuff and be so cracked? Whoa. That can't be good. Orange cookies? Uh, oh, this is what we want. No, I'm not cool. doing anything called death. Lewis, you look great. <laughs> Sally, you're ready to do anything you, you don't want great. to. Oh, thanks, buddy. Oh, hang on. I got pipes in here. Lewis, I'm trying. I'm, I'm working hard. Well, I'm what? One cheat day a week. Hard oh, the diet? The rest of the week. Uh, exercising. Bicycling. Yeah. Anything? Ready? Nothing now? You look pretty good, man. Uh, I noticed it immediately. I'm sorry that Justin hurt your feelings, man. Just wait, let me compliment you naturally. To be fair, Justin is a lot smaller than you. You and Justin uh, could do like a big man, small like, man I, I, kind I of thing. Justin Enbrook said something about your weight. Not Enbrook. No, no, no. no, 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 no he would no, never no. dare. Listen, Christina to yeah. watch. Christina to watch me try on clothes for TV, and That's I go. Cool looking. Go look at, she goes. Go look in the mirror. I go. I don't want to look. I didn't want to look in the mirror how I look. So she said, "I look okay." Can you then, stop telling sad stories? Then you would. Then you. Should, then you should. Then, Are you just no. getting drunk and letting every insecurity? <laughs> hey, <laughs> tell me I'm pretty, Dave. We were having such a good time until all these sad stories started coming out. The other day, Christine anyway, told me I'm, I'm losing the custody of my daughter. They're putting her in a group home. All right, what are you guys so, into? So, uh, She'll be fine in group home. Your kids are taking care of cool minds in group home. <laughs> she's cool. she's going to she, from both season two years. If she completes rehab, they're letting her come home and. Uh, in November. Uh, yeah, she's going to be at the school. What about time to be You guys going to be having so much fun. I'm going to be getting my daughter at a group home. She'll do fine in group home. All those chicks drink. <laughs> yeah. Water in this. 
Oh, oh everyone's cool in group home. <laughs> all those, <laughs> all those bitches love tequila. <laughs> they're all yeah, they're charging oh, money to point something out. They're doing this, webcam porn. This has come so off the rails. Bird, who is the host, has stopped talking on mic at all. He just been saying, "How do I pour water in this off mic for what four is that? minutes?" Bird was reminding other people to talk into oh, the microphone that? the first half. It's a water ball. Jay has gone into. He's turned a corner into depression. Hey into guys, depression. Not a joke, man. Anyway, guys, I got a pretty bad skin disorder. <laughs> the doctors keep rescheduling my appointment. I had to move Can doctors. Someone, does anyone know how to do a water bong? Is that too much water? That Let me see. Too much water. I think that may not be a water bong. Yeah, here's what it is. You're missing the slide. I think it's a, a cup. Slide. No, no, you're good. Slide. It's a water bong. Perfect. You're good. That's good. Are you sure? Positive. I think it's too much Try water. Try hitting it and see if water. I think goes. it's too much water. No. Too much water. no, because I'll tell you why. Can I tell you why? Yeah. That slide piece has to go into the water. Yeah. All right. So that should come up to there. Yes. Okay, so I think got you guys that there. are all fact, stupid. Yeah, it's good. That's good. No, we're good. We're good. I think I put it in wrong. Hang on. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go get drunk with Jay's daughter. So now, <laughs> so this guy's. I just want. I just this want everyone to I appreciate this moment. <laughs> this is uh, Joey Diaz's favorite weed. Oh really? Okay, wow. so welcome to the Fair big weeks. league. All right. This is Joey Joe Diaz. It's called okay. Phyllis Diller. All right. It's out of uh, I forget the name of our dispensary. Phyllis Diller guest starring on Scooby Doo. Here, let's just do this. Much respect. And to then the legend. You can, if you want, you can just grab it off of that. It's yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah. Go, yo, Phyllis Diller, son. One and love. The lighter is Pour right out here. A little. <laughs> thank so, you very much. So uh, I want to thank the fan that gave me the root beer mugged uh, inspired bubbler. bubbler. That is a cool looking bubbler. It's a bubbler. Yeah. Is that okay? It's great. They pass it around. I'm not going to hit a bong because I'm 44. And that's <laughs> way too. I can't hit bongs at 44. I can do a vape pen. I can do a hit, but I can't fucking hit a bong. Anymore. Why? Why? What's the problem with the bong? Um, well, number one, I'm sick right now. But number two, um, I'm four. It's I'm, too I'm, much weed for me. I'm like it's too much of a hit. One? Well, yeah, you can do one. Yeah, you're thoughts. fine. Uh, yeah, Jay, I think you're okay. I think you're clear. December, I turned 40. It's over. It's pretty a cool. It's a pretty cool bong, right? Or not Bert. bong, but whatever hey, it is. Yeah. Did you uh, were, did you embrace turning forty, or were you bombed? I loved Jay, it. Jesus I loved it. Christ, I loved man. it. This is my favorite. <laughs> What's, going What's going on with you? <laughs> 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 I hear the music like Highway to Heaven in the background. I forgot Sal was here. <laughs> Bro, did you think about killing yourself specifically uh, at an airport hotel? Or <laughs> can I tell you the thing? Can I tell you the thing that's frustrating when you sure. turn when once you turn forty? Please. Then all your heroes are in the forties. Mm. Like all my heroes were in the forties when I turned forty. And I was like, okay, cool, but they're still so older than me. Who? Who's your heroes? Well, like, uh, you know, like, uh, like I don't know, I'm not going to say names, but, you know, like Burr and okay, Logan, like, and, like all the guys, all the guys that you look up to Probably when you're 40, yeah, sure. but then once you hit 40, you're all in the same age. And then once you hit 44, they're all about to turn 50, and you're like, God damn it, will I have that career that lasts to 50? Yeah. That's the really hard yeah. part. Yeah. Well, 44. So. I mean, well, you I'm, turning 45 I mean, on the, I'm turning 45 on the Impractical Joker Screws. And there is a thing where you realize, like, all my friends are in their 30s. <laughs> like, all the guys I like hanging out with, someone just hit that well, hard what fame and mo- What fame and money is locked in? Like, it's who? not like, fame and like, money. Like, like, Kevin Hart's probably locked in. To, to, but it's to, not to, such to, fame money. I'm just He's saying your, your, your career path. Sorry. There's, you're not dipping out at like at this point. I mean, you've been doing it for 20 years, right? Yeah. So you're not dipping out at 50. You're gonna fucking go till 50. You're gonna I keep think, on doing I, it. You know, man. You know, I started thinking. Oh, what could you a, do? I mean, produce TV a, shows. I guess. Here, like, I got more weed, Jay. I got the. Um, let me make sure I didn't just put that on pause. Um, I had a I had a theory about what are you looking at? Your time. What? No, I was looking at if you didn't put it on pause. Um, these are my reads for this week: Blue Apron and uh, and. Uh, Oh, cashew chicken? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good news, cashew chicken. Oh, that's weird. I never use paprika. The <laughs> thing I thought... They gave me the perfect amount. They gave so, me the perfect amount. It. I didn't even need to get an extra amount. It was just exactly right to dill. my door. My son looks up to me. It was exactly <laughs> enough dill. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could give a shout-out to this guy that gave me all these bongs. There's more in there. But I, I think I... But uh, there's another one in there. But um, the thing I thought about... And tell me what your, your opinion is. So, like, uh, say, oh, never mind, I'm too fucked up. Couldn't be around <laughs> him every day. Yeah, but hey, guys, <laughs> could you be around My daughter gets into the sex slave trade. <laughs> I don't think there's any weed in there. Just keep getting sad. Yeah. Oh, you, okay. What do you guys want to talk about? My mom's sick. Is there a, is there a 
It's a whole right. Yeah, it's it's like a cup. Yeah, it's like suck a, on the right hole, there. pull out the. Oh, no, you pull the carb. No you pull the no carb. You pull the no carb. Once you hit it, then you pull the yeah. You pull that out. Okay. Someone tell you something funny, gangster. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I can't. I haven't hit a bong hit in forever. Do it, burn. No, I have a radio at three in the morning. Bart, you never think about how great that radio is going to be if you take a bong hit. Uh, it won't be because I'll just be going. I have uh, paragraph thoughts that I can't put into sentences. You don't mean that. <laughs> I do mean Come it. Come on, you Bert. Just gotta, <laughs> no. You just got to distill them down to a sentence, man. Mm. That's what I love about the vape pens. You can take one hit and go, I'm going to measure that. <laughs> I don't smoke a lot. I'm only over here. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Sal, let's talk <laughs> to the microphones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, good call. <laughs> um, I, uh, do you ever think, okay. No. Here's where I'm at, by the way. Secret time. Perfect. So, uh, so I did my first special without my shirt on, right? I did that because that's who I was, right? And then now everyone's like, "You're definitely doing your second special with your shirt off, right?" And I was like, "I was like, well, I don't know. I, I didn't really thought about it." And they're like, "No, no, no. You're definitely doing it with your shirt off." And then you go, "Okay, theoretically, let's say I only am known as the shirt off guy comic. That's it." You see it online. You go, oh, I like the machine story. I like this guy. It's not like they're not like it's not Bill Burr where he's wearing full clothes and he's telling you thoughts and theories. And the reason you fall in love with Bill is because are you cool with that? If you could make if you can make, say, a million dollars a year, which is a lot. Now, of money. Bart, you're bigger than that. The story. Let me tell you something. It was funny. And I have a weird. You, you, I, I think I, you, I, have a, I, know. I have a weird thing. I have a weird uh, perspective on this that you hopefully you'll appreciate. Yeah. The machine story. Like the machine thing with you with the, and the shirt off is very late in my knowledge of you. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's, that's you. But I'm saying that's very newer to me. No, but I know for a fact. Like you're fucking funny as hell. Like you're funny well beyond taking your shirt off. And no, shit. but I know. So I like, gotta be fun to watch you do a special like where that's where there's no novelty to. Listen, I love. Listen, you did. You. Did, I mean, like without exaggeration. The most talked about episode of the Crowdwork show is the one that you were in the audience. We were, you know, I mean, people. Love I was that dressed episode. in an outfit, and I remember you came up to me and you're like, "You're taking your shirt off, right?" And I was like, "Huh?" And you're like, "You're taking your shirt off, right?" And I was like, "I can." And yeah. you're like, he was trying to fuck you. He did that. To and everyone. he was like, "He was like, you were like, you were like, do it if you want to," but like, I don't give a fuck. And I was like, okay. And then I looked at whoever was next to me, and I was like, Shut, I think it was uh, oh, it was not great. Jim Berger. Uh, uh, who's the guy from? Comedy Central, oh, who now works at CISO. And I was like, should I take my shirt off? And he was like, yeah, take it off. And I was like, well, I'll take it off. I don't Shapiro, give a Shapiro, Evan Shapiro. Yeah, and so, but like part of me goes, like say say you get, like uh, everyone put their mics down, okay? Okay, ready? One, two, three. So say you get one bit that goes viral oh, that everyone holy loves. Shit. You know camera. what I'm talking about? You just melted it into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't even think it was far enough from the microphones. <laughs> he, he, he audibly whispered it. And then he, he enunciated it with his hey, lips cook. into the camera. Oh. Continue. Also, you didn't oh. preface it with secret time, so everyone's going to be talking about it. Oh. Everyone put down your microphones. Dane Cook. Oh, shit, I forgot to put down my microphone. Secret time, everybody. Secret time. Oh. <laughs> well, go ahead. I, I, I know the point you're making. Say, sure. say, say, say you just become famous for one bit. Are you sure. cool with that for the rest no. of your life? Nope. But no? It's Bert, no. let me say it's or, a, or, 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 or. It's not But you don't remember. You've never been... Uh, 40 nights at the at the Des Moines Funny Bone. Uh, 40, 40 tickets, 40 tickets on, on a know, Thursday when night. We, when people get famous for a bit, though, there, I pro, I mean, like, I hope, I, I hope I'm right in this, that you're 50% disappointing an audience who came out to see you. When they think you're coming out, when they come out for one bit, I hope that they, that I, I, I hope that they leave going like, oh, shit, it's all about that one stupid yeah, fucking bit. Like, bro, huh? I think but, most of your, for 90% of your fans... Wouldn't give a shit if you never did the machine bit on the road. Or took your your shirt off. I believe there is. No, no, no. no, no, Can I tell the problem with the shirt off? One day you're going to be too old to take your shirt off. You're not going to look. That'll never happen. You're Uh, not going to look right. No, I I don't look right today. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, hold on. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The two, like, I I am, and I only preface this with, like, I know that Jay has known me a very long time. Yeah. I'm a, I am a really good comic. I really am a good comic. I, I, I write. I work. I, I, I focus. 
Dude, you're just pure funny. But but the two biggest cheers I get in my shows are number one. When I take my shirt off, man, that is a deafening cheer. And when I say when I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia, they lose their fucking mind. Yeah, they love it. Now, listen. I get, I, get a pause break. I get a pause break in between on bits that I've wrapped up and that I think are, t- are really good bits. But the truth is, and think about it. Like, and this is where I'm at in my head. And I think this is a lot of the sober October coming in where I'm like, well, who am I? What am I? You know, your, your, your development stops growing when you start boozing. So, like, I'm an arrested development kind of a, a little bit as a comic. But, like, you go, would I be cool? Would I be cool with a career where I cut my sleeves off my shirt, came out with a hat with a with a with a hook on it, and was like, I don't know about you, but I don't believe in global warming. I believe the Lord picks his temperatures and them goes nuts and you sell two thousand tickets a night. So if you started speaking the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a different thing. You're not talking about being like a true comedian. You're talking about kind of creating something and you know writing, writing how many, a bit, I, okay, or writing a character, okay. Or, you know, writing, not writing. How many comics have you seen get lost in stand-up? What Meaning, mean? like guys that are great joke writers, but they just disappear in stand-up because a bunch, they're a bunch, right? Now, yeah. who blows up? Amy Schumer. I love her. I love her. I'm not shitting on her. I'm a slut. I drink wine. God, leather special. Uh, this Maris, pussy smells. Do something whatever. catches. Something catches. You can't do anything about okay, that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Ready? Mm-hmm. So Kevin Hart, small little man, little angry. Ha! Ah! Right. So it's a thing. It, it becomes like I really believe the more you dumb it down, the more successful you, you, you become. Sure. I don't know you if you would person, that. I've been the going only for that for a while. I can disagree with that. A bit. Oh. <laughs> like think about David Tell has overthought it. Mm. Oh, we David overthought it. We overthought it. Where he's doing? Yeah, he's the funniest absolutely. person on the planet and should and be a billionaire. He's the funniest person on the planet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's self-producing yeah, game shows. Colin Quinn. Colin Quinn. Yeah. Colin Quinn. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, but Quinn. that's what we what we look at. David Tell is the is a, the master, and he's the best at what we look at. But if you actually, you know, like it, like Kevin Hart can do like a whole array of things yep. that a Tell can't do, yep. and like True. movies and acting and all this shit, and like dude, because, there's it's because about, he but it's dialed not just, it down. No, no, no. I don't even know if he's dialed it down. I think that's what Kev does. Yeah, I'm telling you. I just think it's like I'm just saying. It's like, David Tell does not have the, but he'll tell you, does not have the acting skill. Like Kevin Hart does. Hold on, Kevin, hold on, Kevin hold on. Hart also doesn't have the stand up that appeals to, like, it appeals to us. Yep. It's, it doesn't appeal to, like, fucking, you know, like the Great masses point. in the way that, and it's not just that they dumb it down, no, it's you that said, they're simple to explain. No, but it's you like, said, you said the masses. That's yeah. the point. Is David Tell doesn't apply to the masses. He doesn't appeal to, the mass of people don't see David Tell and see what we say. That's the, you know what I mean? Like, they don't get it. They, like, it's like... Enough to fill a fucking co- you a comedy Mar- club. Marco from Eastville leaned into me. This is what a fucking shitty club owner and oh, booker Jesus. that fucking guy is. David Tell's on stage. He leans into me. This is years ago. David Tell graced that fucking shithole with his presence one night, right? Shithole. As, as he's on stage doing what David Tell does, which is giving them a fucking glimpse of fucking what he does, Marco leans into me and goes, man, I don't get it. And literally, I was like, oh, wow, you really don't, huh? By the way, just for the record, what, who, who he hasn't gotten historically is Attell, Kurt Mesker, Mike Vecchione. Like three of the Dan best. Soder. Maybe, yeah. Soder. Yeah. Four, like four of the best like writing comments. I mean, like. So my point is to you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Given the opportunity to whittle your act into a word. Get Cunt. her done. Get her done. <laughs> Get her done. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, tater salad. Yep. By the way, by the way. I'm going to put myself in this list. Don't think I'm shitting on anyone. Get her done. Tater salad, the machine. Like, do you, do you, do you jump at that opportunity yeah, and say, and say, and say, this is my, this is yep. going to take care of me. Did I say that or, do you, or do you, or do you, by the way, you guys, if, 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 if it translates to the millions that it translated to for, for get her done. 100%. And also not just the yep. millions. It's all way, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm very much so. I, I, I much more value. And again, this is, a, this is speaking as a forty-year-old. I hope people enjoy what I do, and I love doing what I do, and I hope people latch on to it and come see it. At this point in my life, at forty years old, I'm very much like I'd much more rather I'd rather have the money and know if they were like you can get two million dollars for doing a v, a voiceover, but you'll never be the star of a sitcom. I'd I'd sign that contract right. in a fucking heartbeat. Well, it's also not it's shit. not only just the money though, but it's like let's say you have that type of fame. 
you know, what you're what we're looking to do, or any comedian, a good comedian is looking to do, is they're trying to, you know, quote unquote, get off comedically. You want to be mm-hmm. able to go up at night and do what you do. Having that freedom gives you the ability to, for the other 50 minutes of your hour to do whatever the fuck you want to do. 100%. 100%. So that, and it'll sell tickets and bring people in and yeah. expose you to new people. So the, a lot of the times when you're talking about the people that disappear, they never have the opportunity to do what they do fully. They don't have the opportunity to not have a, a, a full time job. Let's get one job or, who are we talking about who disappears? Jason Good. Who? Jason Good from New York. He was a great sure. comic. Yeah, sure, really sure. good, funny, funny comedy. Yeah, funny guy. What do you mean? What do you mean? Lord, I'm yeah, right? I'm he was like a funny guy who just kind of faded out of the scene. Oh, funny, funny. Like, okay. uh, I'll say that. I'll say that. Uh, 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 he was funny. Very funny. Very funny. Very funny. Dan Adamant. Dan Adamant is no, he's fucking still hilarious. Yeah, I know. I still do it. But he never... He no, never blew right. up the way he should have blown he, he, up. He'll be Dan. So Dan Natterman will be a never was for like sure. Dan Natterman, Dan Seller, Natterman is still so a seller comic funny. to this Very day. Fun. But he's so yeah. funny. But still sells tickets. But but like but should have been. Uh, he no, no, that's not. Yeah. You're, you're right. By the way, he, I'm talking about somebody disappeared. Like Natterman, Jason doesn't Natterman, do comedy Natterman anymore. Specifically, when I've spoke to him about this before, I asked him if like doing uh, getting so far on America's Got Talent helped him out at all. And he goes, it would have, this is a, a direct quote, uh, I mean, I almost call this a quote. He was like, I like being home in New York. Like the he in his voice. He didn't, he, uh, I like being in New York. Uh, he didn't like, he didn't like going on the road. He actually said, he just goes, I don't like being in the, on the road. There are a lot of guys so, like that. But then you uh, look by at. The way, by the way, I, by the way, I don't, I hate traveling. I don't mind being in a place. But I hate the act of travel. I hate flying. I hate all that shit. All right, what about this? What about so, this? But, but, but I like being on places, but, I mean, Attell gave me that advice so young where he was like, and he was so frustrated. When I would open for him, he was so frustrated when I would go back to open for him for the third time in Virginia Beach because in his mind he goes, you have an hour of comedy, right? Why are you not headlining Virginia Beach? Because he was starting at a time that was different from the time where he had to come in with me and go, Oh, Dave, no, they're not just doing a thing now anymore where it's like if you have an hour, you go tour. The comedy clubs now are looking for, like, draws. They're looking for, like, can you sell out three or five shows before we bring you in? Dude, it's more about, That's a thing, it's man. More about branding That's a, you, and, it, it, than it's ever been. At one point, but at one point in comedy, it was like, do you have an hour of comedy? Can you entertain for an hour? All right, well, then go hit the road. You're a road comic now. Where it became a point where I I was calling places to go, can I feature? And they go, have you been on MTV two? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, have you been on Guy Code? Like, those, like, it was weird, like how it was going for there for a while. So the question is, uh-huh. would you um, sell it out for a get or done? Sure, because I can still do what I do. Sal, you're the. You're, you're, I mean, not, not, I hope that uh, you uh, accept this. Sal's uh, a great re- example. No, actually. But, no, but like you're a good example of like. Of like, you Somebody guys, was really you guys sell fifty six hundred in in a in a fucking night, which is overwhelming. It is a brand, obviously. If you decided to go away from the brand, and I thought about this today, trimming my beard, I thought, I wonder how many managers said to Paul McCartney, "You're nothing without John." We you know, and you're in a group of four, a Ringo, like you'll never do another record. I'm so sorry. Like, would you? Now, granted, it's a friendship with it, but would you? Would you leave money to do your own thing? Yes. Really? Yeah. But, but is it because you have a stock of a stockpile of money now? Yes. That's why. Of course. Um, yeah. Both. I mean, I, here's the thing. I, I'm not going to go out and bust my ass and try to be better and always, like, learning and performing. Like, I love doing it. Love, I love everything about it. Solo stuff, I'm talking about. Like, you uh, told me. Stand up. Stand up. I love everything about it. It gives something back to me, though, as I'm doing it. I mean, it, you take that away, and then it's just work. And I'm not – I mean, and then work is work. I, you, I don't know. You could be successful in any kind of work. Yeah. But I'm not right. doing this. I'm doing this because it, it, as much as I kill myself, it doesn't feel like work. It's like right. – it's I love it. So if you're going to take away – you're going to take away the love – of everything about it, it would just if you know just sign it, selling out for a catchphrase. I think. Like if they, said, if they said, if they said, if they said, hey Sal, we want you to tour. It's gonna last five years. You're gonna make twenty five million dollars. Um, but we definitely need you to like. Uh, uh, we need you to be in a swamp, chest deep, with alligators at the very end of it every night. I don't know. I mean, I, if I had no money, I mean, I mean, I would jump at that because it's like hitting the lottery or whatever. But. 
I don't know. Can't you just See, do that's both? The, that's can't, can't you do the game? There's, a number, there's get a number where you stop caring about money and then you want to do what you want to do. That's like true success. I watched Ari Shafir kind of do this recently, and I don't think he makes that much money. Ari's the worst example. By the way, I love you, Ari. You're the worst example of everything in this business because he doesn't live by any of the real codes that any men live by. He yeah. lives by a code that only Ari lives by. He goes, huh, I guess I'll get a fucking... Like I texted in this video the other day that I shot. That's the video I showed you. I go, yeah. hey, give me your thoughts because I want to post it. It took him fucking 12 hours to watch it. And I was here's, like, bro, at 12 hours, I'm done. I don't want to post it anymore. Like, here's what weirdly impresses me about Ari. Is that he's got a double special that is premiered on... And we have the same agent. It's the only reason I even know this. Justin Edinbrook. Justin Edinbrook. Uh, he, put, he released a double special. He hasn't fully found out yet if it's done anything for him. Because he's just chilled. Like he's not on the road. He still hasn't gone. He still hasn't committed to going back on the road yet. So can I say it? But he doesn't even know if, if the. But that's great because that, that's Ari, balls, Ari, that's Ari is I doing. I respect that. Ari's yeah. doing what he wants to do. That's Absolutely. what I love about Ari. He literally got up and said, "I want to go travel the fucking world for four months. Stop doing my podcast." The, the cardinal rule of podcasting is it comes out every fucking time, yeah. the same time every week. He Ari said, said it, eh, fuck it. He said it too. I believe us together. Where he said it, he goes. uh he went away. He was like, he's like, yeah. He goes, he goes, it's just, he goes, I, he goes, I have enough money right now to with the way with, with what Ari gives a shit about to live the rest of his life. Does he? He, goes, he Does said, he have that much money? He goes for the way he, makes, he look. He makes a lot of money. Sure. And he by goes, the way, by the way, he goes for his the way, nut for the year is thirty five grand. Yeah. He yeah. goes his he goes, nut. He goes for him, but he goes for him. He goes. He goes. He has enough money right now to live the rest of his life. Fine. Yeah. So he goes. So it's all kind of gravy to him, where he's just kind of like, "Well, now was what, what do I want to do?" Well, that's what success. You get up every morning and do what you want to do. Absolutely. Like, literally, where you go, like, I'm not. Whether it's on a creative standpoint, we you you know hanging out in your personal life, whatever it is, I get up, I open my eyes, and go, "Today, I'm doing what I want to fucking do," and that's, that's the dream. The uh, that's the fucking I don't do dream. That. Me and you, simple as that. Me, I, me, I, me, I, you, I try me, to you get and there. Bert, that's the goal. Specifically, though, in this situation, me, you, and Bert, just because we have children. Have much different overhead than a lot of our much, friends, right, bro? Much, but it's, the overhead daughter, has nothing to do with what, doing what you want to do. Maybe the amount of money no, you make no, has just, to do with listen, it. But I can still do before, what I want to do if I'm making no, money. No, no, you know, no. You'll see this soon. Before anything else happens in my year, my daughter's school is almost fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Before anything else, I literally every every that's every person has a sure, charity, yeah, right? You know, Unless you go to a public school, sure. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, anybody in New York. My nuts aggressive, and I'll tell you right now. Yeah, I have an aggressive nut. That's the way to put it. I have an aggressive yeah, nut. Yeah, look, I live in New York City. Yeah, I got a kid. I got over. I pay for a car. I don't. I don't drive. But real, I think it was a separate conversation. I think the idea is you want to make enough money. Where the the, the amount of money that we're talking about. Well, where do you sell having, your soul? Having overhead. Where do you having sell a your kid, soul though? What'd you say? Where do you sell your soul? Is it what you're saying? Oh, right? On uh, third show of Saturdays. <laughs> That's yeah. the truth. The five so, p.m. The five p.m. They wanted to add two shows on uh, on Grand Sunday. Grand Rapids, dude. Five. Seven and nine. That's crazy. Grand Rapids, Michigan. They no, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck them on that. Hey, Grand Rapids, you can suck my dick soft and get it hard, and I still won't come in your mouth. Yeah. I the the my, it my, like it, I'll do two shows on a Saturday. If you want to add one, we can sell that for for a percentage. Don't I, don't ever come at me with three shows. If you want to add shows, we can deal with that on a percentage. This is my point. Is like. I'm getting way too juicy. Part of the, part of the deal it, it, for me in Grand Rapids, Dr. Grins, are we talking about Dr. Grins? <laughs> is three shows. They fucked me over fucking five, four times. Seven and nine. Oh, man, your problems are so pass. real, guys. No, pass, pass, pass. <laughs> Kill that five show. Kill that five o'clock show. And then tell them if they want to add one, it's at 90% of the door. Look, I was just in, I'm in D.C. this week. They want to add two shows on Sunday. And part of me thought. For my time in life. God bless. 22 shows Sunday. Good for you, dude. That's do, great. Do, if you want to, if God, for my time in life, because I'm doing that sober October, and that starts Sunday, I go, man, it's got to be more than, it's, it's got to, I can't do it. I can't do it. I yeah. can't bro, do it what because. Was your first, bro, what was your first biggest jump where you felt like, shit, I can't sell any tickets to like, to like, oh, wow, there's people in the audience. I love this. I'm I love selling this story. out. I'm selling out a room. This is crazy. I love this story, Jay. I'm on the cusp of that. I don't have that yet. Okay. So, uh, uh, they, my guarantee was ten grand in uh, in Vinnie Brand's stress factory. Stress factory. That's huge. Huge. Guarantee ten grand, no bonuses. 
By the way, Benny, I apologize. I just want to point out what a good guy you are. In this story, I apologize that I'm going to rat you out. <laughs> Blizzard comes in. Uh, sell out all shows. Vinny Brand comes in the back and says to me, Hey, man, I did such good business. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't tip you out. I said, really? He goes, I didn't expect anyone to come out. There's, It's a sold-out show, every show. We're packed. We're oversold. And he gives me a, a, a nut, like a like a nice nut. Um, he came and, I went, and I went, uh, and I went, and I went, I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, bro, thanks. Like a nice nut but by banana. The way, by the way, I think it's a fluke. The the uh, the machine story goes viral. Me and Tom did the weight loss challenge the week before. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Next week, I'm in uh, Buffalo. Same blizzards going through New York. It is the very beginning of the year. I'm sure you know this blizzard or this snowstorm that went through. Um, and I'm in Buffalo, and I sell at every single show. And I do the math in my head. I, after doing Vinny's show, I do the math in my head, and I do the number count. And I go, man, I must be walking out with like X amount of dollars. Mark Grossman, great guy, honored my contract, but it was not what I thought it would be. And then still bonused me out double what he should have bonused me out. I have to say that he did. And I was like, wow, that's fucking, it's solid, but I still thought it would be $20,000 more. (laughs) So, in my opinion. I call my agents and managers and I let them know that we're having a problem and I may be uh, exiting because I'm not happy with these deals or whatever. And then I, and then Mark Grossman calls me per this. I should never share any of this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Mark Grossman calls me personally and he says, says to me, he goes, yeah, I don't have to, but I'm here and we're here and Fuck I love, me. this is what I love about podcasts. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, Hey man, this is what I'm willing to do. Like very, like we're friends. Me and him are friends. And he tells me what he's willing to do. And I go, uh, all right, cool. I'm willing to do that too. And he goes, well, this is what your agents want. I said, well, dude, I'm, I don't ever want to do you wrong. I don't, if you don't think you can make that in Portland, then don't sign that deal. I won't, I won't ever want to fuck you over. And he goes, okay. And so we agree on a deal. I think that's how it went down, Mark. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. But, and so we agree on a deal. And that weekend in Portland, I went, oh, things have changed. And that's when you start getting ticket counts, where yeah. people start sending you ticket counts. They're like, yo, you're sold out in here. You're sold out in here. You're sold out in here. And then I was like, oh, fuck. For me, the big moment of change was when I said in in uh, Stress Factory, I was like, how many people found the – how many people heard me from Rogan's podcast? And it was like a big group, big, big group. Mm-hmm. Mickey Gall was there. And then I was like, how many people found me on Facebook? And the place went fucking nuts. And I went, oh, shit. And that changed my perspective on everything. I was like, oh, so Facebook's the shit. Like that, you can share videos and it just went viral. It's gotten, I want to say it's gotten 100 million views on Facebook. But that one fucking, one the machine story. Story. It's because people live on Facebook and it's a part of their everyday life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're, they're spending job, so much. It, it, it's like another tab open on there. Dude, what we were talking about, like you know, being at home, being at work, being at the gym, being like your your like sanctuaries in life. Right? You're always on Facebook in all those places. It's yeah. like you never leave that side of social media. So if you can get a piece of your content to live within that space, it's like it's like fucking bright and center. It's like having a. It's better than having a comedy special in their home where everybody's around it. Dude, it's, it's, it's ingrained in I want to put my special on fucking Facebook. I want to put my... I want to. Oh, why don't you contact Facebook directly? Because they do uh, shit like that, they're dude. Not, they're not doing it yet. But the, they're the looking whole, for content, The I whole know. point of this is, is that like... Oh, fuck. I knew what I was about to say and I fucking <laughs> forgot. It. I'm fucking hammered. Um, the, my, my point is like... We're all hammered, Pert. There's a moment where you realize... Um, Bill Burr said it to me one time. So I heard someone in the back of the green room of the comedy store go uh, I'm going to dot 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 it was a big comic too I'm going to dot 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 but uh, you know there's a, a, a football game and a baseball special or what, whatever they said you know you know the, the things we make and they leave Bill Burr in the best Bill Burr voice ever goes dude if they want to buy tickets they buy tickets and that's the fucking truth. If the, look, how much shit was going on when you guys did fifty six hundred people at the Greek? What shit was going on in L.A.? What Kendrick Lamar? Like it was. 
Yeah. WWE is only the big thing I knew. Dude, I'm in DC this weekend. Dead Dave night. Chappelle is <laughs> sold out uh, every night at the fucking thing he's doing. Theater, yeah. yeah, my shows are all sold out. If they want to buy tickets, they buy tickets. That's the truth. Yeah, and and you can complain all you want. Sebastian Maniscalco, when he goes into fucking the Borgata, ten thousand tickets clean. Yeah, because Sebastian Maniscalco was at the Borgata with you. Sebastian Maniscalco has that rare thing though of like he his fans aren't comedy fans. They're Sebastian Maniscalco <laughs> fans, yeah. and they fill a fucking They're arena just for Guidos. him. They don't give a shit about it's comedy. Italian Americans. It's just it's a cultural thing. They really are. Dude, like, they, I, well, know. I was on oddball tour with them. He did, never went last. He went second to last always. The difference in the crowd from him being on to Dane Cook or Jim Jeffries or these other amazing comics being on after him. Half the crowd just goes like, "We just come to see Sebastian." Bye, and they split after he's done. It's crazy. Dude, it's, it's a blown away like. Like, uh, we're doing the, the show in uh, New Orleans, and I'm dying to see how that works for me, because they're, they'll all be your fans. I'll get, like, I don't know how big the theater is. I'll get, if it's if it's a thousand seats, I'll get, like, 200 kids that'll come see me. But I'm dying to see what the rest of them are like. The Machine, huh? Ma- Russian Mafia? What? You, gotta, you know, it's funny. It, it's a weird mountain in a weird way for you, because you have such a built-in audience of people who are so, like, worship you. Yeah. From the my show, kids. my you, fucking it, kids. It, 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 it's a hard thing to find out, like for real, like. And, and you, by the way, to your credit, man, you really do put yourself in situations of just like this is comedy. I'm jumping on right now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like, you're so, the show is so popular. Like, I, don't, I don't. How do you find out something's like really that's like this is fucking beast funny? Yeah. Why Versus people just going like, because by the way, like, Chappelle, I feel like for him always too at the salary when he comes, he's like. I'm going to go work out three fucking hours at the cellar yeah. right now. He goes in there. When they go, Chappelle's here, the place loses their shit so much. Like, he'd have to fucking have a, a – he'd have to say, like, women are less than human to make any kind of news. Because <laughs> everyone's just like – Oh, yeah. Th- sorry. I remember. <laughs> he's just like – Is it the next topic? Are we going to get into it? He's like, a, it's a good start. The story just I'm like – saying it's complete. The story just like, goes like, Chappelle did three hours. Nothing like, you know, it's like – he killed for three hours, or he did awful. Everyone's just like, "What a treat!" Chappelle went on for three hours. It's like I, I watch I watch George St. Pierre train with Hensel Gracie and John Donahue. <laughs> In person. I thought we were person. talking about stand up. I was like, George St. Pierre's doing stand up. <laughs> no, he's, he's, killing killing it. he's one of the most interesting, funny people. He's uh, talking about getting abducted by aliens. Oh, yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You do Bisbing is like legit, next level. Like fucking title, he's holder. the dude. He's a yeah, title holder. Yeah, yeah he's the because he's, he's with Lewis. Part of me goes like, he's like, like loser. Yeah, <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. I didn't. I, know. I just thought you know him. How he must be world. a boy. Yeah, like, like, Mickey Gall. How Mickey Gall's in our world? Legit, but like, how in our world? But Mickey Gall's like a young fighter. Well, I don't want to lose the point that I was. Well, making. How in our world he is? It's amazing how tight Lewis is with like the champ. Yeah. No, awesome. it's, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but. Awesome. They, the point is, though, I watched George St. Pierre train with John Donaher and Henzo Gracie before I was interviewing Henzo Gracie and for an hour. And that's a long time to watch somebody. They're not fighting. They're training. But it was like, it was an incredible thing to watch. It's like fucking watching Mozart write a fucking yeah, song. You're watching like, you're the just best like, that's of fucking the fucking George St. Pierre, man. Great. Great. Watch, so that's uh, why when Chappelle... Rock up Freddy's gag a bitch out. Yeah, <laughs> that's you know, true. Seen that porn? Yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. But no, I'm saying when you watch Chappelle, watch Chappelle you watch Chappelle for three hours, it's like... You know, you're watching this guy work out, and you have to appreciate that for what it is. Actually, and comedy fans in general, I don't think they realize when they come to a, a showcase in New York City or L.A., that's really what you're watching. You're watching a guy in the gym work it out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When you see him on the road, yeah. that's when you're seeing the fucking fight. That's fight night. But I, I think if people had a better understanding of that when they go to showcases in New York and L.A., they'd appreciate it a little bit more. They'd appreciate a bomb a little bit more, a guy that's trying something new. They don't always... I think there's a level of like I don't want to say entitlement because you're paying for your your show and you're paying and you want you're getting a two drink minimum, but it's just there's a misunderstanding as to what they're really seeing. It's not a show. You're seeing uh, you're seeing them work on something. Yeah, I, I wish that was. I wish it, I wish L. A. was more less of a showcase city, in my opinion. Yeah. But uh, the truth is, man, look, uh, Rogan, Chris D'Elia, uh Brian Callen, Brenny Schaub. I'll just say the names that are all doing theaters only. Like, I mean, I think they're just doing theaters. I don't know. I'm not sure. Segura, what they're 
they don't get to do a weekend at a club the way I do. I, I do, you know, yeah. eight shows, six shows at a, the, at, a, at a weekend. So I can work on shit. That they're working on shit, so that you're seeing their bomb ass material. Yeah. So if you're gonna play in that game, go to the store, and and you got to go to the store. You got to go do sets at the store. If not, man, go to the fucking ha ha, the ha ha. Okay, I think the real message is Cafe is a great fucking club. The real message is podcast is, is Bert. You gotta go back to wearing sneakers. Those fucking shoes. They, they don't look right, shit. right? <laughs> it looks weird on they you. Look weird on me. You know what? When I wasn't so drunk, they looked okay. But now I think the whole thing's weird. I have a great pair of new Nike SBs that are so comfortable. So Ooh, can, yeah. I cut, cut back, can I cut back to uh, so this easy. conversation we had earlier? So I blew out my uh, plantar fasciitis. God bless you. And, um, roll and, thing? I, wait. I got Rolf on my show. Oh, yeah, because we talked about it. Yeah. So you. I blew out my plantar fasciitis, and then I got rolf And then I went to a doctor, and... Uh, what did you get? Uh... Rolf. Rolf. What does that mean? Oh, I had the, oh, the, oh the guess babies? what's a brand new... Because of, oh, I, know Rolf, because, I know Rolf on the Muppets. No, 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 no. Like, Can we please... Me and Bert. Bert, 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 and then I had to make it happen on the bonfire. It happens. You've got to do it on the Pacto Jokers. Rolfing is aggressive. I don't know exactly... The guy, by the way, Bert, the guy The guy went easy on me, and I'll tell you what, it didn't... It didn't it didn't affect my life even a little bit because the guy went truth told, secret time here. The guy went way <laughs> easy on me. It did not I did not feel it was worth the uh, the effort. Secret time, the guy doing Coke was Joe DeRosa. Secret time <laughs> True story. Secret time, the other guy was Nate Bargazzi. So <laughs> yeah, uh, but he always smoked weed. Yeah, he, just, he <laughs> ate it. He ate it, I think. And I watched him eat it and I was like, I don't thought you didn't do weed. He was like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hey, um, man. We were all blacked out. One of my favorite moments in the world is the wall of death happening. The entire crowd of Skankfest split from left to right and split the room down the middle because they were going to do a wall of death. And the middle of that, that was space Nate in the middle was Nate Bargazzi. Not fully sure what was happening. And just stand oh. in the middle waiting. And goes, do you know Nate? This is great. Oh, I love Nate. What's I really do love death? Nate. Nate Bargazzi is one of the funniest comedians in the world. Yeah. He's so... I I envy his talent of being so funny and yet so clean. It's it, it's mind-blowing to me. Uh, what he's able to do, I'm so impressed with. The uh, And we, uh, we know, you know, Dave and Lewis and Sal, the funniest people in the world we know. And, like, man, Nate's such a unique talent. I say talent. that all the time. I say, you know, I say to people... What a, what a blessing to have. I, go, I know the funniest people in the yeah. world. I say that so many times. My yeah. girlfriend uh, expresses that a lot in her own life. She goes, well, it's in fact, they talk to the funniest people in the world often. I said that to Joey Diaz one time. I said, uh, I go, hey, man, you know, we're bullshitting, super high, sitting, but we used to have couches out there, and uh, we're sitting out there, and I said, hey, man, if um, if I die, just keep my kids in the loop of you guys. And he goes, buddy, you don't want that. Huh. I said, really? He goes, look at Rain Pryor. Look at all, look at all the fucking the kids chick, of famous kids comics of comedians. Goes, that are trying to goes, do it now. Bert, let them just live their life. Yeah. Joey Diaz is such a genius sometimes. Yeah. Where you yeah. go like, hey, what the fuck? I don't I don't want them to hang out with like like you're never going to form your personality that way. Yeah. We're never going to hang out with like mm. I, I I form my personality. You hang out with other kids, guys. not like adults at the comedy yeah, yeah, store. Right, right, That's right. a weird I thing. When you, I, when you I, see I, little kids who are, <laughs> who are like, oh, I spent my whole life hanging out with adults doing drugs around me and fucking like, oh yeah, they're probably fucked up kids. Let's yeah. get real. You I, know? Uh, I don't know if this is the closing story of the of the podcast, but what's Ooh, funny, ladies with, and gentlemen, get ready. With, with everyone, with, want to do their tour dates real quick. Yeah, 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 all right, let's do that real quick. Sure, uh, let's do plugs. Uh, plugs. Oh, yeah, October 13th. By the way, this will be the t- determining story. If it's good, we close it. If it's not, <laughs> someone has to top it. We go around the yeah. room. It's never been told on a podcast ever. This is, this is actual inside info. Okay, hold nice. on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be at the Chicago Improv Sober uh, in the middle of October, the 27th at All Things Comedy Fest. Yeah. And, uh, and then I will be on the Impractical Jokers Cruise. You can't get tickets for it. But uh, I'll be on the Practical Jokes Cruise the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th of November. And then 5th with me and you. And then on the 5th, Sal and I are doing a show at, well, you know the, the name Joy of the theater? theater? The Joy Theater. The Joy Theater. Joy. Joy Theater. The Joey Theater. <laughs> you should. The Joey Pretty theater. Joy Theater. I don't even know if we announced it yet. This might be the first place we're announcing it. Uh, my November 5th. Can I tell you that our agents were reaching out like, yo, you said yes to this? And I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> and they were like, okay, just making sure. Like, I was like, yeah, sometimes. Because I just like to cut the, the middleman out. Yeah. So I just text you. I'm like, you want to do this on this Guys, day? if you like, need yeah. a host, I will be also docking in New Will you be there that night? that night? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing your fucking cruise. No, but we're no, staying no, 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 that the night. night after, 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 after we dock, are you leaving? Oh, yeah, I plan, I'm going to stay in New Orleans okay. a couple of days. Oh, so the host sure. Yeah, we party. Yes. We party, yes. guys. I wouldn't be shocked guys, if we all Guys, that's how you present. force your way onto a show. Yeah. <laughs> um, For those young comics out there, you want to see how it's done? That's how it's done. Uh, that's my entire career. <laughs> I'm touring with Jay Moore. Keep going. <laughs> uh, I got October 13th. I'll be in uh, uh, Melbourne, Florida with Kimberly Cungden. Uh, we're Whoa. doing a, sh- a show at some place. I forget the name of it. but uh, <laughs> not, enough, not enough respect for Kim tonight. And I have to say that's my fault. And I'm bothered by the fact that I didn't just give you a mic. You are absolutely fucking hilarious. Oh, thank you. And, and one of the okay. things that we all say that when we talk about like what we like in comics, I remember I met you guys because you had done like a year straight of the roast of uh, the Kill Tony. Yeah, oh, two years, yeah. Two years straight of the Kill Tony, and I saw you on Kill Tony, and I thought you were fucking hilarious. I found out you're from Florida, uh-huh. and I said, "Hey, roll the dice." Two really cool chicks that I like that are funny. Let's do the bird cast and huge fucking numbers. It was so fun. It was so I fun. Think. Sarah talked about the girl that the guy she lost her virginity to. In her Reg. parents' bed, yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking great. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah, I have a new podcast out right now on iTunes. It's called Stone Science. Uh, oh, me yeah. and Sarah. Me and Sarah Sarah is fucking hilarious. The two of you together are two very different personalities. Yeah. I, I would say much like Dave and Lewis a little bit. Yeah, she's like, she's very, she's like, she, well, she's, yeah, she's Puerto Rican and Jewish. Okay, and that's I'm perfect. Puerto Rican and w- white trash. So. Uh, legit, perfect. I saw, I, I follow you on uh, Instagram and I watched all your families of your, your, your family's, oh, yeah. your family's uh, uh, vacation. Yeah, my And you guys garbage. were like legit partying at Causeways. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, under Causeways, like at rivers and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting. But fucking massively hilarious. And I apologize. Thank you so much. No, don't pa- worry about it. I apologize. Thank I'm you. a little fucked up. Um, yeah, then uh, I'm gonna, October 22nd, I'm going to be with Tim Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's seamlessly back into your plug. Yeah, he's got to play. And, uh, anywho, I'll be in Volcanoes. <laughs> that is a really just long plug. All right. October 22nd, I'll be in Detroit with Tim Dillon. Uh, lots of more. Uh, Buffalo's coming up. Uh, Chicago's coming up with Dave. GomezComedy.com for all the dates and tickets and all that shit. And uh, check out the other podcasts. I got three podcasts on the Guest Digital Network. Legion of Skanks with these two guys. Realized Podcast with Zach Amico. And Believe You Me with the UFC middleweight champion. Zach Amico. Oh, I didn't mean to step over you. Michael Bisbing. Zach Amico, for those of you guys who don't know, is the guy who already threw piss on his face. <laughs> yes. Jesus. <laughs> if you want to get to the... Thing quick, that's yeah, that's sure. his get her done. Well, that's his get her done. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus. right now, he's got to grow past that, but Zach Amico's really fucking funny. Yeah, he's really funny. He hosted the Naked Roast Battle at Skank Fest. And Skank Fest, we're doing seven cities next summer. We're uh, we're, we're scouting Los Angeles I right now. Better be so. on this Oh, dog, please. Tour. Bert, you're a fucking... You're one of us. You're a skank. You're, oh, anything you're, you're, anything uh, we fucking do, it's an open invitation for we're you. Making you know out we're, we're, we're making our residencies. We have our uh, Skank yeah. Fest residencies. Yeah. You who are You're all, fucking on uh, it, my friend. So yeah, check out my other podcasts. And yeah, that's that. Ladies and gentlemen, his hour special is available on GasDigitalNetwork.com. It's called Libertas. Yes, that's good. Dave, go ahead and plug it. That's Yeah, that's all, man. Go get that on GasDigitalNetwork.com. And uh, yeah, it's the first hour I've put out. We all put a lot into it. And like Lewis directed it and produced it. And uh, it's fucking, uh, yeah. Anyway, go get that at GasDigitalNetwork.com. All my shit's up there. So Can I tell you this right now? You're not going to like what I'm about to say. <laughs> I watched it. It was shit. But, uh, <laughs> not but, uh, worth the cash. Specifically the direction. Uh, <laughs> buy it. Buy it for what it's worth and then steal it. Rip it, put it on YouTube, and let everyone see it. Of course, True. I think that I think that changes Absolutely. careers. Here's the thing: we we look, we pay people specifically to pull all of the shit off, but keep doing it. Who gives a keep shit? Keep doing it. Here's keep the truth. posting it. The more you share it, and the more people see it, the more people want to buy. It. That's the thing that I noticed. People, the, first of all, not that many people are. If people like it, they're gonna want to support it. And to be honest with you, the amount of people that are going to see it on YouTube and want to own it for themselves because they know it's going to disappear one day anyway, there's yeah. value there as well. Louis, you're I, so right in that, in that regard, by the way, with uh, 
<laughs> what with, was that? With Skaggs. <laughs> you're you're so, is that all one word? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're so right. I'm I'm every two to three minutes, I wonder if I'm <laughs> having a stroke. Yeah, me too. You're so I'm right like, I'm no, uh, The bonfire, people, someone posts every day on YouTube. Yeah. And Comedy Center doesn't give a shit. They don't say anything about it. So yeah. I don't. So many people go. I don't. I can't afford uh, serious again. But I listen to you guys on YouTube every day. I go. Yeah, but they come out and see you on the road. Or they buy a ticket. Dude, 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 they tell dude, dude. a friend. It, 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 my, it, my what special, the end game is. It's fantastic. I'd rather have it be that way. My special yeah, was on Showtime. Uh, I know the direct numbers. I think a few hundred thousand people watch it on Showtime. Mm-hmm. Some uh, Vietnamese guy <laughs> ripped it. Uh, retitled it. He didn't title the machine. He retitled it "Funny F- Naked Ma- Fat Man Talking," <laughs> and it got 46 million views. Oh, hilarious! It's amazing. And I was like, I'm cool with that. 46 okay. million. Yeah, who cares? Well, well, here, with the Bisping show specifically, we get like sometimes 200,000, 300,000 hits on like clips that people pull from the show. Yeah. And you know his, you know his manager, and you know other people have been like, dude, why don't you guys like flag those? And I go, first of all, we don't have these huge, we don't have like an MMA blog that like has hundreds of thousands of people following it. Yeah. It's better to have the advertisement out there and people going like, oh shit, that's really funny. They listen to the 10, 15 minute segment, and then they come back and they download the podcast or whatever yeah. it is. So the more you guys can, I'll tell you that's one thing for people that listen to podcasts, and I don't think we say this enough. Fucking share them, share them with your friends. Yeah. If you think you have a friend who's a, a, you know. A, a good sense of humor or would dig a piece of content, share it with or your friends. Or has a shit job where they're just sitting yeah, in dude, a fucking, sit in a fucking office yeah. all day. Get yeah. a friend who's in a bad mood all the time. Share your favorite podcast with them. You know the fucking joy that this shit brings to your life, so definitely go and tell friends open about them. it. Open them. Open them. And open them. Yeah, yeah. you know what? That's the big okay. thing is sharing them. The, uh, the machine story went viral with like 29 million views. Yeah, And I was like, amazing. well, that's the end of that. And then some dude, uh, I wish I knew his name, he ripped it Uh posted his own titles on it going this guy is telling no joke right now it's a true story or whatever and it got 80 million views wow. and I was like I was like bro everyone please do that I'm very cool with you stealing well, my shit well the people that know how to also do like the tags like there's a guy who does Dave Smith's fan page and he pulls the videos we let him pull the videos and he puts you know the little black bar on top or it's like you know comedian breaks down how Trump won the election and that shit adds so much value yeah. you don't even oh. realize yeah. like your machine story I'm sure there's the version that has like you know whatever it is yeah. where it has like words text on the top yeah, yeah, and the yeah, bottom yeah, yeah. those get however many more clicks which you don't even realize there's like little tricks if you understand how to navigate social media Dude, you can do a lot more with it and get further with it it's the best and I and I implore everyone to do that and try, by the way if you want to fucking take videos of me and my show but it's Libertas yes sir uh, and it's fantastic dude I I, I, I support um, I support anytime comics make specials meaning like you guys over at Gas Digital ATC did Paul Verzi's. Yeah, I know. Anytime a comics, I think it was Pete Davidson and Bill Burr, mm-hmm. uh, deficit yep. funded that. But like, Amazing. that means that's a legit special. Yeah. Like, uh, so so congratulations on that, brother. Thank uh, you, brother. Uh, Appreciate it, man. Yeah, been awesome. a number one on iTunes for thirteen days or Amazing. thirteen days straight now. Yeah. Which everyone gets a number one on iTunes, but keeping it. Kevin Hart put out an album a few days ago. Uh, I mean, there's uh, albums come out almost every day, and he's a rapist. It. Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Big J, uh, any days to promote before we tell this story that's uh, going to close the show? Just call BigJComedy.com. I got a bunch of things. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina is the next closest thing. Uh, if you're listening, uh, very close now. But besides that, yeah, BigJComedy.com. All my dates. Uh, Legion of Skanks, Guest Digital Network, and Bonfire. Sal, all your shows are sold out, I'm sure. Where's the rest of the tour for the Impractical Jokes? Uh, the rest of this year will be in New Hampshire, Chicago, San Jose, Portland. Um, all sold out? No, uh, I, no, I don't think so. Those are in December. But we're about to go on to the UK for three weeks. So <laughs> That's your fu- How do you guys get so murderous there? They. It just, I, told you, I told you this. It's the thing that I have to uh, end my words with this podcast saying that... Um, and I know I told you this, but like I was so excited for you guys backstage. I was really was enjoying the moment because I didn't. I knew what I knew. I didn't have to go on stage, but I knew I was going with you guys in New Orleans. But like, uh, Skrr kept saying, a string of O2 arenas, a string of O2 you arena are, shows. To brag, to brag on your behalf here, uh, I believe in England the way they judge like the TV shows, like it's by episode. 
and like the top hundred episodes, it like, wasn't the first like fifty some episodes was some practical jokers episodes, right? Yeah, it was crazy stuff. I mean, that's an amazing yeah. statistic. I don't, don't want to like brag on your behalf. Didn't you tell me one time that you have an eleven and a half inch cock? <laughs> And yeah, you can fuck for two. hours. Yeah, no, I don't want to brag you on your behalf. You blow Puerto Rican girls' backs out with your fucking huge dick I don't want to brag on your behalf, swag. but an 11-inch dick that never gets soft. <laughs> I don't want to brag on your behalf, but we should. what we should do is what we should all murder our cocktails right now and let Jay tell his story. Yeah, let's do it. So wait, are you are you good with your uh, Impractical Jokers? Obviously the only thing on True TV other than uh, something tells well, the, the truth. Well, the really, really, really big one is The Garden. And that's November 9th, and it's selling really well. That's the awesome, Garden, You're at The Garden. I will be incredible. there. Yeah. Oh, I want to go there. so bad. Hold on. When is this? November. It's going to be amazing. November 8th? 9th. 9th. It's the day. So wait. So so we, we dock November 5th. I'm staying in New Orleans on November 8th, and, and on the 8th I get home, the 9th Whoa. is The Garden. Of hold on, course, hold on, I love hold all on, you guys hold there. Can I get there? Hold on, hold on, I took off that weekend. I'll buy tickets. Are they available? How does it work? No, I got you. I got you. November 9th. You said? I know. That was like me reaching for my wallet. November <laughs> 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 okay. I would, dude, I would, I would, uh, I'd say I'd, I'd pay to see you guys there, but in all honesty, I there, was a, there was a portion of me that was like, uh, like envious, but not, not jealous, but envious <laughs> in like a way of going like, I remember seeing people do theaters and going like, I can't imagine that, but I never, I never got to imagine it because I never thought it would happen. And then when I started playing theaters, I was like, when I got to have it happen for me, I was like, wow, this is really amazing. When I saw you guys play the Greek, it really reset my structure. And I was like, I was like. I was like, oh, so, but it was because you guys were with the group. I was like, oh, how cool to be able to share this with your friends, your best friends. That's cool, yeah. Um, That's how I feel about this podcast tonight. We're at almost uh, really three split, and a half We really split the room between girls who have ripped up jeans and girls whose pants are completely intact. And <laughs> girls and guys. It's like an eighth grade yeah. dance. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell my story about... You'll love it. And also, so, girls who are b- bored of this podcast and dudes who are fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you can do another 30 minutes. This is day. great. I can do another 30 minutes of it end up oh, yeah. this, and I'm this fucking is a hammered. This is a great one. I'm hammered. Are you? Are you really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Jay cried an hour ago? Did I cry? I probably cried. I remember him saying he didn't like black chicks. He's very. <laughs> remember when Big Jay said he was racist? Every day? Wait, no was that? Way. Wait, hold on. That was How shit. bad was that? That was great. Wait, you you, you, you cut that out. I will not be your friend. Okay, okay, I won't. I won't cut that out. But no. can I put it in my act? Please. <laughs> no. No, that was so funny because it was. Coming from, it wasn't coming from a place. No, of, it like, wasn't. It, the place it came from was totally fine. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It wasn't even part of Secret Time. Nope. <laughs> that, was just, that was just a regular time. This is great. Right, right, that, was a great that was a great story. This is good. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Should we end the podcast? Yes. Okay, hold on. Hold on. One second. Hold on. One second. Let's kill these drinks. And Jay, you should also you should also say the story is not that good, so that everyone done. lowers their expectations. Uh, can, you get, can you please get Dave it's another drink? It's not a mind blow. Guys, we should I piss great. before we kill these drinks? Nope, no. How long is the story? Quick. All right. um, Super quick. Hold on. Let's get Dave another beer. Lewis, you want another 7-Up? <laughs> yeah, I could actually use another 7-Up. My daughter's incredible. going to come in here to watch TV tomorrow and be like, uh, Dad, you have a grinder? <laughs> Who's Phyllis Diller? <laughs> Who's Phyllis Diller? Hey, what did you think of Phyllis Diller? Do you notice a difference? What the weed? Did you like it? Yeah, weed's weed to me though. For real yeah, too. I, don't, I, agree. I don't. I agree. Weed it was weed. great though. It was good. I weed. like it. It's a little more uplifting for All me. Right, these guys, be you ready? Hold on, hold on. Let's. Are we killing it? What is We're killing sure. it, man? Chugging? It's yeah, done. chugging. It's uh, done, son. I got radio at three in the morning. Oh, oh wait, let's. Listen, I'll, I'll sing the Star Spangled yeah, Banner while you guys do this. Hey, wait, uh. What? Everyone take a knee. You got a flight? What time? It's late. What time? <laughs> I got to leave for the airport. Sal, chug that, you fucking bitch. Oh, you cunt. I know, I Sal, know. I, Sal, I, Sal. Two nights ago, I really did a lot of this. Did Sal. you drink a lot two nights ago, Sal? How about in the morning? <laughs> Sal, pretend <laughs> we're, we're in an earpiece Sal, telling you to Sal, do this. Sal, Sal, here's what you do. Can I tell you a real drinker? <laughs> I'm glad that's not open. Pretzel rods is the answer. Wait, pretzel rods Sal. are getting involved pretzel in Pretzel rods, when you, when you pound a beer... You just snack on a pretzel, pretzel rod or a nanner sandwich. By the way, I'll take it. Yeah, hell yeah. Pretzel rods are fucking amazing. Jay, you've got a story to tell. I know. Jay, you got a story to tell. All right, hold on. Let's tap our drinks out, murder them, snack on a pretzel rod, and hear Jay's story. <laughs> and this is how we end the podcast. By the way, I still have to fucking sit in here and post the podcast tonight. Yeah. No, Beck will yeah. do it for you. Of course. 
Yeah, you know why? Becky. I have that Mickey Becky. Mantle game. Yeah, I, I have that know. fucking next level I long know, strength Becky DNA. Works for you now. <laughs> Becky's your we, Becky's your child. You adopted her. <laughs> Do you live here? Do you live here? If you live here, I'll fucking when hire you. you. Bert, Sal, tap it out. Sal. Birdie. When yeah, you see Becky's better. photographs, I promise you you're going to fucking shit yourself, dude. Drink I don't have me. one. She didn't give me one. Just She's an awful it, assistant. Put it on me. Do you have a it drink? It doesn't matter if there's anything in it. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. Nothing? Ready? Go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to make a toast. To Sober October, I want you to think, when you're having a cocktail this October, that your boy, Burt Kreischer, is Go going sober. without yep. spraying his pool down, waiting for that Mars side to clear, <laughs> and thinking, man... I got some inspiration in me too, but I got to kill it and just let it sit there and come a dumb idea. I love you with all my heart. Thank you, gentlemen, for doing this. God bless Legion of Skanks. Hell God yeah. bless Impractical Jokers. I can't wait for the cruise. Christine, I appreciate your, your silence in the back smoking <laughs> one hitters. This has been a fucking amazing time. Thank you. Oh, say can you see. By the dawn's took early light. Yeah. Just kill it. Wait, so proud. Wait, so, kill it. Filming oh, yeah. the season. <laughs> Fil- this is great. Mine was, full. Bert, yeah, mine was full, too. Bert is going to delete this file. Oh, Sal's accident. done, Jay. Kill your. Jay, kill your. Wow. Right? Jay. Bitch, wow, fall Jay, you're pool. a bitch, dude. Sal just fucking... I can't. Sal Jay's just, gonna fall in my empty pool. Sal I'll just chumped you, dude. I'll flip. It, I'll fall inside the pool. That would be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Oh, my God. If you couldn't go to Conan because you broke your neck because you it fell in... that narrow of a thing. You're yeah. gonna probably fall in the I pool. might fall in the pool. <laughs> Wait, we should, we should hang this out. This is great, though. So, Wait, so Bert, Bert did an episode of my uh, CISO show, What's Your Fucking Deal, where he was the audience microphone, and afterwards, the show was over... I'm like, let's hang. Bert was only in town one night. Let's fucking rock it out. Let's go hard. We had to go film one more piece of something at a stri- <laughs> at, at, at some like you know adult like dildo store. We had to go film. So en route to there, we're in a car together, all of us, me, Christine, and Bert. And Bert, we're talking, we're laughing, we're ham. We're already fucked up. Bert goes, his phone rings. He goes, oh shit. He goes, and this happened once on this podcast too. He goes, two people, three people you don't you don't not answer a phone call from. Joey Diaz. Yep. Joe Rogan. Yep. And the other one is um, Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope's calling. Bert looks at his phone. He goes, he goes, oh, you don't not answer a, fo- a phone call from Doug Stanhope. He answers the phone. He goes, he goes, Doug, on speakerphone. He goes, Doug, what's up? He goes, he's like, hey, what's up, Bert? He's like, hey, man, he goes, you're on speakerphone. We're, I'm in the car right now. We just filmed Jay's TV show. We're hanging out. He goes, it's me, Jay, and Christine. We're all hanging out. He goes, hey, Jay. And he's like, what's up, Doug? And Doug goes, hey, so uh, tonight Bingo got hammered and tripped and smacked her head on the passed down and smacked her head on the ground. They had the helicopter <laughs> to and fucking. I, I think she's gonna. Yeah. He goes, he goes, I'm pretty sure she's gonna die. And Bert goes. He just takes the speakerphone. He goes, "Hey, buddy, what's up?" <laughs> <laughs> that switch of emotion. He goes, "What's up, bro? We're all partying." He's like, "Bingo's about to die." He's like, "Hey, man, how are you?" <laughs> Yo, I literally there, stepped out of the car and talked to Doug, and I was like, "Hey," uh, and he's like, "I think we're canceling the show." And then, and then, and then he gave me a call. Uh, the show was on a Tuesday because it was election day. He gave me a call. On it was, a, po- the, it was a, a famous, the, the podcast, the end all podcast, right? Is what it was called? Uh, end of the world podcast. The world. And he called me Monday. Uh, I want to say at like 8 in the morning. He had been partying. And he goes, uh, we don't cancel shows. We don't cancel shows. That's all he channeled over the, show, over the phone, all the voice message. And so I hung up. Uh, I didn't. I listened to it, and then I, uh, I texted him, and then he. The next text I got was, uh, "I'm in a bad spot. I'm here with Marilyn Manson. Can you come hang out with me?" <laughs> and so, I was like, "Yeah." And it's like Tuesday at like 5 p.m. So I go to the store at 5 p.m. and it's him and Marilyn Manson in the back, and uh, I won't share. A little tidbit of information, only because I think it would be shitty. Bert, I can I can push you into sharing this, but I won't. But, uh, <laughs> but easily. Uh, but Stanhope was in a was in a real spot. Like if you know Stan, you know Stanhope. Like sure. Sometimes he can be. Sometimes he can be uh, <laughs> Doug, like party disconnected with everyone, and then you get real spots to Stanhope, and you're like, God, I love this guy. 
Yeah. And he was in that spot the whole fucking night. And uh, and it was... I'll, I'll say, you know, to end this podcast on a very positive note, and I say this to everyone listening, all my friends in this room right now, I was in a very low self-esteem, low ego place. I had no self-esteem, no ego. I didn't... Uh, I got booked on the uh, eyeball tour, and all my dates got pulled. Well, I just talked to Jeff Wills about that uh, the other day. The, oh, wait, your show. Yeah. I got put on like 12 dates. They all got pulled. Uh, my wife scheduled a vasectomy. We started construction on my house, and I got fired from Travel Channel. All within a week. Wait, your wife scheduled a vasectomy? Like, without your permission? Like, you didn't have any yeah. say in it at all? <laughs> oh, she was like, Tuesday, you're going. You're going. Next Thursday, you're going. Right. You know, yeah. right, once you schedule something, <laughs> without any fucking consultant. <laughs> like, Why did you just fucking organize? You're getting your nuts snipped. <laughs> did you just see a weird thing? Did it just pop up in your, in your calendar? Your it was all well, well, my calendar. By the way, you gave my swear to God, it was on my fucking calendar. I'm not going to be one of my children anymore. I was walking home. I was on a walk. And uh, Segura uh, called me. Segura called me and he goes, "Hey man, they're canceling some dates on because uh, me and Segura are really excited about doing Red Rocks." No, not shitting on Jeff Wills. I understand what happened with you on that, but oh, like yeah. I was on the tour, buddy. I know. Yeah, and so uh, he goes, "Hey man, they cancel Red Rocks. I think they cancel all your dates." And I was like, "That was the first person to tell me. My management tell me. Segura told me." And then. Uh, on this walk, Travel Channel called. I was on the corner. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you the real streets. Travel Channel called the president. She goes, we're not going to renew your contract. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, okay. And I panicked. I don't know if you've ever been in that spot where you would like, go like, but I got some new shows I want to work on. And then, uh, and then, and they were doing demo on the house and I was having asthma from it. And then Leanne calls and goes, oh my God, honey, I forgot to tell you, you have a vasectomy at 2.30. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, cancel the fucking vasectomy. <laughs> I literally panicked. You're like, I need my balls. It's the only thing I have. That's all I got. <laughs> it was all I got. Please don't take made, them. I already made you banana penny sandwiches <laughs> before you come home. <laughs> and I was at the lowest in my life. I think that was a year ago today. <laughs> a year ago today. By you going, by, ironic, ironically, up. by you going to the vasectomy, <laughs> even when you didn't want to, you had already lost your balls. I'd already lost all. Oh, oh, you have no idea. You have no idea. I was like, how am I going to make money? Like, all this day, shit was falling apart on me. I came home. Uh, uh, what was we t- what were, why are we telling this story? Stan Hope. Right? Really? Was, wasn't it something about seeing, was this coming so, back to seeing Stan Hope? Uh, and that? The first thing I did after that, when all that, was a year ago today, was, um, oh, this is emotional. But not, not bad, but like bad, but honest. Um, Stan Hope was like, I want you to do the End of the World podcast. Rogan, me, him, and Burr were texting. And I, I think we can all agree I don't belong on that stage with Stan Hope, Burr, Rogan. But I was offered the opportunity, and I was, and I was very. I love we all just agreed. We're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree nobody, too. Nobody said, <laughs> no, 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 you're great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone said, it's a, me. it's a real you, statement. You, it's you, a real you statement. Great. You, should, you, know, so you should have a spot. That's I think it's the greatest ever. Ever, 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 and ever. And then me. No, no, of course. I get, and, what, you, yeah, I get no. what you're saying, but I'm Dude, funny. I literally was like. You should okay. be a deal, by the way. Yeah, you're, so you're, you're, you're fucking incredible. I t- no, yeah, we get it. But like, I text with Stan Hope and then Stan Hope. I mean, Sal should have been at that table, if we're being honest. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, well, I'm going to. If Stan Hope bails out, will I still do the end of the world? Like, you know, you know how a comic's brain works. I'm gr- good friends with Rogan, good friends with Burr, but like, they could easily fill that with guys that uh, deserve to be on that more. And, uh, and then the I thing, saw a couple of the other guys on that stage. And so, um, <laughs> and so at the end of the day shows up, we're there and, uh, and it's me, Burn Rogan and stand up backstage. And he's like, this is what it should be. Just friends, just buddies, just great comics. And I'm literally my ego and self esteem had been the lowest I'd ever been. And I got on the stage and I, for a second, I was like, Oh, maybe I belong here a little bit. Like not, not, I'm not them. I'm not them. Obviously. I know that. But like I was like, oh, maybe I belong here a little bit, and I was like, oh, that's what stand up is. It's just being here a little bit every now and then, just being here a little bit, just showing up a little bit, and being like, Burr's my friend. We're we're all friends with him. Uh, Doug, Joe's my friend. Doug's my friend. Like, and I was like, oh, that's right. I'm a pretty good comic. And then there's a great picture that someone posted the next day of me when we found out that the uh, pot laws have been lifted here, 
of me ripping my shirt off and everyone celebrating, but I'm shirtless at the front. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm the that, I'm that guy. Like it was such a great. It was it literally tr- turned my career around because that one moment I went, ah, oh, you know what? It's like look. When Jay's special came out, I remember Justin showing me a clip of the intro and going like, God, I'll never have anything like that. But he's also my friend. And I can have him on my podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fucking hammered. Can you tell? <laughs> this weird resentment for Jay's intro comes out. It's like, you know, I saw that. I was just like, you know what? That motherfucker what stole my off? idea. <laughs> what an asshole. Can you tell I'm drunk right now? No. I actually love no. hearing this stuff from you because it's good. It's good to hear someone in your position to, and see that you that you still have these thoughts and feel like that. Oh, it hardcore! Is, it is. It's it's good to know. I just uh, am You're super in a great excited. Position, by the yeah. way, that's what he means by that. That's, yeah. that's yes, I do. Yeah, well, and to see, to know that someone like on your like well, to, who's done what you do and, and yeah. this has been a weird therapy session, but guys. Bert, where yeah. do you think? What, Bert, where yeah. do you think your your fan base? What you said when you, when you fill up rooms now? Where does it come from? Uh, that's Facebook, always like, Facebook mostly. It, yeah, yeah. You you were just good on on social media. No, no. Because uh, it always comes when I when I spoke, no, his, when, his, when I asked, when I asked his, Kevin his, Hart his, and Kevin Hart about let's talk about four years ago of his fame, we'll say, which is still pretty big, uh, doing arenas for sure. When I asked him his thing, he said his specials going kind of like beyond purchase viral. Yeah, was what did it for him. He said his, he put his specials out. They came out on like Netflix or whatever, you know, streaming service, whatever. Yeah. It was when they started just getting shared and on YouTube and all that shit. And his special, he goes, that's what changed his yeah, life. Yeah, that's what happened with uh, Bert because his, that, that, Facebook. that Facebook. bit on Facebook went yeah, I mean, viral. viral. Yeah, it was viral a few times. That's a big deal. It's a really big deal, man. When you, no, but, well, your life, but, your, but your life has changed very recently. But you've been doing like, you hit like a, a peak in a while. Like you left New York and you were like on shit uh, consistently. Yeah, that none of that mattered. No, but like we, we did, we but, did. But, a, but, we but, you but guys financially, to a, but financially to a degree, it did. I mean, you, you, no, you no, were, no, 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 no. You were no. able to establish like an no, adult's life. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, yes, yes. That's uh, you a big know, deal. I was my pool today and I thought I'm very grateful for Travel Channel buying me this house. Yeah, dude, but dude, I dude, will dude, say, dude, dude, to be able, like having that thing that that pays for you. Like, oh shit, I'm an adult. Like now, I, oh, I live a life. I pay bills. I, that's that's a big that's a big step. It's a big um, step in life where you just feel like oh shit, like I, I take care of all my responsibilities. It's a big yeah, deal. it is. But I think at the same time, I think um, I don't know. I do have a regret. I remember them asking me not to do stand up as much at Drop a Channel. And I didn't do it as much because I was working, but I was working. But I, I really regret that because that was the same time. That Why they asked you not to do it as much? Because they didn't like my voice in trouble. Because personality of it, right? Up. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was talking about eating pussy or my wife farting on my chin. Uh, and so, like, yeah. that kind of stuff they didn't like. For sure. I but uh, people who travel don't like that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I don't, who fucking knows? I don't know. Travel channelers are not into that. But I, yeah. but I, I think that... Eating uh, pussies for homebodies. <laughs> <laughs> Eating pussies for keyboard. You really keep it local. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I got to go? The pussy's right there. The fridge is right there. I stay here with my pussy and fridge. Our viewers can't relate. It's a home, homebody eating pussy. Even if I can't finish the pussy... I throw in the fridge. It, it stays fresh. The idea of this entertainment was lost on them. Like the the idea that you could you could get you know you got to realize this is a uh, this is an expensive room. Like if you want to book us, sure. Yeah, I, mean, right. I can tell I can tell you my rate is tomorrow when I do it, and it's not free. Mine's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's I mean, not. it's yeah. That's no, it's not. It's not. Not in this particular situation. Like this is an expensive room, and so the thing is, they lost out on us being friends with each other. Is that email we got today? Hey, are you doing this? Are you doing this? I heard this. The 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 thing they lost out on is that like, oh yeah, we know each other. They missed out on gen- gen- and, and you be, and you being generous and going like, this is the deal. Are you cool? Yeah. And me going like, yeah, man, that sounds really Isn't cool. Isn't it funny the success of something that happens where someone just does that? Like Louis, you know, for all you can say about Louis' show. Louis. <laughs> but I mean, Louis' show, it's like everything was just like cashing in like, you know, hey, I want Nick DePaul to be this guy. 
I want you know everything I got there was nothing like it was like, it's like just have this guy be this guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like like like, like that like offering of like just is it, so. And when they trust somebody, it works well. That show is very highly regarded, and it's all just booked off of people where he's like. Uh, this comic who no one knows should be this guy. This guy should, you know what I mean? Yeah, like that, Gaffigan that, did the same thing. Gaffigan put absolutely. a lot of comics in. Put me and you, he put me and you in the same scene together. That was a big deal. Was like we got a little bit of burn off that. There was some people, and it who wasn't had no like I mean, are. Gaffigan made it a point. I think it was something. I don't, I don't know the numbers, but it was like 50, 60 comics a season yeah. that he was putting in the show, like just in whatever roles you know, he could put him in. Go back to All stand ups. To go back to what this whole thing started with was, uh, well, I think it's interesting with Sal is racist. Well, so yeah. with Sal's audience, no black jokes. You know what's funny? I mean, like, what's, what Sal's audience was interesting is, like, we have a lot of uh, Legion of Skanks, for as filthy and deplorable as the show is, we have a lot of diehard fans who, when it just kind of, uh, uh, you know, comes upon me to ask them, I'm like, where do you, like, find that? Where is this your thing? Several of them was, uh, was uh, forget even it's the show or you're doing the show, was the cruise. We have a lot of like diehards who come out who saw us who saw me on the cruise and and because we called that podcast Legion of Skanks yeah. have become a fan of the show. I mean, who fans who their first thing for sure is that's a big deal. That's so weird funny, I, I because wanna... we're so we're such different markets. You think, but what a weird you said that earlier. The crossover, yeah. the crossover is well, hard. I know, I... We have some like diehard buy anything we would put out there fans that are simply their first thing was seeing uh, the Impractical Jokers cruise that's we, crazy well, it's funny it's like uh, you the show. first time Sal came on our show I know we have to, I know we have to wrap the show but it was such a great moment where Sal had just done the Impractical Jokers cruise and we had done the Shiprock cruise, and on the cruise they have um they're they're you know the, the people who work with the cruise must be like Southeast Asian or something or and they, they have um happy happy washy washy but, but yeah. they have um like hand hand sanitizer spray that they're all they have on the boat and they're oh, spraying right, everybody's weird. hand every time you walk into a room where there's gonna be like food or something there's a little Asian girl that goes happy happy washy washy and she sprays your hands right so we did this cruise the year before Legion of Skanks and they have these Asians all over the boat going happy happy washy washy so I had this idea I was like dude let's get the T-shirts for the next year we'll say Legion Skanks of Skanks logo. happy happy washy washy on the back so we bring them on as merch the Skanks next year I still wear by the way yeah I still have it too it's Me incredible too. so uh, uh, we bring it on the boat the next year they changed crews it was all Swedish girls the next year <laughs> and no more Nobody happy happy, happy, happy washy washy, washy. <laughs> it's not even a thing anymore and that was, that was the merch you were going to sell yeah, that yeah, year yeah we were right? selling it the next year Dude, nobody we wanted the, the, the first time when we started realizing that <laughs> but I knew was the, the, when we started realizing that the funny thing was the fifth room we've walked into, <laughs> was so upset. where someone should have been doing this, we fifth we walked into, Lewis walked out, and we have the, the, the hands, and she goes, she goes, uh, hand sanitizer, and Lewis goes, what? No, happy happy washy washy. She goes, she goes, yes, happy washy washy. He goes, no, you gotta say it. That's the thing you say. She goes, oh yes, uh, happy happy washy washy. She goes, so yeah, you, you say that every time people come. He's like, he's, he's, he was like instructing her to say it. One hundred and forty four t-shirts because he bought so many t-shirts based on the thing that was going to be. Oh, isn't that funny? Because when people go to the merch, especially the last day is when everybody gathers around the merch. You'd see this thing after, and you realize, oh, that's hilarious. Happy, happy, washy, washy. It's just happy. Dude. The back, because by the way, they display it, the front it, it and the back. A, it was the best thing, idea. So, so, so happy, so happy, happy, God, happy, 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 washy, washy. At the end of this, at the end of this trip, meant nothing <laughs> to anybody <laughs> on this boat. I swear, <laughs> Jay and so, Lewis <laughs> may deny this. I swear to God, because I was on the year before, and I didn't come on with you guys this year. And Lewis goes, "I'm making like 200 happy, happy, washy, washy shirts." And I go, "Get ready for your cut, Dave." I go, "What do you?" <laughs> what are you? What are you gonna do? With I the, threw out the house. house. I do. We'll be back in a week. I, I threw out the you idea that Lewis. I go. Hands. What if? What if? Just on this ballpark chance, you come back and they don't have the happy, happy, washy, and washy possible. people, and Lewis dismisses them. Did you say that? Yes, that was thing? And you, Lewis dismisses them. That's so a possible quickly. outcome. That's insane. I, I go, and what if they don't Beautiful. have those people there this year? And he goes, dude, nope, no chance. No <laughs> chance. It was a thing. That's their thing. <laughs> well, well, that's what's so nice. I came on the show, you threw me a t shirt. I, tur- I pick it up. I had just done the cruise. I pick up my turn and I go, happy, happy, washy, washy. I goes, fucking love it. Like, Pearl. <laughs> Norwegian Pearl, he said. We go, yeah. We go, he goes, that's our cruise. He goes, they were happy, happy, washy, washy chicks. And then, like one person, like come up to Lewis, like at the end of the cruise, and just come up and they go, hey, 
I was on last year's cruise. I get it. Dude, me, and Lewis, <laughs> me and Lewis signed a letter of intent to a Lamborghini dealership. <laughs> we were sure these shirts were going to fucking rock the house. Meanwhile, the happy, happy, washy, washy moniker has been removed from the boat. <laughs> no one got it. No one bought it. We, yeah, the, reason I have, the reason I have the shirt is because we had, we had 140 <laughs> extra shirts we brought home with us. You know, it's too, without context, it's actually mildly racist as well. Yeah. As it really is. Oh, without, yeah. without oh, context? Oh, happy, happy, washy, washy. context. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's, yeah, still, it's pretty still, racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with context. Right, I have to do uh, uh, press in two hours. Uh, do it. All right. Um, is that pod. Pod. This there has been literally insane fun. It's I been think a blast. every guy here's girlfriends would have say it's been not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's been a blast. Uh, I still have to post this podcast and then go do Rover. Burke Reicher, morning. I love you. Thank you so much for letting us hang out, man. Oh, I fucking love you guys. It's the longest podcast I've ever been on. It's really? Yeah, me too. It's been non You guys want to finish up these me. dinner sandwiches? No, but I'll tell you what. No. I'm going to be going in for another pretzel rod. <laughs> Dude, they're great. Aren't they great? I'm going to those tater sandwiches. Tomato. They're, they're, they're still there. They're still there. Beans, beans, beans. We got combos. Beans. We got combos. Nobody knows. What... But I'm going to go. Where's the part near your uh, where you're I'm going to go pee? with you, Jay. It's in the uh, corner. Oh, I'll go. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen. Hold on. No. Don't you Leanne this. I love you guys with all my heart. I love you. I love that I'm your friends. I love you. I love that we can all fucking hang out like this. This is the pre- most precious part. Oh, I'm fucking hammered. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Bert Oh, that's a fun one. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.